Okay. Testing, testing, one, T, three. Testing, testing, one, T, three. You see what I did there? I'm such a genius. Okay. All right, so let me know if you can hear me, if the levels are doing okay, if the music's not cutting out, any of that crazy audio stuff, just let me know. I'm still getting used to streaming. <laughs> but hopefully it sounds good to everybody out there. Uh, how's everybody doing? I have just finished eating a lot of pasta. I am probably 90% bolognese right now. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Sometimes, you know... I'm gonna have a bolognese night. Also, I hope the keyboard sounds aren't coming out too vividly. I don't know, this is this will be a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Hey, we don't always hit a run a home run the first time we try, do we? So Okay, I set up a bit of breathy, wildy goodness. We should be able to get right into it, which should be amazing. It's been a while since I've checked out that game. I mean, I think it came out seven years ago. What was it? 2017, I think it was 2017, March something? March 23rd, 2017? Seven years! Oh my god. Just in case you didn't feel old already. Oh my goodness. Oh, the audio is good at the moment. Thanks, ears. <laughs> Just me and music. Me and my music, so... If you like the sound of tea, you probably can't get enough of it right now. Uh, if you can't stand the sound of tea, then... Uh, buckle in, bucko, because you got another... I don't know... 120 hours of it? I don't know, we'll see how... We'll see how long it lasts. I don't think I'm going to be doing this all night, but... I understand it. If anyone tunes in from America, you're like five, seven, eight years behind? Years behind? I mean, culturally speaking, obviously, but like hours behind. So I could still be streaming till like eight in the morning and you'd be like, oh, it's midnight. Uh, I will not be streaming until eight in the morning, just in case anyone's really worried about that. Do not be. Because I think it would just absolutely murder me. But. Who knows? You never know what you're going to get with tea. That's the main thing. It's always a surprise. Hey, I said I'd never do a gaming stream, and look at me now. Okay, alright, so... We should be transitioning to the game view... Any second now. And we can breath us some wild. We can have a good... Exciting, algic, scary, awesome time. I can't wait. Okie dokie. And should be happening any second now. Bloop. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this stream in the first place is I thought, okay, let's do um, let's do a bit of a comparison. I played Tears of the Kingdom recently. I thought, okay, this is a really interesting title. I've never been able to have a, a gaming experience. It's basically like, what if the developer got a second chance to make a game? Like, not a remake, but they got like a second run at it. And Tears of the Kingdom, I mean... It was super unique, it did a lot of stuff creatively. Considering the hardware it was running on, it was amazing that it wasn't literally, like, boiling and melting the Switch into a soup. But it still felt like it, all of the little niggles that the developer couldn't get out the first time. They thought, okay, we'll, we'll take a, a second run at it with the second time, and we'll really nail the vision that we had for the game. So I thought, why not take a look back? Seven years in the past, see where it all came from. See what we liked about it? See what we disliked about it. I mean, a lot's changed in seven years, and a lot of games that have come out since Breath of the Wild has been hugely influenced by it. Like, you see that big panoramic shot on top of a, a hill, like, displaying the, um, the sort of the, the surrounding vista, and a load of games after Breath of the Wild did it. They were like, okay, we've got to have that Breath of the Wild shot. 
I'm not learning any names, Pokemon. But yeah, huge cultural uh, impact. I don't like the menu though. That's that's just one thing. Like when I when I uh, played Breath of the Wild, I was a complete newcomer to the the Nintendo experience. I never owned a Nintendo console before. Never played Mario, if you can believe such a thing. Never played Pokemon. And one thing I noticed is the UI is just it's just oh, it's just beautiful. Like it's minimalist. Each game just really in the core Nintendo titles, each game really just looks right. I wish the menu had like a little more going on. I think like Portal 2, you've got like dynamic stuff in the background. It changes depending on what level you're on. All the tiles switch over like they do in the game. It's it's beautiful. It says something. This is like a little bit of concept art. A couple of options. It's, it's okay. Same with the cover art. Like I think that's the cover art in Europe. It's like, yeah, it's beautiful. It looks really cool. But imagine how much cooler they could make it look. You know how beautiful the art design in this game is. They could have like a completely white minimal screen with like a single, um, what do you call that flower, the princess flower? With like a single bud of that and just the logo and it would look stunning. I don't know, just, just spitballing. I definitely prefer Tears of the Kingdom's one. So, gave the game away a little bit there. <laughs> I did boot this up early just to check that it wasn't going to instantly crash and melt my computer, but we should be good. So, if I start a new game, let's see what all the fuss was about. Let's go back. Seven years. Ooh. Exciting stuff. I won't talk over it, though. No, oh, it's a little quiet, isn't it? Oh, no, there we go. Okay, sorry, sorry. Hey, and we're in. We're in. Okay, wow. Okay, so... So, super mysterious opening. Very low-key. Got a mysterious voice. Mysterious light. I don't know if anybody playing this game wouldn't just know it was Zelda, but let's, let's, let's go with mysterious for now. Mysterious. Oh, God. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. One thing I do not understand is the control scheme. And they even put it in the menu. You can't remap any of the buttons in this game. It's a nightmare, but you can do this. You swap the jump button X with cancel button B. Like, you were going to make sure that you couldn't reassign any of the controls. Why would you have that specific one? Unless it came up in playtesting and everyone was like, this feels horrible. But if that was the case, then why wouldn't that be default? And you just have the ability to change it back to what the developers wanted. I don't know, that always struck me as really weird. I don't think anybody played the game like this. Because it just feels, I don't know, I don't know. 
it, it's Nintendo. You know, they're not known for their accessibility options, but I appreciate the fact that you can actually do that. And yes. Oh, it's a lifelong PlayStation player. The idea of not jumping with X is absolutely, you know, it beggars belief. So thank God you can actually change that back. Okay. Controls, getting used to the controls. I think we're supposed to do something here, so let's find out. Ah, the Sheikah Slate. Which definitely doesn't look like a Wii U gamepad in the slightest. That is a Sheikah Slate. Ah, there you go. Take it. Take it. It help guide you after your long slumber. Oh, <gasps> hey PR, how you doing? I've never actually played this. Oh god, okay, if you've never actually played this, this might not be the best introduction <laughs> because you're gonna watch someone. Um I mean, obviously I'm a pro I'm a pro player, so nothing but the best, but you know, I'm gonna try and tear it apart a little bit and sort of see see what makes it tick. I don't know, you might have fun. You might look at it and go like, he doesn't know what he's doing. Then again, when have I ever known what I'm doing? That's the tea experience. Sheikah Slate. Mysterious tablet with a glowing center. Center is E-R. Okay, all right, okay. I did set this to UK, but I guess no, it's American spelling. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. It's okay, it's okay. Ugh. You've never seen this device before, and yet there's something familiar about it. Huh. I wonder if that's got something to do with the console that was originally supposed to come out for, the Wii U, with the whole gamepad sort of with its own screen thing that set up obviously that ended up not working out very well for nintendo but you know sort of like a proto switch almost oh i love that that little detail of him kicking the box if you don't have any uh, clothes on at the time it's so good it's so good how many game companies would think of putting that in and yet if you approach from the front there's place in normal animation and you don't have to kick it Throw sparrows around. I never believe that this was like a game of the year contender from the, like the first two minutes though. Like it's super low key, everything's super misty. But everything's about to change. PR, if you've never actually seen much of this game, you're gonna love the intro. I mean, give me another minute, we'll get there. Oh, it's something beautiful. I had a load of games have cribbed off it since because why would they not? It's iconic. It's so good. Okay, just scanning our Wii U game. I mean, uh, Sheikah Slate into the thing. Yeah. Yeah, totally normal, totally cool. Just authenticating, as you do. And here we go. Oh, the memories. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Okay, okay. Link, you are the light, our light, that must shine upon Hyrule once again. Now go. Now this is the game of no hand-holding, because that is kind of it. That's all you get. I mean, you can go and defeat the final boss from here if you really wanted to. It is literally that simple. It's like, okay, you got a mysterious voice. You want to defeat the final boss and beat the game? Do it. Do it. You can just do it. The world is your oyster. A little platform thing here, just to make sure that you've definitely seen the stamina bar at least once before you go into the world, so you know what you're doing. And then... Oh, PR, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. I mean, come on. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, I wasn't expecting nostalgia to be hitting quite that hard, but jeez. Oh my god. We're here! 
There's a volcano. There's the castle. There's two big rocks that I'm sure have no significance in the plot whatsoever. Okay, we're in this. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with... Start picking up some stuff. So... Weapons are destructible in this game. You'll end up going through a lot of them. And I mean a lot. Food is also destructible, but you know, that's... That's kind of how food works in the real world as well. Like, let you eat it, you ain't eating it again. Jump up here, get some mushrooms. Very clever how the game guides you as well. In every game, you're learning, like, the rules of the system. Like, how health works, what the physics is like. If you have coyote time and a platformer, it's like, okay. Do I have fall damage in this game? I don't know. Yeah, sometimes there's only really one way to find out. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so, I guess. I guess you can't jump 100 feet and survive in this game. Interesting. You put a big cliff right on the left side. Just to make sure you know that. Just in case if you're stumbling around the world being like a... Being like a big dip. You find out very quickly. Like... You don't treat the landscape with respect. It's gonna kill you. It's just gonna kill you. It is that simple. Oh no, don't say the branches are back. Don't say the branches are back. I just picked them up. Oh, okay, so that one's there, but the rest of them... The rest of them aren't. Okay, okay, alright. So as we make our way down here, a little tutorial. Your stamina wheel runs out. You'll be too tired to do certain actions until it fills again. Sneaky, sneaky. Get the drop on some other critters in the world. Boop. Bladed rhino beetle. This beetle's razor sharp horns demand that you handle it with care. Boil the horns alongside monster parts to concoct an elixir that will raise your attack power. I don't know how I feel about elixirs and food in this game. I always kind of felt in the early game it's a little unfair that it doesn't sort of delineate like what could be a food item and what could be an elixir item. You just end up making a lot of really like dud food. And not knowing why you're doing it as well. Like, not why, where, where am I going wrong here? Oh, oh, that's not good. And degradation. I'm sure I don't miss that. Apple! A common fruit found on trees all around Hyrule. Eat it fresh or cook to increase its effects. Do you okay there, buddy? Do you okay? Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Ooh, baked apple. Direct heat, soften and sweeten this apple. Oh. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> Your partner, I do believe this is my baked apple. You can't just go around taking whatever you please. I mean, are you a character in an RPG or what? <laughs> oh, forgive me. I could not resist pulling your leg. No, my leg. Please help yourself. An apple in an open flame make for a succulent treat. It is a bit strange to see another soul in these parts. Wow, you can be really rude up front, huh? Bye! <laughs> Mysterious old man in the woods? Oh, I don't care. Okay, who are you? Hmm. Me? I'll spare you my life story. Hmm. Ominous. But continue. I'm just an old fool who has lived here alone for quite some time now. I hope you'll permit me a question. I may be so bold. Are you not chilly? Bye! No, I won't do that, I won't do that. Where are we? <sighs> Answering a question with a question? That is fair enough. As I cannot imagine our meeting to be a simple... Coincidence, I shall tell you. This is the Great Plateau. Oh, the Great Plateau. According to legend, this is the birthplace of the entire kingdom of Hyrule. Hmm. The squeaky lantern noise there. Always nice. Ooh. That temple there. Long ago, it was the site of many sacred ceremonies. Ever since the decline of the kingdom a hundred years ago, it has sat abandoned in a state of decay. Oh. Yet another forgotten entity. A mere ghost of its former self? Interesting. I'm sure that doesn't mean anything at all. Okay, let's cook some apples. Oh, the menus. Oh my god, they're very different from Tears of the Kingdom. Wow, okay. <laughs> so materials. Just arrange that so food comes first. Let's, uh, let's hold an apple or two. And the chemistry system in this game is amazing. What happens if we put apples... Near a flame. 
Hmm. The catch fire, obviously. And they turn into baked apples. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And the baked apple heals three quarter hearts. Whereas I think just a normal apple, I think it only heals like a quarter or a half or something. Clever. They give you a baked apple right ahead. Just to, just to give you a hint. Maybe this is something to think about. Woodcutter's axe. Great. Chop down some old man. I wonder what happens if you just go for it. Oh, okay. Easy there. Easy there. Oh, is that... Oh, thank God. Okay, okay. I don't make a habit of attacking NPCs, but sometimes you do get curious, you know. Just want to know, like, does, it, does it impact it? Because in Dark Souls, if you attack an NPC, you can softlock yourself out of the entire goddamn game. And everyone's like, oh, you shouldn't attack XYZ. It's like, I don't know. Games have different rules. Sometimes you got to find out. Hmm? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, Iris? Sometimes you buy a game and... Hmm. You just don't get around to playing it. Like, what well, it just doesn't appeal to you. Like, it appeals to you at the time. By the time you get around to playing it, you're like... Hmm. I don't know if I'm feeling this anymore. Some games you just like seeing other people play more. Like, I watch a ton of Let's Plays of games that I just... I would not play that game at all, but... Watching some people play them is... It's just a simple joy. It's one of those simple pleasures in life. And I put that out by mistake. Okay. Alright, there we go. There we go. There we go. What? I'm a little busy here. Link. Okay, fine. What is it? Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. Okay. All right. I'm going to light a fire first, if that's okay. And... There we go. Fantastic. Now I've got a fire that... Uh, I can't do anything with, because I don't think it lets you rest at this point in the game. Never mind. That's fine. That's fine. We've got a nice little fire going. Nothing wrong with a fire. As long as it doesn't spread and kill everyone. And some mushrooms. I think... There's a little thing in the water as well. We have a look down. Let's see what we can find. Ah, look at that. Just a little inconspicuous ring. Like a sword in the stone situation going on. So let's, ju let's jump down and see what that's all about. Yeah! Oh, I miss these guys. Yeah, you found me. Huh? You're not a Hestu. But you can see me? I didn't know you kind of could see the children of the forest. Well, if you run into Hestu, please return this to him. Korok seed. The small seed was given to you by a Korok. It has a distinct smell. And that's not weird at all. If you gather a bunch of them, you never know what might happen. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. My friends are hiding in lots of different places, too. Don't be shy about poking your nose into suspicious places. Sounds a little... Okay. Look at those little guys. Look at the little children of the forest. They're so cute. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's found all 900 of them, though. I think, I think that'd probably drive you insane. I used to be a big completionist, but even I was like, I'm not finding 900 of these guys. That's not, it's not happening. Rusty broadsword. Okay. It's rusty, but you know, I'm rusty as well. I haven't played this game in a minute. Maybe I'll get better over time. Maybe I can be polished and fixed, just like a rusty broadsword. And then by the end of it, I too will be a consummate professional. Or just a butterfly catcher. A lepidopterist. Practicing lepidoptery. Oh, come on, come back down, come back down. So close. So close. Oh, another one up there. Yes! Summer Wind Butterfly. I will absolutely forget to make that into anything, but never mind, that's fine, that's fine. The point of this game is picking stuff up. You don't actually have to do anything with it. Like a Dark Souls. Like, I don't know what 90% of the stuff in that game does, but it's always satisfying to find something. Ancient Spring. That could be used for all sorts of wonderful things, but not for a moment, so... Hey there, friend. Oh no, that's not the right button. <laughs> that's not the right button. Oh jeez. Oh, I think I lost him. Did I lose him? No, okay. Okay, cover is not a thing in this game. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Ah, okay. Oh my god. 
can really feel the punches in this game. That impact sound. Oh my god. Boko Club. Bokoblin Horn. We're just picking up all sorts of stuff in this game, aren't we? Obviously, this is a place that's seen better days. It's like pillars everywhere. God, this looks so good for a game that came out seven years ago. Something about cell shading. Cell shading and like a good environment design, like good, good art design that can just carry it through. Obviously, this may not be played on the original console it came out on. I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers as to what I may be playing this on. But it just looks so good. It's, oh my god. Okay, I'm not very stealthy. That's that's fine. That's fine. I think I think everybody on the internet knows that at this point. So. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. And he disappeared. Because in a Zelda game, having an enemy that's just like a person whose body just stays there forever because you've actually murdered a living thing, you've murdered a sentient being, and you have to have that on your conscience. That'd be a little bit heavy for family game. So instead, all the enemies are like minions of darkness, and they're all composed of like a glowy purple, like jelly glue substance, and they all vanish upon defeat, which is the way it must be. And then we don't want to be traumatizing ourselves. Million trousers, traditional dress trousers of Hyrule. The plush fabric makes these trousers quite comfortable, and their high durability makes them ideal for travelers. That's actually a pretty decent set of trousers for this part of the game, so. Let's get those on. Get a nice little top on as well. Look at that! Look at that. Tell me this isn't Fashion Souls. Quite a few costumes in this game, I think. I think the... I remember the armor being the best one. The defense was just insane. You could just stand there for 10 minutes against any enemy and be like, No, nah, I'm not feeling this. So as we go up here... Hey! What's up? Oh no, he's coming after me, he's coming after me. Okay, oh! Whoa. You okay? What's going on? You right? You okay there, buddy? Ha 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 Perfectly executed flurry rush! That is a perfect dodge. If you do it just right, it gives you slow motion. And I think, while you're in slow motion, your weapons don't take damage either. So if you really want to wail on an enemy, you do a perfect dodge, get him into slow motion, and then switch like in slow motion to your most powerful weapon, and you can just you can just give them as many hits as they can take. Oh, okay, all right. This is the one thing about this game everyone agrees on. The menus are a little bit much. So I've got too many weapons right now, and I want to pick up another one. I can't just go in here and be like, click X to drop or whatever. And like they added that in Tears of the Kingdom, but in Breath of the Wild, I guess you just got to go. Okay, all right. I'll open this. I'll navigate to weapons, I'll pick the weapon, I'll drop the weapon, I'll go out, and then I'll do this. Okay. Now that may not seem too tedious on its own. But you gotta remember, like, if you always have a full inventory, you're gonna be doing that every single time you find a new weapon. So, like, it adds up. But here we go! Okay. Inside this beautiful, dilapidated little place. The music cue plays. It's clear that... Much like us, this place has seen better days. Ooh, arrow. I've never found anything in these pots. I can't believe now I'm finding arrows coming out of the kazoo. That's wild. Oh, I've jinxed it now. Okay, now I won't find anything in any of them. Oh, damn it. Oh, okay. Six arrows ain't bad. Six arrows ain't bad. I wonder what's in here. Traveler's bow! Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it can be used to attack foes from a distance. Okay. So now, on our character model, you can see we've got a little traveler's bow. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, the bow is probably my favorite weapon in this game. 90% of the time, you can just pick foes off from a distance. It's so satisfying. What happens if we pray? The goddess statue smiles upon you. Oh. Uh... Okay, I guess that's all we're getting out of this area for now. Never mind. Maybe if I do things in the world, I'll be able to come back later and 
and, and do cool stuff with that. Maybe if I believe, all of my dreams will come true. Oh, cool stuff is good. Okay, this is cool. There's like a an enemy encampment shaped like a skull, which is mildly terrifying. That's neat. Let's see if we can take that out. Do a little bit of meal prep beforehand. Ooh. Okay. Food. Let's get back up to full health. Maybe just a mushroom as well. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Full health, full health. We're gonna need it. Let's see if we can take this guy up without anybody else knowing. So. Oh, so close, so close. Ah, there we go, there we go, there we go. Not too shabby. We really gotta stop clicking the scope button. Though. Now we get just a little bit closer. Just a little. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. What's going on in there? Oh. There's a lantern with a rope. So. We can shoot the rope. <laughs> oh, one of them's not dead. Oh god. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Oh, we don't have a we don't have a shield yet. Oh, this ain't gonna end good. This ain't gonna end good. Uh, okay. Hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, he's, he's still. He's fine. He's fine. He's a pussy cat. Oh. And we got some treasure to boot. You can't beat that. Some Procoblin horns. Okay, we got too much stuff at this point. Just we're just loaded with loot and weapons and ugh, body parts of enemies, which is completely normal to pick up from the ground. I mean, you're not a psychopath at all by picking up your enemy's teeth and like putting them in your pocket. Why not? You know. Ooh, fire arrows. Let's see what that's like. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Yeah, in Tears of the Kingdom, it works a little differently. You have, like, one setting. And then if you click the up button, while well, you've got a, an arrow holstered on your bow, you can pick between any material in the world, and you can attach the material to your arrow instead. In this game, I think you get like four or five different types of arrow. You get like fire arrow, ice arrow, all that good stuff. The map seems to be pointing me in this direction though, so let's see what all the fuss is about. Sure hope there are no bokoblins guarding the area. That would sure suck. Damn it, I knew they were there. I could feel it. I could feel it. Let's see if I can sneak up on them. You can see by the map that little purple line in the little circle there. That denotes how much noise you're making. So if you're super, super quiet, they shouldn't be able to hit it to hear you. A little sneak strike option should come up. And then if you... Yeah! Like ten times the normal damage as well. So if you can get one, it's always best to. Oh, come on. Oh, you are so dead for that. Yeah, yeah, you go. That's me that's what you get. And even collect your body parts, which isn't psychopathic in the slightest. Ooh, shield guy! I could do one of those. Hey, how's it hanging? How's it hanging? How you doing? Well, ha ha ha! Oh, getting better and better at that. Oh, okay. So ignore what I said about flurry rush, because my weapon just exploded. So you definitely still have weapon degradation in flurry rush. I think it's if you're on a Lionel. And you like, you go on his back and then you start hitting him. Like if you if you mount something, then it doesn't take damage. That's the only time I'll be using a word as provocative as mount in this playthrough. So make the most of it while you got it, folks. Hey, what's going on over here? Should I uh, should I take like a little thing out and scan it? Hmm. Hey, what's the worst that could happen? I guess we'll find out. Mm. 
Sheikah Tower activate. What's a Sheikah Tower? Because what? Wait, wait, for falling? What? Oh no. Oh no. Link, what have you done? Oh, this is great. This is great. This is great. So good. So good. If you haven't played this PR, Tears of the Kingdom, they make the towers even cooler, but I won't spoil how. I'll just say, it's cool. Hey Shift, how's it hanging? We're going through Breath of the Wild. And currently distilling local information into our Sheikah Slate, which is definitely not a Wii U gamepad. <laughs> Oh, I love that. The idea of information is water. It's so cool. I mean, they both flow. It makes sense. It makes sense. And we got a part of our map uncovered as well. The whole of the Great Plateau. Oh, I ignore the big X where I died once. That's not, that's, that's not important. <laughs> You have been asleep for the past 100 years. Yeah. I'm wondering why I was so groggy. The beast. Huh? When the beast regains its true power, oh dear. this world will face its end. So uh, the castle was beautiful before when we were on that little mountain over there. Now it looks evil. There's a little purple swirling around it and the world is ending. So wonderful. I really feel like, um, I really feel like I'm doing a great job of being like the hero right now. Let's see how that goes. Oh, now we've got to try and climb down. Okay. 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 Try not to fall to my untimely death. I'm surprised how often that happens in this game. I, oh, okay, okay, okay. This game is not for sufferers of vertigo. I'll say that much. I mean, look at it though. Oh, it's so good. It's beautiful. Okay, almost there. Almost there. And one more. Ah, and there we go. Oh, and there's an old man. I wonder what he wants. My, my. It seems we have quite the enigma here. This tower and others look just like it have erupted across the land, one after another. It's almost as though a long dormant power has awoken quite suddenly. I wonder what this random old man knows about it. If you do not mind me asking, did anything odd occur while you were atop that tower? I don't know if it's good to be honest. You don't know this guy. You never know, he could end up being your dad or something, so I heard a voice. Well now, a voice, you say? Did you happen to recognize this mysterious voice? I mean, it's the voice from the trailer, but... I guess we don't know that, so we'll go with no. No, I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for the subscribe, Brass Shine. We're playing Breath of the Wild. There's a creepy old man who's just jumped me, and I don't know what's going on. And I guess we're gonna find out. I see. Well, that is unfortunate. He just asked me about this voice I've heard. There's a tower. It's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. 
I assume you caught sight of that atrocity in shrouding the castle. That big purple glowing monstrosity that you can see all throughout the land with like the massive purple beast dragon thing that's like roaring really loudly. You know that one? That atrocity? Do you remember hearing about that atrocity? Can you see that atrocity? Yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of hard to miss. Oh, that is Calamity Ganon. You know it's bad because it's highlighted in red. 100 years ago, that vile entity brought the kingdom of Hyrule to ruin. You know, Hyrule is a good kingdom because that's in blue. It appeared suddenly and destroyed everything in its path. So many innocent lives were lost in its wake. For a century, the very symbol of our kingdom, Hyrule Castle, has managed to contain that evil, but just barely. There it festers, building its strength for the moment it will unleash its blight upon the land once more. It would appear that moment is fast approaching. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. We've been asleep. I must ask you, courageous one, do you intend to make your way to the castle? How about you mind your own damn business, old man? You can't say that, so... I do. Come on. <laughs> I had a feeling you would say that. Don't act like you know me. Here on this isolated plateau, you're surrounded on all sides by steep cliffs with no way down. That kind of sucks. I guess I'm going to die on this place then. If you were to try to jump off, well, no more deaths would be certain. Or more foolish. Hmm. Of course, if you had a paraglider like mine, that would be quite another story. And an overall man. Oh, ho, ho. certainly. Why not? But there is no such thing as a free item in this world, you know? Well, there is, because I've got like 800 mushrooms. I've got loaded like weapons. I've got some shields. Actually, I had to kind of kill some people for that. So never mind. Let's move on. Yeah. yeah, there's no such thing as a free thing. No such thing as a free meal. Let's see now. How about I trade it for a bit of treasure that slumbers nearby? This treasure under a dragon. You're sending me to my death. Am I like one of 500 young adventure guys you've talked to? They all like skeletons right now. I don't know about this. Hmm. Come. Let me show you something. Mm, okay. All right. Are we there yet? Don't be hasty now. Just follow me. Okay. Are we there yet? Okay, I guess not. <sighs> you live and learn. Are we there yet? Oh, fine. Come on, hurry up, old man. No wonder you need a paraglider. The legs of yours aren't working too good, are they? Are we there yet? Oh, we are! Okay, good, good, good. Okay. You see that structure there? The one shining with a strange light? It began glowing at the exact moment those towers rose up from the ground. Huh. Oh. I wonder if they're connected. I say as I've played this game like eight times. I would think such a place might have some sort of treasure, wouldn't you? Treasure for the paraglider? A fair exchange, I believe. Mm. Go on, fetch me any treasure you find inside that shrine. Looking forward to your successful return. Okay, alright. I'll go plunder some ancient tomb or whatever, and then he gets the treasure, and I get a piece of cloth. That seems pretty fair to me. What a bargain! Let's see. Is this high enough I can do my dive? Yes! Oh. Something so satisfying about that. I love it. That's another thing about the, the, the swimming in this game. It's a little slow. A little bit slow. The amount of times you die halfway in the middle of a lake just out of like... Just out of impatience because you're like, I'm not spending five minutes swimming. I'd rather spend 30 seconds drowning. And then do the whole thing over again. So players are not very smart. And I would be one of them. Oh man, oh shrine. Okay. Sheikah Slate confirmed. Travel gate registered to map. Access granted. Wow, look at this! Okay, so we've got a waypoint that we can like, use the map to travel to then. Sweet! Okay, so we can go there, and we can go to the tower. And we can go to the Shrine of Resurrection. But we can't go to the place I died. 
by falling off a cliff like a doof. That's just how I roll, you know. Some of us aren't that smart. I have to solve a problem by repeatedly shoving our forehead into it. Maybe you do that with a brick wall enough. The brick wall will come down. It just might not be much of your forehead left by the end of it. You win some, you lose some. He who sets foot in the shrine, I am Omen Ah. In the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. Magnesis. Oh, we're doing the runes. Okay, okay. Gonna go ahead and scan our little Wii U gamepad. Chica State Authenticated. Distilling Rune. And... There we go. Wonder what we get. Magnesis. Manipulate metallic objects using magnetism. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. You selected Rune from your Sheikah Slate. I like how they improve this in Tears of the Kingdom as well by basically just... Like... Making it so you could just move any object in the game like this. Which is like, okay, Magnesis is cool, but if you can... You can do that with anything. Oh, so good. You can see that's clearly one thing in the game where they, they built off the original. They were like, oh, I don't know, we can do this with the physics engine. It just... You just allow the player to pick up anything and put anything anywhere. And somehow we'll still construct puzzles and stuff. I don't know how they do it. Okay, get out of the way, get out of the way. There we go. Best part of all of this, you can build cover for yourself as well. And you can even turn things into a weapon. <laughs> T wins. T wins. It's my new name. It's not T Lark, it's T Wins. T Wins. Oh, tell me about it, ears. The fact that they got that thing running on a switch. I mean, I, I, I don't like to belabor it because if you look at it, like, if you look at it on from the perspective of someone who knows what, you know, what the PS5 and PCs can do, it does feel like a bit of a bummer that you can't like. You can't see it running at 4K at 60 frames per second or any of that crazy stuff. Like, PCs can run that game so beautifully. And you can kind of see the graphical fidelity does take a little bit of a hit. You have like that dynamic thing where if the game is running too slow, they'll like, they'll change the resolution dynamically and stuff like that. It's a bit of a bummer. At the same time, you know, that's the console they're working with. There's a wizened old corpse. I wonder what happens next. Proven to possess the resolve of a true hero. I am Omana, the creator of this trap. Oh, I guess it's not a corpse then. And he's talking to me. I am a humble monk, blessed with the sight of Goddess Hylia and dedicated to helping those who seek to defeat Ganon. With your arrival, my duty is now fulfilled. Okay, so I guess it's. I guess now he's dead? In the name of Goddess Hylia, allow me to bestow this gift upon you. I hope it's money. <laughs> I mean, that's cool too. Alright, I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, it went inside me. I don't know if we agree to that. Spirit Orb! A symbol of courage given to those who have overcome the challenges of a shrine. And it heals you as well, which is always nice. May the goddess smile upon you. Now I guess, after slumbering here for like hundreds or thousands of years, he turns into dust and disappears. So that's nice. Yeah, we're well on our way to getting that glider. Speak of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It seems you managed to get your hands on a spirit orb. Well done. Paraglider, please. I encourage you to slow down for a moment, my courageous friend. 
And he did just say, if I give him the treasure, he'll give me a power glider. And I, it's starting to sound like that's not the way it's shaken out. I think I may have been had. The appearance of those towers and the awakening of this shrine. Glinky. It is all connected to that chicas that you carry on your hip there. Power glider, please. I have yet to finish speaking. He's the one being rude. Long ago, a highly advanced tribe known as the Sheikah inhabited these lands. The great power of their wisdom saved this kingdom time and time again. But their ancient technology disappeared long ago, or so it is said. It is interesting, however, to think how something like that survived all this time hidden away in a shrine. Hmm. These shrines are tucked away in numerous places all across this land. On this plateau alone, I believe there are still three more. I don't know what that's got to do with you agreeing to give me a paraglider, but... Okay. Bring me the treasure from each of those... Oh, okay. From each of those shrines, and I will give you my paraglider. That wasn't the deal. Hmm. Oh? Well, I suppose I changed my mind. What a dick. I'm sure that won't be a problem for a young go-getter like you. Since I'm feeling generous, I'll also teach you a trick, a trick for finding shrines. Hmm. It's always best to survey the area from looking around from the high point. Let's see here. How about you make your way to the top of that tower again? Are you, are you joking? You just climb down from there. Oh ho ho, I'm afraid not, but do not worry. I have another little trick to share with you for your effort. Take a look at the map on your Sheikah slate. Ah, <sighs> okay, all right. You should recognize the cave where you woke and the red arrow where you died like a dumbass. Yeah, that's not on there, that's not on there, it's fine. You can travel instantly to any of those places with the Sheikah slate. Or so I heard quite some time ago. I do not know if it actually works as such. Well, then why are you telling me that? Oh, this sucks. I meet a guy randomly in like a... Just in, in the woods. And he's like, do this thing for me. And I'm, Okay, well, <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. I really thought that was going to explode and give me some goodies. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. One arrow. Are you kidding me? I almost killed myself for one arrow? Uh. What? <laughs> oh no. I didn't have any stamina, right? Is that it? Yeah, I didn't have any stamina. Wow. Okay, I dropped a metal box on my head. And so I brained myself and then I almost drowned. I know I've been asleep for a while, but that is no excuse. There we go, there we go, okay. Another arrow, I'll take it. Got a couple of chests there as well. I'm just gonna do some looting before I, I start my massive epic fetch quest, like Demarai Jenny says. Opal, valuable ore. In the Tears of the Kingdom, like every other thing you find in that game is opal. You get a lot of opal. It's opal, 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 opal madness. What's in this one? I'm gonna kick it. Okay, you get a lot of amber in Tears of the King too. It's not as bad in this game. Hey, Stensinator! We're making our way through Breath of the Kingdom. Breath of the Kingdom? Breath of the Wild. We're just seeing what's up, you know. Sorry, I've got to give myself some food. That, that little health indicator, it does drive you insane. Oh, okay, that's better. That's better. That's better. Okay, so. Shrine of Resurrection. Place where I died literally diving off a cliff because I'm a dumbass. Great Plateau Tower. Here we go. Demo Argenti. You pronounced my first name right. Some people pronounce it Demo for some reason. Demo? Huh. I mean, I guess I could see it. Demo? I don't know. I just presumed it was demo like a game demo, like, you know, demonstration, like that kind of demo. What the hell are you doing up here? You walk so slowly. How the hell did you make it up this tower? I do not understand. Surprised it took you so long to catch up with an old man like me. Did you fly here? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. so you think an old man like me needs to fly to stay ahead of you? I mean, I don't see many other options right now, but... I still have a few tricks left in me. Now then. Hmm. I wanted you to join me up here so you could use this as a vantage point to search for shrines. Do you know about the scope on your Sheikah slate? Okay, there's, there's going to be some tutorializing here. Bear with it, folks. Bear with it. 
look through it, and you can stick a pin anywhere you'd like to mark on the map. Ooh. The pins on your map serve as reference points for your travel. Just stick a pin anywhere you're interested in. How do you know? Oh ho ho! Just a few tricks I've picked up after many, many years in the wild. You may take my advice, or leave it. But if you don't take my advice, you will not be leaving this place. Ever. So let's take his advice. Got a shrine there. Where else can we see a shrine? Hmm. Oh, there's a shrine over there. Oh, where's the last one? I can't remember. Oh, it's going to be really far, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, where is that last shrine? That one there. Oh, I guess you can't see it yet. Oh, uh, well. Let's... Actually, where is the nearest one? One over there. you got one over there. Let's go back to where he woke up. Yeah, let's see if that makes it easier. Yum. So yeah, coming back to this seven years after Tears of the Kingdom is wild. Because everything looks so similar yet so different at the same time. I think they rebuilt the entirety of the engine as well. Like, they completely switched engines and just rebuilt everything from scratch again. Which is nuts. Because this thing is already so bespoke for the, um, the Wii U hardware, I think. And then they built Tears of the Kingdom to basically just be bespoke to the Switch instead. So it really does muscle out every ounce of juice for that system that it possibly could. This is why it looks so darn good. And also why the physics stuff in the game is just... It's... It's crazy. You can get away with a lot of crazy stuff in that game. At the same time, though, you can still make your Switch chug like it's about to explode into orange juice, so... But that's not something R&D can improve. It was always going to be like that. Are we still in the process of spot? Oh, well, I guess... I guess I don't have the drop on them, then. I got some fire arrows. Let's see. <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh, okay, so the genius, the genius move I was making there was, I forgot that I didn't already have the paraglider, which is kind of a lethal thing to do when you're standing in the middle of a fire. That's not very clever of me, but it won't happen again. Seared steak. Ooh, I can use some seared steak right about now. And not just because my face is currently bleeding. Because of all the fire. Spicy peppers. Alien shroom. We got ourselves some good stuff. And a barrel. Nice. Oh, and I think because we've got some fire arrows. So does this work? Can I just crouch and sort of sort of stick it? No, that doesn't work. Okay. Well what we can do is take a tree branch or a torch. I'll put that in the fire. And then we go back to the pot and Sweet! Okay, now we can do some cooking. Which I need to do because I don't have much and my health is so low at the start of the game. So let's make up some mushrooms. I love how happy he always gets. Okay, so we got a mushroom skewer. Nice. Unfortunately, because I've only got three hearts. Cooking anything over three hearts is basically wasted at this point, so... I'm gonna be kind of conservative about the way you cook. <laughs> Mushroom skewer, perfect. Cook some apples, maybe? I don't know. Let's cook some peppers up. Let's see what we can do there. <laughs> yes! 12 minutes 30 of cold resistance. Now that is not bad. You get used to that sound if you're playing Breath of the Wild for the first time. There's a lot of just cooking and eating. I mean, it's the only way to get health back in this game, so... Apart from sleeping at a hotel or something. 
which I never tended to do. There are two things that I'd never do in this game. I never got a horse or any of that stuff because it just seemed... It was so obsolete. Like, horses are such a nightmare to try and try and deal with when you're climbing mountains at the same time. That's that cold resistance working for us. Oh, Guardian. And the second thing is, you can stay at, like, inns and stuff. It's like, it's like 20 rupees a night or something. It's like, I never saw the point in that. Just crouch by a fire and you can you can pass time just as easily that way. It's, you know, it's never worth, like, the couple of extra hearts you get. It's just so expensive. Ooh, I'm going to have to get across that, aren't I? Oh, no. Oh, no. I think I'm going to save. I think I'm going to save. If the mic didn't capture it, I just did a big, deep gulp, because I think this is going to hurt. But we'll find out. Okay. Magnesis. Oh, there's a box. It doesn't really help me, but okay. I'll take it. Great. It's like finding gold in the Arctic when your toes are falling off. Like, oh, that's wonderful. Can I have some, like, can I have some socks instead? Damn, how am I misremembering this game? I could have sworn there was some metal thing I could, I could like, bridge the gap with, but I'm not seeing anything. Do I have to go over it? I might have to go over it. Okay. Ears. It's important that you know that I've been eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream as I watch this. Ooh, Ben and Jerry's. I could use some Ben and Jerry's. Which flavor, though? And yes, that is important, because there is a best and least best Ben and Jerry's flavor. Like, that stuff matters to me. Like, birthday cake? Surprisingly good. Like, chocolate brownie? Oh. Eight or a nine out of ten. Right off the gate. Fish food! Fish food's alright. I can do without the hard chocolate pieces, though. Anything, like, vanilla -y? I'm not feeling it. I can eat haagen -Dazs out of the tub all day when it comes to vanilla, but Ben & Jerry's, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if they quite got the flavor right. It's, like a, it's a little bit sickly, a little bit artificial. That's just me, of course. Ooh. There are some nice guys just chilling in the woods, setting up camp. Screaming at the fire, as you do. Let's go ruin their days. I mean... Oh god, okay. Okay, let's, let's not deal with those. I'm not dealing with skeletons right now. No, 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 no. God, you run out of stamina really easy in this, this game as well. At least in the... Like, the early hours. Okay, alright. We're good, we're good, we're good. Ooh, cookie dough. Cookie dough's pretty good. I don't know, I feel like I'd like it more if it was cookie dough with dark chocolate or something. Oh god, it begins. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. And I just killed a camp of people that, you know, they could have just been chilling. They could have even been friendly. I mean, you know, they weren't because they tried to kill me, but still, you know, they've got their own story here. Maybe they were starving for supplies or something. I don't know their life. All I know is I barged in on them and killed them. And I took their horns and their teeth, which again is like pretty psychopathic to do. I'm going to barge in, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill all your friends, I'm going to take your teeth, I'm going to take your body parts, and I'm going to craft them into health potions and elixirs that will allow me to kill your friends and take their horns and their teeth and kill even more efficiently. That's messed up, buddy. That's messed up. I mean, messed up. Very satisfying, though. Still very satisfying. I'm full up on bows already. What is that, a boko? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. I can leave it. Take it and leave it. 
already reached the point in the game where we can afford to just drop branches as well, which is always nice. These branches do no damage at all. Like, that's... Eh. Two damage? Psst. I laugh at the face of two damage. Get some food. Yeah, tell me ate that steak. Another tree branch. God damn it. He's yeah, really trying to force the tree branch on me, huh? There's a boulder there. A couple of areas in this game where they set up boulders that you can push down on enemies. I've tried pretty much every one at one point or another during a playthrough, and they never hit the enemy. They just don't. I mean, obviously I'm an idiot, so that could just be me. But that also feels like, you know, one of the few disadvantages of using, like, a, a physics system that doesn't bias in favor of the player at all. It's like, it is just truly physics-based. It's like, okay, so if it's not perfect trajectory, you just, it just won't do anything. Again, though, I am also an idiot, so it could just be that. Oh! And we're there. We're right there, we're on top of it. A step closer to getting my glider. Only question now is, in God's name, how do I make it down? Oh, this could be trouble. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, oh. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. And this is shrine number two. Oh, hey, out of my way. There we go. I got an arm for my trouble. Nice. Got some fangs. Again, picking up the teeth of your enemies. Real weird. The more genty, there are very few actual idiots in this world. Now that may be true, but I would stand as living proof that there are more than you think. <laughs> and Jason Husky may be also one of them. <laughs> I think, in terms of representation, we may be doing wonders for the argument against the idea that there are few actual idiots in the world. That's an example of negative rep uh, representation. Oh, a dame. Okay, I think this is the time one. Stasis trial. Oh, I love this. I love this. Always my favorite Ruth. This is another thing I learned playing this game for the first time. Like, I was new to the whole Nintendo thing. I... I was like a Sony player the whole time. Never bought into Pokemon or Mario or any of this stuff. So when I came by Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and I played it, I was like, okay, there are a lot of unskippable cutscenes in this. I'm not actually too bad. But by the end of the game, geez, I think you've probably skipped around 300 cutscenes. And usually in games, I don't mind sitting through cutscenes. Like, I'm happy to, even when I know the story, I'm happy to just sit through. Damn it. I'm happy to just sit through and like, and just act like I don't know what's going on. I'm happy to relive that experience. But in this game, it's like there's a lot of just going by the motions. There's a lot of waiting for things to happen that you know are going to happen. You got to scan things. You got to wait for things to scan. You got to open doors. You got to wait for those doors to open. A lot of that. I don't know if there quite needed to be quite as much of that. Yeah. Advantage of foresight and all that. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. oh. The amount of times that thing's hit me. It's embarrassing. There we go. There we go. What do we get for our trouble? Traveler's shield. Yes. I will take that. <laughs> hey, Jason. I've been here for a while, just tea lurking. Hey, nothing wrong with tea lurking. We've all been a tea lurker in our lives, haven't we? And if you're not tea lurking, you're not tea laughing. No, that didn't really go anywhere. Forget I said anything. Okay, this is a bit of a puzzle. This little thing here. You can stop it all you want, but it's not actually going anywhere. But 
anything you do while in stasis gets applied once you leave stasis. So... You can move boulders. You can move boulders by flicking it. Always love that. I think that's it. Yeah, the shrines, like, the start of the game, they're pretty, they're pretty simple things. They're just trying to get you into the whole, the whole groove of using all of your runes and all that kind of stuff. Now you're thinking with runes. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like, I'm two shrines into the game, and I'm already ready. I'm already like, I don't, know, I don't need to see this again. Like, it's the exact same cutscene. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Maybe I'm a very impatient fox, but you know, I'm happy to just leave that in the ether. I think Joseph Anderson, in one of those YouTube reviews, compiled um, like a video of all of the skippable cutscenes that people skip in the game. I think it's like. If you've played the game from start to finish and done everything, there's like two hours of this stuff where you just sit watching scans and stuff like that. It's a lot. I mean, it is a lot. I don't know if it had to be that way. Ooh, oh, okay. Okay, this is an interesting situation. So we've got shrine on that side, shrine on that side. Equal distance apart. Which one do we go for? I guess... I guess we can just warp from the tower and climb down for that. So let's go for let's go for blue. Let's go for blue. Let's do it. Hey, what's the worst that could happen? Famous last words. Especially in this game, where everything is out to get you. The physics engine just wants you dead. Lightning is going to strike you down where you stand. Like you just said God's name in vain fifty times. No one is safe. Luckily, I got cold resistance just for a little while longer. So let's see if it's enough. Gosh, I hope it's enough. I don't know if I've got any more chili peppers in my pocket. Ooh, come on. And more, more rocks, more boulders. I'm standing right here. But all I can do is promise you, if there was an enemy there that would do absolutely nothing. Every time I've used one of these things, for some reason, I'm just determined to miss them. Okay, maybe that one would have hit. Maybe that one would have hit. Ooh, okay. Okay, I've not been very stealthy in this game thus far, because this is like my eighth playthrough. I'm just being kind of stupid. But this is actually an opportunity to get the drop on some. And I know I'm right in front of them. Okay, well, I guess that doesn't work. <laughs> there we go. So long. <laughs> okay, almost there, almost there. I don't think so. Ooh, and it's spiked as well. Nice. Did you... Do... Wait. Did you... Did you... Did he die? Music disappearing said he died, but... I don't know if he just vanished. Okay, that was kind of weird. Anyway, I'm just going to take that as a victory, because why not? Hey, you take your victories where you can get them, right? Hey, Gambolo! A little bit of practice. I think I played this once before um, Tears of the Kingdom came out, so... I'm pretty used to it, but that's also a bad thing. Because I'm acting like I've got, like, 30 hearts and 3 wheels of stamina, and, like, the start of the game, you just do not. You really do not. Oh, sweet, he did die. Okay. Because the music disappeared, I was like, I have sworn he had a couple of hits left in him. Darn, where is this thing? Oh, it's so far. Imagine if you had to walk this in real life. If you had to be Link in real life, you'd need like 8,000 calories a day just to not be in deficit. It would be crazy. 
your legs would be like those crazy strong men that have like like ribs sticking out of their legs like the calves that are like 90 degree angles it'd be mental oh my god just imagine oh my god skelly oh Ooh, it could be skelly it could be skelly <laughs> sorry i don't know how to pronounce your name i don't want to mispronounce it but whatever your name is exactly exactly the amount of times i've, I've jumped and been like okay double 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 tap for the the paraglider is like no that's not happening that's not happening the second we leave the great plateau it's going to be feel like a complete breath of fresh air i'll be able to play it the way i usually play it but you know having a paraglider does have disadvantages as well you can just sort of glide past interesting scenarios at least this way you're forced to confront them like you have to map it out on foot die no no okay there we go have i got a better one i should have a better weapon than that oh i do i really do yes 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 this is much better yes 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 one thing i will say is that regardless of what you think about weapon weapon degradation some people love it some people hate it some people think it's like it's okay whenever you do like a jumping hit like you jump in the air and you land and you hit your weapon that always hurts but it doesn't hurt for good reasons because the impact sound is amazing and the animation it, you, like you really feel it like it's good it's good that it feels that way but because of that every time you do one of those hits all you can feel is okay now my weapon is one step closer to being broken again like it doesn't feel victorious it feels it makes you want to wince that's almost like one example of the amazing sound design and sort of the, the visual design of the game working against it. There's like really good weapon connections in this game. You hurt because you don't want to lose your weapons and it feels like you're always just one step away from losing them. I kind of wish they'd give you one weapon in this game, like a broken master sword or something that just just stayed with you. Like they did like one damage, so it's basically useless. But you've always got it if you just want to chop down trees and stuff. Sometimes in shrines, like, you don't have arrows, you don't have any weapons, like, you're just soft-locked out of this, you just gotta go and come back later. Kind of, kind of feels a little bit unfair. If it's truly free, they should give you those tools, the same way they give you the runes before they leave you on the Great Plateau. Where you like, you can, you can complete any shrine in any situation. Because it's your skills that allow you to beat the shrine. It shouldn't be the tools limiting you. Ah, oh, that's just me, though. I've always had problems with like freeform game design and open world and all that stuff. I kind of wish this game was like a third the size and a third the length, but everything was just super, 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 super polished up. And I know like very few people actually think that way. They'd rather have a massive game where they can explore and, you know, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. I'd much rather it be like 10 hours long to do everything, but I love everything. And everything's super 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 polished and like all the edges have been like sanded down and it's super smooth but then you know i'm like i'm like a super super old gray muzzle that's super old and stuff I'm like you know i've got other stuff i need to do in my life i can't spend a hundred hours playing video games anymore and when i could this game would have been like a godsend whereas now it kind of feels like yeah, it's great. It's super, super fun. But also, I don't, I don't like games that feel like work as much. I never want to craft items using resources in video games. I, it doesn't gel with. I play for the story. I just can I skip that. I don't want to have to fight a boss fifty times in order to to, to get the right amount of horns in order to to craft the ultimate like little goblin skull like helmet and greave set and all that stuff. I don't know. Again, it's just me. You are in a gray muzzle? I don't know. I mean, when does twink death happen? I, I've de I'm definitely in the experienced twink death already, if that was ever a thing. And like, when you're almost 30, you're old. And you feel old as well, which is how it confirms that it's not just you. You are, in fact, just old. It's not necessarily a bad thing, you know. With age comes experience. It doesn't stop you from being an idiot, as, you know, Jason and I have pointed out before, but... 
and stops you being as much of an idiot, which is nice. And here's the end. Ooh, the combat trials. That's a good point. Yeah, those things. Having just enough weapons to get through to the end is amazing. It's such a good experience. But like, if you if you go in a combat shrine you didn't know was a combat shrine... Ooh, I think that's three. Yeah, if you go in a, sh a combat shrine not realizing it, and you've got no weapons, you've got no bow either, I can, that can kind of feel like, oh, okay. Like, oh, I've just discovered this new challenge. Like, can't face it yet. I don't know. It's a mixed bag. Like, maybe you should be more prepared. Maybe this game's more about if you're prepared for this kind of stuff, then, then you don't experience those times when you walk into a shrine and you don't have enough arrows to, to light all the torches and stuff like that. You know. I just happen to be a very stupid, very impatient kind of player, so, you know. Demo, when you're almost 30 years old, what are you saying? Nonsense. I know. No, I, look, obviously, obviously, this is nonsense. No, nobody actually thinks that. But if you go online, like there are certain circles where people talk about 30 like you're 50. And I think some of them actually do believe that, which is a little bit scary. I don't know quite why they believe that. They just do believe that. No, I'm not young anymore. Like, when you start to experience stuff like back pain and all those old movies you watched as a kid when the old person has back pain, you laugh at them and you suddenly stop laughing and go, oh, I, I actually realize why this is this is maybe not as funny as it used to be. Like, that's how you know you're old. It doesn't mean you're super old. But you're old. Back pain sucks. <laughs> Having trouble finding the shrines? Bye. Oh, fantastic. It's one more until you can have my paraglider. That old man sucks. He promised me that paraglider after one shrine. Now I've done three. He's like, one more. Like, how many times are you gonna lie to me? What else are you gonna make me do for this stupid piece of cloth? Come on. I wanna leave this place. I just wanna go have adventures. Luckily, we're getting closer and closer to that. So, let's just get this last shrine. I think it's a doozy as well. We should have too much trouble with it. Now watch me stick my foot in my mouth and, and me take like 50 hours trying to complete it because I've completely forgotten how to play this game. I think I'm going to have to start brewing some sleep, not some sleep, some sneak potions as well. Because if you've got sneak up to three, you can just run up to things and they don't notice you. It's so satisfying. Just catch them. Summer wing butterfly. I know, right, Demo? The old man is like, he's just big. Like, if these are all human beings, like, does that mean Link's gonna get that big when he's his age? Because Jesus. Because Link and Zelda are kind of like the same size. But that old man, it's like, oh my god. They almost look like they're a different kind of, different species of man or whatever. Oh, just about, just about, just about. I remember experiencing trauma around this place, and I don't know why. And it makes me feel very suspicious. Oh, that's why. Oh, good. That's fun. That's good. That's fun. That's fun. <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. 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 Now, here's the question. Do I want to take this on? Because you can. You can kill this. Oh, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this. Oh. Do I have enough arrows? I don't know if I do. Stensonator, I don't know. I mean, that sucks. Yeah, it's the same with stuff like foot pain if you don't have good lumbar support. Like, some people will never experience it. Some people will get to, like like 50 or something or 80 and then they'll suddenly understand what all those jokes comedians say are about like oh now I, now I know what this kind of pain is like, pain is very funny until you're the one experiencing it ain't that life in a nutshell oh come on 
Come on. Oh, I'm not gonna have enough. I'm not gonna have enough weapons to deal with this, am I? No, I'm not. I'm not. Am I gonna go for broke? Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Screw it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Halfway there. Halfway there. Good lord. Okay. Play with fire as well because. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Because one hit of this and it'll kill you. So you gotta be careful. You have to be damn careful. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Maybe I should just spin. Ah, yeah, that's working. Skell or Skelly? Isn't Link shorter than Zelda in this game? He is! Apparently he's a short king, and I never noticed that before. I think it's because, like, unless you're in a flashback, they never stand next to each other. But in Tears of the Kingdom, it's like, it's like very apparent. Like, Zelda is slightly taller than Link. You get it, Link. I'm so proud of you. So cute. And I am getting closer and closer and closer to death here, but hopefully slightly closer to defeating him as well. Okay, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. <sighs> done and done. Look at all this loot we got. Ancient shaft. I'm not going to make any inappropriate jokes about that. Ancient gear. That's That lends itself less to euphemism, which is nice. Ancient screw. Uh, no comment on that. No comment on that. Ooh. We got a nice place to put a bomb. Which I think is what the next shrine might be about. But I don't know. I've never played this game before. I'm a total noob. Let's just see what happens. Oh, demo, damn. I've been in I've been there before. Yeah, I've gotta have like insoles and stuff like that. Just to make my shoes fit. Oh, it sucks. Sucks. The worst. On the plus side, though, we catch the stuff early now, which means it's easy to treat the stuff. Like, what you really don't want to do is go through your whole life never realizing it. It's the people who are, like, super old that get diagnosed with something. They're, like, in their late 80s, and they realize suddenly they've had a back problem since they were 10. They're like, oh, great, okay. So this has gone untreated. At least when you're, when you're young, you can sort of, sort of get used to it. You know what you're doing. You've you got a routine for stuff. You've got creams. If you've got... A special toothpaste, that kind of thing. Maybe you just find out in 50 years that you've been dealing with like a disability or something this whole time. Like that's rough. Like that makes you want to reevaluate everything about your life. You're like, oh my god, who actually am I? I don't even know myself. Yes, bombs, 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 bombs. <laughs> okay, now this should be fun. And this may not be a good sign, but I'm going to immediately save because this game has given me the ability to detonate myself immediately. And I cannot be trusted with this. Yep. Oh, but I'm not dead yet. Jason Husky, Link is just wearing heels for the first time and feeling fab. You know what? I mean, some people wear heels very, very well. I mean... Everyone hates Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2, but when he comes back in 4, rocking those super, super high cyborg heels, like, he's making it work. He was pretty tall as well in Metal Gear Solid 2, so in Metal Gear Solid 4, he's just like, he is in a league of his own. He is like the tallest character in that game. Sweet. Okay. This is just teaching you that you don't have to chuck bombs. You can also just place them down. Um, uh, um, and it's also teaching you that you can use different types of bombs, like bombs that won't immediately roll off. God, the puzzle design is so clever in this game. I completely forgot that it makes you put down a square one, so you can learn that you can do different types of bombs. I love this game. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, at least I didn't blow myself up. I'll take it. I'll take it. There we go. Okay. Oh, I love this. 
This is this just feels like it's straight out of Portal. This is just so portally. You've got little tubes, you've got things that transport stuff back and forth. This is like this is Portal 2 co-op. It's got that all over it. And then all you gotta do is I think there's a nice little secret behind that if we blow it up again. So let's just put a second bomb in their funnel. They see me rolling and bombing. They hate in. Kazamo! Are you kidding me? I couldn't. No, 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 I'm not believing that. I'm not believing that. I th think there's something there. You know, sometimes life just disappoints you. You know, it's okay. Sometimes life doesn't give you lemons. Sometimes life just gives you suck. And that's fine. And you're expecting glory and riches. And it's, it's, just, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. There's at least one uh, chest in each of these, like... Like puzzle rooms. I was looking for it over there. It turns out it was over there. If I looked around for even half a second, I'd have seen it, so... Alright, that one's on me. That one is totally on me. Oh my god. So what do I do with this? Uh... Oh no, I'm missing something very obvious again, aren't I? Where does this go? Is it going there? No, it's too big! Oh god. Doing that thing that you see streamers do. Right, I've played this game, I know what I'm doing. And I'm still acting like a total do for some reason. What? What? No! No, I'm not, no, I'm not moving on, I'm not moving on. What is that there for? Because the... You could, there's a ladder there, so you just climb up. So, so why is there a... Is it over here? I don't think there's anything over there. Why? Why is that juggling that thing there? And there's no place to put it. I've already got the bonus chest. What's the... What is the... Oh, my brain. Why is this here? <laughs> oh, forget it. I, it doesn't matter. If I'm a paraglider, I just glide over here, so... Why does your description say first year anniversary of Tears of the Kingdom when the game came out in May? Okay, first of all, um, I'm an idiot. And I completely forgot because Breath of the Wild came out in March. So for some reason, I thought, like, okay. It came out in March too. It was like exactly seven years apart. It was like sort of poetic that way. Or six years apart rather. But also it kind of feels like we've had a decent amount of time. Like when I first when I first booted the game up, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be comparing Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild as I go along. But I don't want to mention any spoilers because it's been like it's only just come out, you know. Like if some people are saving it for a rainy day or whatever. I don't want to spoil the end of the game for them. Like, it's really been a minute. If it came out in May, what is that? March, April, May. So it's been 10 months. It's been 10 months. It's been a minute. Oh! All of which is to say that the description is wrong because I'm a doof. <laughs> Please forgive me. With this, you have now acquired all of the spirit orbs from the shrines on this plateau. What else do you want? I just want the paraglider. Oh ho! Oh, extraordinary! <laughs> that means it is finally time. Link, it is finally time for me to tell you everything. But first... Is this paraglider? Is it not? Hmm. Oh god. Imagine an X on your map with the four shrines as the endpoints. Find the spot where those four lines intersect. I shall wait for you there. Do you understand? 
where two lines connecting the shrines would cross. There I will be waiting. Well, he just dissolved. That's nice. But we got bombs. We've got mad bombs. We got two bombs. We got circle bombs. We got square bombs. We don't have triangle bombs, but we do have circle bombs. We don't have pentagular bombs. We don't have hexagonal bombs. But we got circular bombs. Okay, I... I can you forgive me? I, I'm not taking him on. I just defeated the other one. Cut me a break. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got two shrines there, and we got two shrines there, which means Temple of Time. Temple of Time. Let's have a look at the Temple of Time. Luckily, because it's in the middle, I think no matter which shrine you end up doing last, never really too far away, so. Hey, say man, I was so hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. Oh my god, I was so excited. And then, I don't know, it's, it's weird. I really like the game, but I'm absolutely aware that there's just a ton of stuff that I would prefer was different, or that I just do different if I had the chance to, to make a game like that. If I had a hundredth of the skill needed to craft a game that complicated and that that beautiful. Like, I, I wish they'd done shrines a little differently. Like, if I'd known that they were going to have, like, a thousand Karak seeds and they were going to have even more shrines, but apart from, like, a, a bit of a palette swap, they were kind of the same sort of shrines. I don't know if I'd have been as excited for the sequel. But at the same time, I did have a lot of fun with it. Did all the shrines. 100% of it as much as you can stand to do. Like, obviously, I am not getting every Kor Korok. I'm not one of those completionist crazy people. Used to be, but... God, I do not have the time anymore. The story... Oh. That game is beautiful. If you just take out, like, the middle chunk, and you just have, like, okay, like, the first hour or two hours of gameplay, and, like, the last couple of hours as well, and, like, a couple of the tiers as well, that's almost a perfect experience. Like... You can somehow subtract all the other stuff from that. That's 10 out of 10 for me. But then you factor everything else in the game into it. It's like, it's still very good. You're still looking like 8 or 9, easy peasy. I just don't know if it's a game that I'm going to want to come back to in like... No, actually, that's pretty unfair. That's pretty unfair. I think... I think Tears of the Kingdom is a game that I'm going to come back to in the next couple of years to, to check out. But the game I'm not going to come back to is Breath of the Wild. Because it really feels like Tears of the Kingdom is the full vision of all the stuff they wanted to accomplish with Breath of the Wild. It's just like, I, pretty much everything is improved in it. Which unfortunately makes this game feel a little bit... Ooh. Ooh. Glowing Angel Woman. Yeah, unfortunately, it makes Breath of the Wild feel just a little obsolete by comparison. It's like, okay. It sort of ends up being a little bit like a, a Godfather, where you see all the Mafia movies come out in the decades afterwards. You can you can see the bones they built on. You can be like, okay, this is such a fundamental staple. Everyone took cues from this, that, that the original starts to feel a bit old by comparison. June's very similar. Like, if you read the book June or, or see the movie, it's like... Sci-fi properties have been cribbing from June for, for years, like decades. To the point where it starts to feel a little derivative. But it's not June that's being derivative. It's every other sci-fi property that's been derivative. It's a bit unfortunate. It's like, if, you, if you're truly creative, and you're an absolute pioneer in your field... Yeah, heart container. If you're an absolute pioneer, then you'll end up feeling obsolete in 50 years. When people who haven't experienced you experience all the stuff that was inspired by you but then manage to tailor it in in even better and more interesting and more sort of unique ways. Go and bring peace to Hyrule.
Oh! Absolutely scary. It's, um, I love seeing reviews for that game because the one thing people don't think about it is that it's mundane or that they don't have a strong opinion. Like, you can really like it, you can really, it's a bit marmite -y. Like, you love it, you hate it. Nobody has a milk toast take on Tears of the Kingdom. Everyone's opinion, in my experience, has been worth listening to. Old man, the blessing of the goddess has made you that much more resilient, I see. <laughs> here I am. Get up here, quickly. Climb up, I promise I won't push you down again. Jason Husky. Try being a completion. I tried being a completionist once. Only managed to 100% three games. I struggle to keep my mind active when collecting again. Honestly, kind of the same. Like when I was playing games and I had all the free time in the world, that was sort of the era before uh, podcasts were really a thing. It's like these days you can literally just plug in some music, um, put the headphones on, and just sort of melt a couple of hours away. But when I was playing games, like especially on consoles you know you you can't do that the facility doesn't exist so when you're in the game world you're in the game world you are there to play games for a solid few hours and then you unplug and then you do something else and these days it's almost easier to be a completionist i just don't have the time for it anymore like yeah you know, i've got bills to pay and i think <laughs> we're gonna find out what's going on now then the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. Not a stupid name. I was the last leader of Hyrule. A kingdom which no longer exists. <laughs> the Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. Flashback time. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the Divine Beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. 
But nay. Oh. Was cunning, and he responded with Sorry. a plan beyond our imagining. He appeared from deep below Hyrule Castle, seized control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts. Against us. The champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight, gravely collapsed upon the fending princess. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That night was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shika slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. Hmm. Okay, well, okay. King Rome, old man no more. Go on. Here is the paraglider, just as I promised. Oh, thank God. Okay. And he's going to let me keep the spirit orbs as well. Oh, that's nice of him. Being dead for a hundred years really mellows you out, huh? Da 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 Oh. Still feels good. Seven years later. Yes! With that, you should be able to safely fly off the cliffs surrounding this area. And I think that's it. Uh, I gave you a backstory. Uh, like Scale Scale, you said, basically there was a big pig. Uh, pig made a big problem. Um, not cleaned up after the pig yet. Uh, pig still in the castle, so please go kill the pig. And also, if you could save my daughter while you're doing it, that'd be, that'd be pretty nice as well. But you know, the, the, the main problem's a pig. The main problem's a pig. Saving my daughter's a little, little optional. Just, uh, the, the pig that's made a big, piggy mess. Good luck! <laughs> I've told you everything I can. Link, you must save Hyrule. Oh, that's where those 
those little like spirit effects around King Rung really look like Pose from Tears of the Kingdom. Is that is anyone else seeing that? Is that just me? Like, they really look like Pose. I wonder if they actually reuse that. And just use that same sprite for the Pose. Really is similar. Like a different, different shade of blue, but like... Oh, I never noticed that before. Hey, Latimer! Hello! <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to figure out my way in the stream, like... I don't want to interrupt cutscenes so much, so I'm trying to keep quiet, but at the same time, everyone's everyone's still talking in the chat. Like, uh, let me know if you want me to, like, talk and riff during cutscenes, or if you'd rather me keep quiet. Because a couple of people mentioned this is the first time they've played the game, or the first time they've seen it. So, I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but at the same time, you're watching me play it? I mean, trust me, it, it's getting ruined in its own way. I promise, so. But yeah. Oh my god, we've got a paraglider! <laughs> We're out in the world. Demo, you can tell this is a fantasy world because the people speak in British accents. Yes, and you can tell it's Japanese production because the people who've been hired to speak with those British accents are actually American. And you can tell because every, like, 50 syllables, they'll use the wrong sound. Like, it's, 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 it's decent, it's alright, but you, you can tell they're not British. Like, you, you know none of the voice actors in, in this game are actually British, which is fine. You know, I don't hold it against them. Same time, though, like... Can't you just hire British voice actors? I don't know, it's, it's difficult as well, because American people, have they struggle with the, the British accent. A lot of them go for Australian if you ask them to do a British accent. Whereas British people, I think they have an easier go at it. Like, look at the amount of Brits who are working in Hollywood, like, putting on American accents all the time. I think it's just because we have more exposure to it, you know, like... 50% of all this, the media you consume probably comes from America. Whereas, in the case of most Americans, I know 50% of the stuff they consume doesn't come from Britain, you know. Just a familiarity thing. It's the same reason most people, like, sing with American accents, right? That's the accent you hear most. If you're not, not you hear most, that's... It would be like the most familiar foreign accent, at least. You know. <laughs> we need hot dogs, Link, and these pork chops aren't gonna make themselves. Cut me a slice of Ganon bacon, why don't ya? Ooh, that starts to sound a little... That sound starts to sound a little shippy. I wanna make it sound like King Rome and Ganon have, like, some history together. Like, we've got this big... Pig beast X of mine, and he's really tearing this kingdom apart. Do you mind, like, killing him for me? Oh, also, save my daughter, save my daughter, but... But mainly just the pig. Like, it's a very selfish date. Never splits the bill. It always leaves the toilet seat up. Okay, this... I kind of like the idea of there being that huge amount of history between them. Oh my god. Okay. I apparently got 50 bats trying to kill us now. That's, that's fun. That's fun. What do you want? What do you want? Oh, thank god. Okay. In Tears of the Kingdom, keys become incredibly valuable because they're, their wings and their eyes have unique properties that make archery incredibly fun. But in this game, I don't know if I could think of a more useless item to have in your inventory. Is that maybe Choo Choo Jelly? Choo Choo Jelly is kind of useless too. Shift, for me, this is the first ever experience of any Zelda game. Unbelievable, I know. Oh my god. Please don't let me ruin it. Please go. Please don't experience it for yourself properly. Yeah, ha, ha. You found me. Korok Seed. Bye bye. It's always tempting to drop the rock on them afterwards. Okay, Shift, if this is your first ever experience of any Zelda game, I don't think it would be complete until you hear this sound. <laughs> it's it's so cruel and so cute at the same time. I think I'll just do it once more. Just make sure you got clean audio of it. I'll just we'll break. One more. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I love these little guys. They're so cute. And some of them dance as well. But I'm getting into spoilers if I if I say too much about that. Now you're actually making me want to play the games. Oh. I mean, if you've got like a Nintendo Switch, definitely recommend picking it up. I don't know if I'd recommend Breath of the Wild or if I'd just say go into Tears of the Kingdom, maybe watch a playthrough of Breath of the Wild, but... Oh. They're, they're a trip, man. They're, they're a complete trip. They're so much fun. And look, some people don't, j don't jibe with stuff like the, the weapon degradation system. You get performance issues in a couple of little areas. It's actually not as bad as it used to be. Some people think it's a little long, you know, stuff like that. But, I mean, all of that stuff aside, the art direction, like the story, the music, this is, this is a game that I think everyone should at least check out at least once in their lives. Even if it is just watching a Let's Play or something. It's just something... I mean, I don't usually do this in a stream, but let's just sit here for a second and just take it in. There's just so much going on, even when you're not moving in the game wind moving through the, the grass little little particle effects you got dust in the air you got geese flying in a certain direction clouds moving everything feels so alive i mean you couldn't come up with a better name for this than breath of the wild because it really feels that way everything is just breathing it's just beautiful this is the kind of miyazaki inspired world that you just want to live in I mean, you know, purple blob monsters aside. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Choo Choo Jelly does have a couple of applications. So yeah, you can use it to refresh yourself in the desert. Uh, they blow up with the element they have. Um, you can also put it in your light cycle if you get the motorbike, if you complete all of the DLC stuff. So you can use it as fuel as well. I mean, I'm such a stupid person. I I love the story in games, but I don't interact with the mechanics too much. So I'll pick up 800 choo-choo jellies and I'll immediately forget I've got them and I'll never, I'll never touch them again. It's just dumb. I should probably be above that kind of stuff, but I don't know. It was 100% worth throwing a rock at that Korok, though. 100%. That's a, they did not have to program in that silly little, like stumble it makes if you throw a rock on it and they didn't have to program in that adorable little sound it makes either but they did because they knew for a fact the players are going to deliberately be throwing rocks at these guys and in tears of the kingdom players are going to be strapping rockets to them and doing other abominable war crimes against them i literally don't think i can explain why it would take too much of the stream but suffice it to say gamers are monsters <laughs> they're, the, they're they're truly truly awful people I consider myself among them, obviously. But even I'd never strap a rocket to one. Like, come on. It's so, they're so cute. It's just mean. It's just mean. A hundred rupees! Its dazzling silver light reflects your beaming smile. That's another weird thing about this game. Shift, depending on the way you play it, it can be a very, very long way into the game before you encounter your first, like, like, coin. In this game, the currency is rupees, but you can, you can be like 20, 40 hours in before you ca encounter any rupees at all. It's really weird. Like in most games, but by the time you've left the first dungeon, you'll have like 100 gold pieces in your, your pocket or whatever. But in this game, like, it could be a really long time. You can, you can play most of the game without even realizing there's a currency in it. Until you visit a shop and they're like, okay, money please. And you're like, oh, okay, oh, okay, I guess there is money in this game. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, do I want to do this? I think I want to do this. Yeah. Spears are one of those things. I could play a spear all day long. Love them. Pretty vibe with a spear. Probably have a spear in real life if I had to. If I was one of those fighter types. Which I'm not. Love her, not a fighter. That's the way I roll. Yeah. There we go. There we go. 
You just collect their weapons, just collect their teeth, just collect bones of their ancestors, all that good stuff. I don't think I've got any arrows, so I'm gonna have to be a little more hands-on for a minute. Ah. I don't know if you can trigger Flurry Rush by dodging arrows. I don't think it works that way. I can always try it next time it comes up. All ears. It isn't just that the game is beautiful, that the beautiful landscape is full of real places you can go and not just some background set piece. A hundred percent agree. Which is why people people vibed with Elden Ring so much. It's like, okay, not only are the landscapes in this game stunning, like every place you point your finger on the horizon, you go to all those places too. Like when you discover I don't want to spoil it, but when you discover just how quote unquote to deep the the some of the maps can get. It is an absolute joy to um, see something that looks so picturesque and beautiful. Be like, well, that's clearly a, like a, a skybox or something. It's not. It's not. You go to all of those places. You go everywhere. It's actually, it's actually a little overwhelming sometimes. Because something about that map is it's, I mean, you feel it. That is a big map. If anything, Elder Ring might be, might be a little, might be a little much. Like... Oh, come on. That really felt like a flurry rush. Yeah, sometimes, especially when you find yourself with best time, you end up not wanting to play games where the maps are so big that it takes, like, it takes four hours of real in-game time to travel from one, end, one corner of the map to the other. It's like, okay, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Uh, like, these, these things are huge. But... How rewarding is it to actually travel? Like, am I doing interesting stuff along the way, or is it just a lot of stuff? A lot of, like, physical space to, to traipse down. Like, I, I'd rather have a smaller map, but more concentrated stuff on it. But at the same time, if it can be beautiful, definitely got no objections to that. And I landed without a hitch. Loki Knight, and hey, what's up? A long stick with a pointy end is the weapon of champions. I mean, damn straight it is. If you think about it, an arrow is kind of just a spear that you launch at someone. It's like a mini spear. It's still a spear, though. I think a lot of the most successful armies in the world, before we got our hands on, like, nuclear technology and made like a lot of that kind of stuff obsolete i think a lot of the most successful militaries learned how to how to work with spears and how to keep distance between you and the enemy stuff like the the greek phalanxes and stuff like that it's like they had it figured out they knew what they were doing you've got a spear that's like six feet long the enemy's got a, a short sword that's like three feet you can just you can just poke and prod at them like a school bully that's keeping someone at arm's length just while you just pummel them. Like, they can't even get close to you. You just take them out from a distance. Okay, there we go. Another thing about climbing in this game, you actually feel exhausted by the time you've finished it. That's one reason it makes sense that they keep the paraglider from you. It's like, you want it to feel like an achievement. It really does. Thinking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, since it's the game... Through, and it's open world. See, I've not checked out the original Final Fantasy, so I don't know... I don't know if I'd, I'd understand the weird split timeline stuff they're doing with um, Remake and Rebirth if I've not played the original. That's kind of what's kept me away from it. But I've heard pretty damn good things about it, so... I hope you're having fun with it. Maybe I'll have to check it out next. Hmm... And I mean, 100% right. Guns are literally just throwing spear tips. Those tips happen to be quite round, but you know, it doesn't stop them being spear tips, you know. Second tower achieved. Whoa! I'll take it. Woo. 
Chica Sense are now operational. Yeah, the the sound can get a little annoying sometimes. Which is good if you're looking for them, but hmm, you want to go want to go hunting for them. I might get back to that later. So yeah, for everyone who's not played Breath of the Wild before this, this is sort of like a stretch of the game where there's a lot of, like, some kind of personal journey. There's a lot of, a lot of finding your feet, finding your place in the world. You can kind of, you gotta play this game the way you want to play it. You can just do some exploring for a while. You can, you can grind, you can get some, get some monster parts. You can go straight through the story. Which actually I wouldn't recommend. I think the story works best when there's there's a little bit of distance between all the cutscenes and stuff. So you can feel the breath of the wild before you you sort of before you save the world. You can you can give yourself a reason as to why it's worth saving. Like you can see all the natural beauty going on. You just stretch your legs a little bit. You've been asleep for a hundred years, so. Girl, I'm liking it, but I haven't played the original. I could buy a port, but I want to try and play it on PS1. Just hope the prices on eBay aren't stupid expensive when I do want to get it. Oh, no, they will be. They will be. I've tried looking for, like, the original Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation, and those prices are criminal. It is mad. I mean, I get it, because there's, like, there's, pro there's possibly, like, three copies in the world that haven't already been picked up and played before, but still. Like... Metal Gear Solid. Oh, that's the best title on the PS1 as far as I'm concerned. It's so good. Tactical espionage action. It's like the first stealth game. It's not the first stealth game, but it's the first stealth game that everybody points to when you say what's the first stealth game. Made by Hideo Kojima. Stars a really talented voice cast, including David Hayter as Solid Snake. It's just the presentation of that game. You can see exactly... The director went on to make the kind of games he wanted to make, but you could see all of that DNA right there on the PS1 with that first title. It was so good. So there we go. So I kind of... Like in Skyrim, sometimes you can sort of bodge your way off cliffs a little bit. But sometimes you don't die, which is nice. It's nice not to die. I'll put that on a postcard. Okay, there's a goat. I wonder if I can get... Do I have any arrows? Oh, I've got arrows. I've got arrows. Oh, I kind of feel bad now. I kind of feel a little bad. Oh, just wanted to see what would happen. Goat meat. What you hate when you get hit in the head with an arrow when you turn into raw meat. It just sucks. Hey, Six or Fox, Six or Fox. Hey, what's going on? I just dreamed of Breath of the Wild, just having a good time. Just jumping up in the air pointlessly for no reason. Because why not? We're just finding our footing. Got some wood. Always nice. Got a fire going if I can find a little bit of fire. Don't have any fire arrows though. Got a torch lit or something. Ooh, here's a good puzzle though. Just do a little bit of pruning. Get some cool safina. Have I got any apples? I do. Okay, so this is why you always have to have at least one apple in your inventory. Because if you put it down just right and make a little offering to the flat-faced stone statue guys... ta -da! Yeah, ha, ha You found me! Proxy! I'll see you later, little guy. Oh, they're so cute. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, what's in here? Ooh, now that looks good. Okay. Gotta have at least one break type weapon in this game. Otherwise, good luck getting those wooden boxes open. First time I saw a wooden box and I thought, okay, I know what I'm doing here. And I set fire to it. And I immediately burned up all the stuff was inside it, and I felt like such an idiot. 
Like, okay, game. You, you see me. You're, you're smarter than I thought you were. Fine. All right. No bird eggs. Sometimes you climb to the top of the tree and there's a couple of little, little eggs and you can make a lovely little omelet for yourself. God, look at all that mist. So mysterious. So mysterious. Wonder where it'll lead. And of course, we've got to go over here first. So, seek out Impa. There's a lovely little place called Kakariko Village. I think that's the next destination. We're not gonna, like, we're not gonna beeline there. We can take our time. Just go throughout the world. Hope there aren't any, um, half horse, half lion creatures that might want to shoot us out of the sky. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. We do not want those things finding you at this point in the game. Oh, no. You know when they find you as well. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Can you imagine if they walked on rocks? Can you imagine how terrifying it would be if their spider legs just started crawling on rocks? Oh. No. Oh, my God. Those things are terrifying. I mean, they'll take you out in a hit. Unless you've got, like, ten hearts or something. Like, one hit. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter what condition you're in. You are you are dead. You are gone. Oh, they're the worst. Piano do be evil. This game is the only game you, you can play that'll make you genuinely terrified to hear piano keys. The piano is the least scary thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, okay. As long as I don't move... As long as I don't click continue, that thing can't get me, can it? Oh. Okay, I can't climb, can I? Oh, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Uh, okay. Okay, what you gotta do is break line of sight. If they can see you, they can kill you. Look at that thing. Have you ever seen a thing look more evil in your life? Like that thing from The Incredibles. Ugh. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Luckily, though, I think we're mostly in the clear. We can go and find out about that Kakariko Village thing. Always ominous to see a saving icon in the bottom left, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't mean a huge boss is on the way. Sometimes it just means the game has found you in a new area or something. No, come back. I want to eat you. Oh. Oh. What's this? Hey, thanks, buddy. Have fun on the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Let us know how it goes. That game, from what I hear, that game is wild. Oh, no, 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 no. Come back, come back, come back. No. Oh. Didn't even get a horse. Darn it. They're so hard to sneak up on. I only wanted to ride you. Now I'm going to have to walk the whole way. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 oh. Sometimes this game is very, very generous with the inclines, and sometimes it is just not. Like... I think that one will be okay. I think that one will let me rest, but I don't know. Oh, I can hear the music changing. Oh, I think I'm here! Let's have a look. Let's have a little investigate. Oh, look at it! 
Okay, okay, I'm not dead, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. Okay. Well, I'm about to be dead, though. I don't have a way to get out of here without... Oh, I'm gonna drown. I'm gonna drown. I can already tell. Unless... Oh, okay, no. I'm dead. I'm dead. Luckily in this game, that just means that you take a little... little point of damage instead. I mean, thank God. Have a little skewer, maybe? Yeah. Good as new. Good as new. And continue the arduous task of climbing up every vertical surface in the game. And if your enemy lives in a castle, you're going to get there eventually if you just keep climbing everything. There we go. Almost. Almost. There we go. There we go. Okay. Beautiful. And I can just glide down. And there's a little shrine I can do too. Hey, even better. Always satisfying. So, let's go in here and see what's going on. Skip like eight cutscenes while I'm doing it. I have a feeling I know what this is going to be. Just, let's get my weapon stocked up. I'll, ju I'll just check. I'll just check and make sure. Eightfold blade? Yes, please. I guess not. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of something then. Got a lot of bone hands. Probably don't need that many dead hands in my pocket. If I'm being honest. If I'm being honest, you know. Sometimes you got to be honest with yourself. Beautiful. Okay, come on. And here we go. Oh, it's a tutorial shrine. Okay. Use a side hop to avoid enemy attacks. Okay, well, this isn't going to do that much damage then. Because it's still trying to teach me stuff. Hey, what you doing? I guess you should probably be side hopping. Oh, no, come on, come on. I got this, I got this, I got this. Yes! I got it. Done. Can I have my spirit orb, please? Oh, okay, all right, I'll do a backflip. I'll do a backflip. Yeah! Let's try to hit you with a dead guy's hand. Why not? Yes! First time, first time, first time. It's gonna... Oh my god, it broke in no time at all. Those arms are rubbish. Those arms, they do decent damage, but they are rubbish. And now a parry. Okay. So ready, shield. And then A. Ooh, not bad. Not as atrocious at this, the combat in this game as I thought it would be. I mean, I'll take it. I will take it. I mean, I need a weapon in my hand first. That'd help, but still. I think the sword weapons are best, because if you you just charge up a like a like a circle spinning attack and then you release it, it just it just makes sense, you know. There we go. Beautiful. Eat my dust. Mmm. Delicious dust. Delicious link dust. And there we go. Sweet. Guardian sword? I feel like I can replace the, the hand that just died, so that's good. Loki, you know you're looking to do streams like this in a regular thing? Uh, or is this just a one-off? I don't know! I'm gonna see how I feel, honestly. I mean, I like looking back at this game. It's... 
It's a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. But it depends, like, if I end up committing to doing a full playthrough, it's like, are there going to be a hundred episodes of this? Because that's a lot. I mean, I like commitment as much as the next Fox, but you know, a lot is a lot. I guess let's see how much people want it, you know. I try and be a generous Fox, you know. No promises, but I do what I can. The important thing is, we are now a quarter of the way to getting another piece of heart, which is good. Because, damn. Four hearts in this game is not very generous at all. Admittedly, Tears of the Kingdom is a little bit more difficult, but you can die very easily in this game if you don't know what you're doing. And let's face it, I kind of know what I'm doing, just because I played it before, and I'm still dying all the time anyway. I mean, I think I died in the first two minutes by falling off a cliff, so, you know. In case you had any doubt that I was still an idiot. There you go. Oh. Okay. So, try and be really sneaky. The bloopies give rupees. I think that's why they're called bloopies. They don't give off a lot, but considering I've got no rupees, I mean, I'll take what I can get. Ah, no! Come back! Come back! Ah, oh, no, he's gone. He's gone, he's gone. Five? That's pretty lucky. I'll take it. I will take that. I'll take that to the bank. That means I've got a hundred in the bank, which means... Oh, wait, wait. I've got more than a hundred. I have... A hundred and twenty. Which means I may have enough for whatever this crazy cactus situation is. What is going on over here? Fairies are kind of overpowered because they essentially give you, like, a restart. So when you die, you come back with a couple of hearts instead of being knocked out straight back to the game over screen. There's only one other way to do that, which is to get a champion power, which you can disable depending on how hard you want the game to be. Fairies are great. I think you can carry up to five of them as well. So you essentially get, like, if you have the champion power and it's all maxed out, you get like seven tries from full health before you actually die in the game. Which is pretty generous stuff. Like however hard a game you, people say it is, like, there are concessions that way as well. If you want it to be a little bit on the simpler side. Oh! Three fairies. The fairy fly from your pouch and heal all your wounds the moment you lose your last heart. It's easily mistaken for a firefly at night, but it glows in the daylight as well as night. Yeah, fairies are great. There's only a couple areas in the game where you can actually get them, though. So hard to track down, but always worth it. Oh god. Boy. Sweet boy. Please, listen to my story. Uh, sure? I am the great fairy Katera. This place was once a beautiful spring. But as time passed, fewer and fewer travelers arrived to offer me rupees. As a result, my power has abandoned me. Oh, I'm nearly powerless now, so I beg your help. I need rupees to become whole again. All I need is a hundred rupees. Once my power has been restored, I can help you do great things, boy. A little bit demeaning, but I'll take it. Now, if you have rupees, hand them over to me, <laughs> quickly. How quickly the tone changes. In order for me to regain my power, I need a hundred rupees. See, if you applied, like, real-life logic in this, that just sounds so suspect, but, you know, if you played this game before, you know you really need to do it. You just gotta give them the money. Otherwise, good luck upgrading your armor and stuff. Thank you. You are too kind. <coughs> Here we go. I make no defense of this cutscene.
Every time I see this cutscene, I feel like I should be checking over my shoulder to make sure there's no one behind me. I don't know why. There's just, there's just something about it. I'm not going to point any fingers. I'm just going to say, it gives you the impression that someone working at Nintendo likes big ladies. I'll just say that. Mm. Oh, what a feeling. First breath of fresh air after an eternity of decay. It's just so intoxicating. Thanks to you, I've been returned to my former glory. What a glory it is. And as they say, one good turn deserves another. I can help you, boy. Still dropping the boy in. It's so, so demeaning. I'm a man. Come on. Allow me to enhance your clothing. It's the least I can do, but I will need the necessary materials. Ah. With the power available to me, I should be able to enhance your clothing a little bit. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ooh. Hey, three to five is not bad. That is not bad. I will take it. I will take it. All right, let me do my thing. Okay, that's kind of cute. That is kind of cute. Yes. One whole level. Oh, you've heard about set bonuses, right? How a set of clothes that have all been enhanced twice could have a bonus? But only if you wear the whole set. Well, and not all sets have a bonus. I thought it would improve some other clothes for you, but it looks like that's not possible right now. Hmm. Please come back here once you get some clothes or materials. Or once you've restored the power of my sisters. See you later! Ah! Yeah, she's kind of cute, actually. I don't know, it's just something about the cutscene that's, you know... Whenever I watch it, I just feel like there are some people out there that are going to really like it. You know, like, like, really like it. You know, each of their own. <laughs> Any branches? No? No branches? Not a one. <gasps> branch! Oh, great. I got a branch and I can't carry it. Okay. Oh, Goblin Arm has to go. It's... You take, like, three hits. It, yeah, it's old and fragile, but it'll do in a pinch. I mean, it is literally someone's arm, so... Jason Husky, I forgot about the audio. No, you can't forget about the audio. Otherwise, what are you doing? Just like an innocent cuckoo on a roof. In my grasp. I could eat. I could bake into a pie. And instead, I will fly. Oh, I love it. Never gets old. Never gets old. There you go, innocent cuckoo. No, I'll just put that down. I'll just put that down. I think there was a mission to find them later on anyway, so I don't want to go messing around too much with that stuff. You never know. Claret. Welcome to Enchanted, my high-end boutique. The exclusively stocked with special garments of the Claret collection. In fact, that stealth chest guard over there is highly recommended. Oh, it's probably at 10,000 rupees, though. We also buy anything you don't need, so just talk to me when you're ready. <laughs> what would you like to sell? Oh, I don't know. How much is my soul worth? I'm getting them for that. Chichu jellies, kind of. You know. I'm not doing much with that. I think the good thing about vendors in this game is they all offer the same price as well. So you don't have to go to 50 different places and like try and figure out who has the best rates. I think it's all the same. So I get pretty excited about stuff from the outside world. Aww. Gray's kind of cute. Come back anytime. Yeah, I know the... Aha! Uh -huh. That's... It's a little... It's a little suspect. Let's see if I can get that again. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's something about that sound. Especially when you're playing at night, that just cuts through the air. You would not believe how loud that feels. How many valuable stuff have I... Can I... Do I want to risk trying to get the set? Do I have enough money? I guess it couldn't hurt. I guess it couldn't hurt. I'll sell all this. Sweet. And sell the Amber as well. <laughs> and, oh god, I'm already running out of stuff to sell. Ten? Ooh, 
where I'm just, I'm just, I'm just groping for anything I can sell at this point. Okay, how much is that? How much is that? Okay, so the tunic is 120. Oh, I all set. I all set. Yes. Oh. Especially for early in the game, this is such a good set to have. I will take that. And it looks great too. Uh, so if I just order these. Hey, that's not right. There we go. And yes. Look at that. That is one snazzy, snazzy link. Boop. Sweet. I think if I go back up to the fairy, she'll be able to upgrade it as well. Let's just, let's find out, let's find out. That'll really make it a lot easier in the early game. It'll make sure I'm not dying every time I'm hit by somebody. Which again has a bigger problem in Tears of the Kingdom for some reason. They really upped the difficulty in that game. You can find areas where you had no difficulty at all in Breath of the Kingdom. You're dying in like one hit in that game at the start. I mean, with starter level enemies. It's wild. I don't know why this it's some kind of balancing thing. It makes sense to them. I think it's a little difficulty curves a little gentler and a little more forgiving in this game though. Kind of kind of prefer it in this one. Plus in the other game, I don't know if you have the innkeeper saying ah, in that way she does. I don't know if she's in it, so. You'd miss that. Stick to Breath of the Wild. Ah, welcome back, boy. You want me to enhance your clothing? Mm. Power available to me. I should be able to enhance your clothing a little bit. I'll take it. Uh. I will take it. Mm. Oh, she's gonna kiss me again, isn't she? All right. Give me your kiss. <sighs> oh, it's so embarrassing. Okay. Okay, one more kiss. Good news for everyone in the chat. One more kiss and we're good to go. Mm. Give me the kiss. Mm. Link's like, when is, what? I don't know if I asked for that. I just wanted better clothes, but... I mean... Uh. Thank you, I guess? Uh. I don't know, with the other, the other fairies, he gets a little embarrassed, because they like... Like, give him a big hug and, and stuff like that. But with the first upgrade where she just kisses you, it's like, looks like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't really have much of a reaction. It's sort of like, yeah, okay. It's like, it's like 20 foot lady is like blowing me a kiss. Oh, don't take it. I'll suffer through that if I get some, some better clothes. Now is a very special time because we're going to meet someone who I think think is in most of the mainline Zelda games, but she's different in each one. And she's super old, and she's super cool. You there, who are you? How dare you trespass upon Lady Impa's abode? Hmm? Ooh. Is that a Sheikah Slate? But that would mean you are... No, it's not possible. Can it be? Yep, you better believe it. Please forgive us for behaving so rudely. Of course, we've heard the legends from Lady Impa herself. Please, friend, go ahead and step inside. Kind of cool to be treated like that. You're like, ah, we just thought you were a, some nobody. But you've got like a gadget. That means you're the most important person in the world. I'm like, damn right I am. Got an apple and everything. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about iPhones. Korok! Ha <laughs> You found me! Another Korok seed for the collection. Bye-bye! <laughs> Aww. Not as big a fan of the floating ones, because you can't drop rocks on them that way. Although... Not too far from a cliff. I don't know, I'll find a way. I'll be back for you later. To drop rocks on you. When you least suspect it. 
Koroks love me. Oh, I almost forgot about this. Paya, a man. I'm so surprised. Huh, is that? It's a Sheikah Slate. Could you be the hero my grandmother told me about? What was his name? Lin... Lin... Hmm... Oh, it's not that I forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm just Papa speaking. As for me, the name is pa, 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 pa. Bless her heart. Oh, my name is Paya. <sighs> Phew. I got it out. Oh, he's so shy. I know I should be able to say that easily, seeing as how it's my own name and all. I'm so sorry. Anyway, my grandmother's been awaiting your return ever since I was little. But please hurry inside. I think it's time for another cutscene. <laughs> ah! Master, Master Link! You're very close to me right now. I just... My, my grandmother's ready for you at her abode. Please hurry to her. Bless her, she is so... I mean, look, this is not someone to be intimidated by. He's like five foot two, and he's got a pot lid on the back. I mean, come on. Come on, get real, Paya. Get real. He ain't no hero. Now, Ganon, on the other hand. Ooh, Tears of the Kingdom Ganon? Ooh. I mean, I don't mean to be implying anything, but, you know, so he's a good looking dictator. Finally awake. <sighs> Cutscene. It has been quite a long time, Link. I am much older now, but you remember me, don't you? Who are you? Ah. What is the matter? You are looking at me as though I am a stranger to you. Those eyes. They lack the light of familiarity. It is I, courageous one, Impa. Surely you must at least remember the name Impa. Does this face look like it's remembering anything to you? It doesn't look like you remember what he ate for breakfast that morning. Probably a raw steak, knowing ink. I see. So you have lost your memory. Well, it matters not. In fact, that may actually be a blessing in disguise for the time being. Dearest Link, please come a bit closer. Smell some of my disgusting old person breath. It's not that bad. Honest. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> a hundred years ago. Yes, a hundred years ago, the kingdom of Hyrule was destroyed. After you fell... Princess Zelda's final wish was to place you in a sacred slumber. And then, all alone, alone she went to face Ganon. Highlighted in red, because he's evil. Before Princess Zelda went to nobly meet her fate, she had trusted me with some words she wished to say to you. I have been waiting a hundred years to deliver the princess's message. Oh. However... These words, which the princess risked her life to leave you, well, if you are to hear them, you must be prepared to risk your life as well. But I am afraid that burden may be too much to bear while you are still without your memories. I leave the choice to you. When you feel you are ready to receive the princess's message, return to me. Um... I'm ready, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to have a message. Where's the message? I'm ready. You not trust me, old lady with spikes in her hat? Oh. The words that the princess risked her life to impart to you. I cannot pass them on to someone who lacks conviction. Are you prepared to risk your life for the greater good? I mean... I mean, we're in a video game, so... Yeah, why not? <laughs> Not a memory to your name, yet you are as intent as ever to charge forward with only courage and justice on your side. You have not changed a bit. Once a hero, always a hero. Even if you drop rocks on defenseless little forest critters. Don't think I wasn't watching you out there. 
You're on some mighty thin ice, mister. One more time, and you'll feel the whip. Uh, no. Anyway. <laughs> what? Yeah. Very well. Since you have lost your memory, I will recount for you all that has happened. Feel another cutscene coming along. Okay. Okay, I'll try not to interrupt. <clears throat> The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. This evil has been turned back time and time again by a warrior wielding the soul of a hero and a princess who carries the blood of the goddess. With the passage of time, each conflict with Ganon faded into legend. So listen closely as I tell you of this legend that occurred 10,000 years ago. Hyrule was then blossoming as a highly advanced civilization. Even the most powerful monsters posed little threat to the denizens of the realm. The people thought it wise to utilize their technological prowess to ensure the safety of the land should Calamity Ganon ever return. They constructed four mechanical wonders that came to be known as the Divine Beasts. They also built a legion of autonomous weapons called Guardians. The Divine Beasts were piloted by four individuals of exceptional skill from across the land. And thus, the plan to neutralize Ganon was forged. Upon Ganon's inevitable return to Hyrule, the princess and the hero fought alongside these four champions against this ancient evil. The Guardians were tasked with protecting the hero as the Divine Beasts unleashed a furious attack upon their terrible foe. And when the hero wielding the sword that seals the darkness delivered his final blow, the princess used her sacred power to seal away Calamity Ganon. Oh. A hundred years ago. In preparation for the foretold revival of Ganon, we strove to follow the lead of our ancestors of 10,000 years prior. Oh. But in the end, despite our best efforts and careful planning, we underestimated his power. In order to avoid ever making that grave mistake again, the princess left you these words. Free the four divine beasts. That is what she said. Four divine beasts? The four divine beasts. The ancient Sheikah weapons wielded by the four champions who Ganon defeated. The divine beast of Arudania, controlled by Daruk of the Gorons. The divine beast Varmedo, controlled by Rivali of the Rito. The divine beast Varuta, controlled by Mipha of the Zora, and the divine beast Varnaboris, controlled by Urbosa of the Gerudo. Yeah. 
it would be extremely ill-advised to face Ganon without the power of the Divine Beasts to help you. Such as in the runs that speedrunners do and that. You must infiltrate the Divine Beast that was stolen away by Ganon 100 years ago and bring them back to our side. More information about these Divine Beasts can be found by locating the four races scattered across Hyrule. Oh, there we go. That's neat. The Sheikah Slate will guide you on your way. You must go where it tells you and meet with each leader there. And there's the main quest. It seems to me that your Sheikah Slate is not yet complete. The device Princess Zelda left you is your guide and also your memory. Now, let's see. Someone at the research lab in Hatno Village might be able to help you. Hatno Village. The location shining on the eastern edge is Hatno Village. It is a small village. One of the very few places that avoided suffering significant damage during the Great Calamity. That's a lot going on, huh? You are Princess Zelda's only hope, and Hyrule's as well. You cannot turn back now. Follow your heart and seize your destiny. No, oh, no. Oh. Okay, that was, that was kind of, that was kind of heavy. That was kind of a lot. But, Master Link, well, whatever is the matter at this hour? Dark magic preys upon the land when darkness falls. Please, promise to take care. Oh, she's so sweet. You don't need to worry about me. I got apples, I got rocks. I got coal rocks. We're good. So, for people who haven't played the game before, it is sort of like... You're sort of like an amnesiac. Who's woken up a hundred years after the world essentially ended. The whole post-apocalypse, basically, civilization's over. All you're really doing at this point is trying to save what's left. Which is kind of grim, but at the same time, you know, kind of beautiful. Really got some stakes. Really got some stakes to the story, some, some, some good sort of tuna steaks. Some good beef steaks. Ooh. Enduring fried wild greens. Okay, so if I'm ever trapped halfway up a mountain, and I need a little bit extra stamina, just numb on some of that. Easy peasy. And I'll cook a couple apples while I'm at it as well. Just a couple. <laughs> Sweet. I got some food. Got a quest. Gotta save the princess. Gotta fly with the chicken. I love these little guys. They're so cute. Yeah. And if you jump in just the right way, you literally fly with them. It never gets old. It never gets old. You could fly off the darn cliff with them. But I think the mission is to collect all of them. So you just go around, just, you know, you check it out. Just see if you can find any good, good little chick chicks. There's a pumpkin guy. Who's definitely not psychopathic about his pumpkins, which is always nice. Oh, there's one. Chick, 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 chicken. Come and lay an egg for me. Yeah, it literally is like a chicken hunt. <laughs> yeah! That's, it's craziness. I think in a, a Link to the Past, if you attack the cuckoos, then they all gang up on you. You can be in a situation like... You hit it a few times with your sword, and then thousands descend, and just it's just madness. I don't think that happens in this game. But I don't know if I want to risk finding out. I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll put it to a vote or something. If everyone wants me to attack the chickens, then I'll attack the chickens and we'll see what happens. You can't kill them though, so there's, there's no risk of... Didn't I just pick you up? I could have sworn I just picked you up, like, a second ago. Are you playing tricks with me, chicken? 
I'm playing tricky any tricks with me. What's your deal? What's your end game? Yeah. Yeah, you keep pretending like you don't know what's going on. You know what's going on. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. So there's four cuckoos in the thing. If I go up and there's another one there, I'm gonna go nuts. No, okay, it's not there. It's not there. Okay, so I'm not going crazy. Second there, I really thought I was starting to lose my mind a little bit. <sighs> Ooh, what's in here? Little bed chamber. Kind of cute. That's the other thing. The, the place is in this game, man. Don't you just want to live in here? It's so cozy. Oh, spend your days just riding. You've got the little... Got some books in the corner. You got a little creepy frog with an eye on it. I'm sure there's nothing ominous about that. Got a little vase. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. You even got carrots that you can't pick. Mm hmm? Do you need something? Hmm. I haven't seen you around here before. There's something so familiar about that face of yours. Ah. Oh, yes. I remember now. It was long ago when the calamity hit. But you look just like the swordsman who was trying to stop it. That was me. <gasps> Say what now? You're really the same swordsman from way back when? <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Young people these days sure do like their jokes. If you were really that noble swordsman, you'd have the legendary blade, the sword that seals the darkness. You see, the thing about that swordsman is, he trained with swift carrots instead of a blade. Okay, he's starting to sound a little... He's starting to sound a little tapped. I don't know about this. He strengthened his body with a diet made entirely of swift carrots. Oh lord. And he tempered his soul with the sweet aroma of swift carrots too. That's what my grandfather always used to say anyway. Yeah, your grandfather sounds like a real smart man, dude. So I suggest you stop joking around all the time and instead have a carrot and try to be more like the swordsman. More like the swordsman that I am? Yeah, all right. Then give me the carrot. Looking for carrots? You can buy some over at my old lady's shop. If you want to be strong like that legendary swordsman, come to my place when the day is done. Ooh, that sounds cool. What are we going to be doing? Carrot training? Whatever, weirdo. Ah, some men are just way too into their veg. More to life than carrots. Some people are trying to save the world over here. I say as I run through the village with a chicken. This game, man. Catch yourself doing the craziest stuff. Can I run with this? Oh, damn it. No, okay. All right, I'm just gonna have to... I'm just gonna have to walk with it. It's not any faster to jump. There you go, little fella. Oh, wait. No, wait. No. Wait. No. Okay, so there's... There's four chickens in there, so there were three before. This, this game is... This game is playing mind tricks with me, then. I think... Oh, no. Have I not started the quest yet? Oh no, I haven't. Which... The cuckoos have just been despawning the second I go away. They've just been... Oh my god, I've been collecting them for like 10 minutes. Oh my god. I'm an idiot. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. You know what? Fire. Fire. Fire, fire! Let's see what happens. Oh. Oh no. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Oh god, is nowhere safe? This is ridiculous. Okay. 
that was a thing. That was actually a real life thing that really happened. I got accosted by like a thousand chickens. I will never hit a chicken again. And that is a sworn promise. I will only place them in fires and occasionally ponds. Boop. Oh god, I don't think that one survived. What happened to that cuckoo? Oh, there he is. You, you silly cuckoo. This cuckoo is immortal. I could learn its secrets. I could live forever. Oh, sorry, ears. Yeah, I mean... I don't really know how to explain what happened there, but... I mean, there were you, you, you saw the whole thing. There were cuckoos. There was madness. I'm surprised it didn't kill me. I got four hearts, and I was like, fine. Maybe they were just trying to make sure that if, you, if you're stupid enough to attack the cuckoos, it doesn't completely decimate you in the early game. Sir, Sir Link. My cuckoos. My precious cuckoos. They haven't come home yet. Now that my wife wants nothing to do with... Well, oh, okay. Oh, God, there's a backstory there. My cuckoos are my only emotional support. Wow, what do I do? I'll go find them. Really? Thank you so much. I have ten... Oh, ten? All right. I have ten cuckoos total. Hopefully you'll be able to find them all. All right, fine. All right. So there's four in there, so we only have to find six. I think we've already found a couple. Now this shouldn't be too hard. You going on a wild cuckoo hunt? I think we are. Gavin Grey Howard, birds of a feather fight together. They certainly do, but they also elegantly float down. I will demonstrate. Oh, look at how majestic that is. I mean, come on. Oh, that's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. Thank you. Mwah. Now to find five more of your brothers, and definitely not throw them into a lake, or a pond, or fire. No promises on the fire front, though. The cuckoos get pretty annoying sometimes. Got another one! Ah, these things are easy to find. This really shouldn't take that long. I really hope there's a reward for it, though. I can't remember if it's worthwhile. I'm just, I'm gonna have to risk it. I'm gonna have to risk it. So now there's... Yeah. We are well on our way. I think there are a couple on the roof. I have no idea how I'm supposed to get up there, though. Ah, I'll improvise. Come here, chick, 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 chick. Promise I'm not gonna eat you. Oh, there he is. He looks delicious. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <sighs> Although you can't get chicken drumsticks in this game. But someone's eating them. Oh, can you imagine? Imagine if they turned into phoenixes? They turn into fire cuckoos and you can summon them in battle. Oh my god, that'd be so cool. I think clearly that'd be overpowered though because, you know... Why would you need any weapons in the game if you have fire cuckoos? They just decimate anything. You just go straight into the castle and kill Calamity Ganon. With the power of chicken. Okay, now where are these other ones? <gasps> yes! Oh yeah. It's all falling into place. Okay, that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. So close. I can taste the cuckoo. No, no, not, not, that I, not that I'd eat one, of course. No, I'd never eat one. <laughs> a flying fox is such a majestic animal. I mean, flying foxes are pretty majestic, though. I don't know if anybody in the chat's heard of them, but... Flying fox is simultaneously a species of 
fish and also a species of bat and they're both really pretty i mean i guess i guess not majestic though it, it's not it's not the majestic type of flying fox cute very cute not majestic though darn it cuckoos where are you Hmm. Oh, I can't be hiding that far. What if there any under this place? Ooh. There's some mushrooms, though. It's the mushroom. Green mushroom that grows near trees in the forest. It's chock full of natural, ener natural energy. Cook it to release its stamina restoration properties. Oh, these are so handy. Okay, when you're climbing, these are, these will save your life. Every time. The only downside is you can't just eat ingredients like that. You know, you got to put them in a pot and you got to cook them first. Otherwise, you'd just be like 90% of your way off a cliff and you'd be like, Oh, I better chuck some mushrooms super quick. Yeah. God damn, climbing would be easier if you could just do that in real life. You're like doing some rock climbing and your grip starts to decline a little bit. You just reach in your back pocket for some massive mushrooms. You just go, oh, 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 oh. Suddenly you're good to go. Ooh, Iron Sledgehammer. Look, I know we're on a hunt for cuckoos, but that doesn't mean we can't pick up some good gear while we're at it. And visit the local... Graveyard. Lovely. What a... Lovely graveyard. I'm sure there won't be any creepy stuff to do with that graveyard in the sequel. Okay, back to the cuckoos, back to the cuckoos. Remember, there's at least one that's like, it's like by the entrance of something, I think. Oh, I don't know, it's been too long since I played this game. I'm just going to have to. It really is a wild cuckoo hunt. Here, cuckoo, Anybody here? No, there's a guy with a donkey. All right. What you selling? Me and donkey. Mm -hmm. A delightful donkey. <laughs> You've done such good work. You get a yummy reward in the form of a vegetable treat. Hmm. Oh, but perhaps it would be better to sell them to a paying customer, of course. Say, I see you eyeballing the packs on my donkey when I see my goods. Yeah, and why not? Fresh meat and vegetables straight from Kakariko Village. Only the best for you. Take your time and have a good look. Hardy truffle. Oh, okay, those are good. Okay. So the way this game works is that you can only have temporary hearts if your like hearts gauge is filled to maximum. So if you're on really low health and you have any like maximum heart food, it'll automatically autofill your hearts. So it's basically like a full health potion. You got one heart or twenty hearts. These little things are priceless. So Naturally, I'll buy one, and then probably forget that these things exist in like an hour, and then... Ah. I don't know, that's the way I played this game. Seat of the pants stuff, real seat of the pants stuff. I never noticed that before either. There are arrows sticking out of that eye. That's kind of ominous. What's going on in this village? It looks so peaceful. There's dark things afoot. Dark, wary things. In the meantime, back to the cuckoos. Well, that doesn't help. It's clearly an owl sound, and I'm looking for cuckoos, so... Apples? They're, they're not cuckoos, but... Oh. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Okay, okay. Oh, God, come on. There we go, there we go. I think it's just one more now. Oh, that's fantastic. And then I can get some kind of amazing massive reward that'll definitely be worth all of this stuff. Definitely. Totally be worth it. 100% worth it. 100% worth it. Totally worth it. I should have 10 to even just one accounted for when I'm due. Sadly, only nine have returned to me. 
think that somewhere out there even one of my poor cuckoos could be lost and lonely. Please hurry up and bring them back to me. For their sake. And for mine as well. Oh. What can I say? The poor guy really loves his cuckoos. So there's only one more left. One more little cuckoo. You gotta do it. I mean, look at this poor man. He is distraught. He is despairing. He is falling apart at the seams. Because one of his pet chickens is missing. Like, if you're in that kind of vulnerable state emotionally, you are a hair's width away from cracking like a fresh egg. You just gotta find that chicken, man. I guess we all have our own kind of internal cuckoo. Our own thing that's like... Keeps us an inch away from breaking in life. Sometimes it's a nice part of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Sometimes it's a chicken. I guess. Oh, sometimes it's a glowing snail. Ooh. Sneaky river snail. And these are super handy if you're trying to sneak up on enemies or animals in the world. It means you don't have to be as sneaky as you would have to be otherwise. Is that a cuckoo? I just gotta, I gotta make sure. Well, sure clucks like a cuckoo. Sure scratches like a cuckoo. He sure derps like a cuckoo. I think that's our final cuckoo. <gasps> okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Oh my god. I can already taste that sweet reward. Can you imagine if we took this back to him and he was like, Oh, thank God, my, my cuckoos, they're all safe and sound. Now to give you your reward. And he just gives you like a cooked cuckoo, like leg or something. He just He just cooks one of them up. It's like, oh, oh, th thank you. I thought you liked these guys. I guess not. Now to see what the reward is. <laughs> Link. My cuckoos. My sweet little baby cuckoos. They're all back. Thank you so much. Really, I could never thank you enough. This isn't much, but I insist you take it. Okay, what's it gonna be? Gonna be like fried cuckoo leg? Gonna be like a hundred rupees? Gonna be a spirit orb? Is it gonna be a heart container? Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to find out. I can't wait. It's money. I'll take it. Ooh. I'm ready to get out there again. Mm. Though I do wish my wife would come back to me, just like my cuckoos did. Poor Kato. This man has been through some stuff. You can just tell. Now that I've got the money. I wonder what happened if I immediately started removing cuckoos again. I'm almost tempted to find out because I've never tried it before, but. I just don't have the heart to do it. This this guy has been through hell. This guy has been through so much. And we brought him so much happiness by bringing his little, his little pet birds back to him. All he has in the world is a single purple rupee worth 50 rupees. But he gives it to us without a second thought because we've brought his little chicken back to him. Do not eat the cuckoos. Do not eat the cuckoos. Do not eat the cuckoos. Tempting though it may be. It's not worth it. Shift. <laughs> Come on now. Bullying is not allowed in chat. Even if it's even if it's the bullying of poor and not so innocent foxes. I mean, not wrong though. Not wrong. Oh, this guy said come back at night, didn't he? He's the crazy carrot guy. Best defense is a good offense. Would you like to master the art of combat? Yeah, teach me. Wow, interested in combat too. Just what I'd expect from such a big fan of the legendary swordsman. He still doesn't think we're the legendary swordsman. All right. I have a feeling this is going to be a recurring problem in the game, isn't it? Yeah. The Sheikah tribe has long excelled in knowledge and combat. We have quite a few secret techniques. Hmm. 
I can't teach you all of them. I'm not Jesus. I'm not carrot combat Jesus. But I think showing you just these few should be okay. What? what? I know these. Okay, fine. All right. Focus. Facing an enemy in combat, always focus in on them. That's the most basic of the basics. Ah. It's best to just try out lots of different things to see what works for you. Got any other questions? Well, not really. To tell you the truth, I'd like to take that trial thing at the village shrine and learn the secret art of offense. It's just... Well, no one knows the technique you need to enter the shrine. That's why I train like this every day. Well, that's why he does it. Oh, okay, so what he's... He, okay, so he's just... He is just there to point you in the direction of the combat shrine. Where you actually learn this stuff. Because he's kind of like... Have you considered doing this thing that lets you target enemies? Like, yeah. I've been doing it the whole point. Look at me. You can't teach me combat moves. I'm, I'm doing backflips over here. I'm doing spinny, spinny, spinny moves. Oh, God. You want some of this? <laughs> I'm a twink with a sledgehammer. Come get some. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't mean to scare you, crazy carrot guy. Poor guy, he's been through so much. Oh, the, like the ink keeps asleep. Ooh. Huck, are you a guest? I suppose so. You scared me half to death. Ooh. Well, the regular bed is 20 rupees, and the... <sighs> the soft bed is 40 rupees, I guess. That's the difference. Uh, soft feather stuff is premium cuckoo feathers or, or something I think yeah. sleep on that and um you know you'll be more energized than usual right. uh, well the regular oh he's just repeating himself ooh. you'd sleep great though oh, yeah 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 Ollie. yeah 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 it's 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 not worth it you can sleep at any point in a fireplace just by doing that. It's like, boop. That's it. You need to sleep by doing that. Admittedly, you don't get your hearts uh, refilled, though. I think that only happens if you sleep at a proper bed. This is like roughhousing it a little bit. Camping out in the wild. You don't even have a sleeping bag. It's just you and the elements. You and the cuckoos. What's up, spirit statue? You have conquered the shrines and claimed their spirit orbs. I can offer you great power. But you do not yet have four spirit orbs. Seek out the shrines scattered, uh, scattered across Hyrule and face more challenges. Once you have claimed four spirit orbs, return to me. Alright, okay, I get it. I get it. Ah, I need some more. That's fine. I think this might be a good point to call it a day. I don't know. The people want more? I can play more, but it's like, you know, it's getting a little late. 11.20? Eh, not too bad. That's not too bad. I don't know, I feel like I need to take a break to just have a drink and stuff. So, I guess, yeah, do you want to play some more or do you want to call it a day for now? Let's see what everybody feels like. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in to Crazy Cuckoo Nonsense. Uh, crazy bed charging 20 rupees to literally just sleep for a couple of hours nonsense. And finding out I'm an amnesiac who is like 116 years old and has to defeat uh, a giant pig who left a giant piggy mess at the castle nonsense. So yeah, I will see you in two.
Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. So, I don't know how many people in the chat know this, but he isn't actually my voice. So, one of the things I'm just weighing up right now is I'm not going to be able to speak, like, for the first five or six hours tomorrow. So, I'm just weighing up, like, do I, do I want to feel really bad? Do I... Is it going to feel okay? I think I'll be down to just check out a couple more shrines, maybe get a couple more towers, just see what's going on. There's a couple of areas I think we've glossed over as well. I kind of took a beeline approach, so... Maybe do a little more exploring if everyone's up for that. Because, I mean, if you're in America, this is like... This is nothing. This is just barely scraping the afternoon right now. But if you're in Britland, it's like... Eh, it's getting a little late. You can still do some more streaming. And why can't I climb up that wooden post? It looks so... So climbable. But so not climbable. Ugh. There we go. And I can collect all of those... Lovely little arrows that we saw earlier. Ooh. Sweet. Okay, let's see what the village approach would have been if we'd approached it from the right way, instead of from the mountains, which is madness. Ooh, we've got a nice little thing to blow up. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, okay, okay. This is gotta be something good. Topaz, okay, okay. I was gonna make some kind of stupid joke about Topaz, but Topaz actually is really good. It's it's really valuable, so I'll take it. I'll take that. I will take that. I'm worried about the farmers in Kakariko Village. Oh, what's going on with the farmers in Kakariko Village? Nothing bad, I hope. They grow pumpkins and carrots. It's sort of their specialty. But I hear there's a little war going on. Yeah, these farmers are nuts. You can't take that too seriously. I mean, there's a guy who, who thinks way too much about his carrots. He thinks warriors, like, fight with them. Like, he's he's not okay. I think you should turn back. He attacks you with a carrot. I mean, you wouldn't stand a chance. He wouldn't stand a chance. Probably shouldn't have said that to his face, though. I work on my social skills. Go. No, come back. Come back. Come back. And we got some more raw meat, which is always good. I do feel kind of bad killing animals in this game, though. It's so beautiful. You just kind of makes you feel a bit like a monster for doing it. Not to mention, I think you can be a vegetarian in this game. So much stuff that restores stamina and gives you bonus hearts and stuff like that. You don't even need it, you know. No blobs? There we go. Windows background image? Was oh, that the she? Is that the she wallpaper? Oh, I don't know. If, I hope I've set the stream up properly. Oh no. <laughs> it's one of the things that always scares me during a stream. It's like, oh, I really hope I, I remember to close that note that has my social security number and like my mother's maiden name and all the digits of my credit card number on here. Broadcasting that to the world, that would be a bummer. That would be a major bummer. But also, the kind of thing that would be completely on brand as well. So... Oh god. I feel this. I feel it's happening one of these days. I can sense it. I can just know it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Thanks, Ears. <laughs> now stream's good. Stream's good, okay. You're, uh, we've got your social security number, but don't worry, we won't do anything with it. We won't do anything with it as long as you do exactly what we say. You will stream every night. You will stream Breath of the Wild every night. And we will have a good old time. There we go. This is the entrance I was talking about. Man, there's so many ways in and out of that village. Like, 
No, they did not have to design that many things. They just did it. Yeah, sometimes in this game you feel like a real dipstick. Things just do not go your way. That's okay. That is okay. Hot-footed frog. Do I blow it up? Ow. Okay. So good news. I found out that you don't need to blow it up. Bad news. That was a stupid thing to do. There we go. Okay, it's one of these. It's one of these. You have to make the one on the left match the one on the right. Don't just... You mark what are you doing? I'll just throw a bomb at it and hope everything turns out okay. <laughs> yeah, haha! -ha, you found me! Karak Seed. Bye bye. I wonder what happens if I throw a bomb on these. I. I've never tried this. I don't know if I actually have the heart to, like. I don't, I don't know if I'd feel okay doing that. Um. Maybe I'll... Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll put that down there with you. You take care of this, okay? Keep it nice and safe. Don't let anyone get it. Alright? Yeah. Talk to you later, kiddo. Nice guy! Wonder what happened to him. Anyway... Should be a fan favorite character down here somewhere. I say as I narrowly avoid getting gored by a goat. Where is he at? Where is he at? A lot of travelers down here. There he is! Oh, has to. You gotta love him. You gotta love him. He looks like a piece of broccoli. How could you not love that? Have a piece of food first. And we're good to go. Jellica! You! You can see me? I can't see you. Shellaco? <laughs> then how are you talking to me, silly boy? Why is everyone calling me boy? <laughs> Shellaza? Shellaka? It's been a hundred years since anyone's been able to see me. This poor lonely guy. Yeah. I'm Hestu, and I need your help. Yeah. Some monsters over there stole my beloved maracas. Oh, I see him. I think they're still there on the other side of those rocks. I can't use my powers without them, Shoko. No, please, please get my maracas back from them. Now, usually in this game, like, text is highlighted for a reason. Why are the maracas highlighted in red? What does that mean? Isn't red usually bad? Like, Calamity Ganon is highlighted in red. Why are your maracas in red? Are you going to, like, kill me with them? Why is that suddenly ominous now? I'm just a cute broccoli guy. Please don't hurt me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get this lizard as well. The sneaky little lizard. And I got you. <laughs> high tail lizard. It is a high tail lizard. Those things are so quick. Gotta be sneaky, sneaky. Oh, we've got a situation on our hands. You've got some bullies over here. And someone's lost their beloved maracas. What are we going to do? Well, you help them get them back, of course. I had some bomb arrows. That'd be so funny. I don't think I do, though. Okay. I'll make do. Gotta be careful with these guys, because every single time I've ever dealt with them, you get in a situation where you throw one off the cliff, but they've got enough health that they just survive, and then you're just, like, stuck. You can't complete the quest, because they're down the cliff. But if you jump down after them, the jump definitely kills you. So it's like, oh, great, okay. I guess I'm screwed now. No, you don't. Ah! Oh, come on. I was jumping over them. All right. Oh dear, I am not doing very well in this. 
Oh, come on. <gasps> Gavin Gray Howard, the chickens were highlighted in red. I tell you what, I think they were. I think you're onto something. I think those cuckoos are a force to be reckoned with. If we could only harness the power of the cuckoo. Yeah. That crazy guy who lost his wife is onto something. He's not a crazy guy. He's a genius tactician. Or he's a crazy guy that just happens to be right. You know, sometimes a broken clock is right twice a day, and sometimes being right is completely incidental to the situation. Hestus Maracas. He's been shaking them since he was two years old. Thanks, that's a random fact. Uh, that's cool, I guess. So, now we've got beloved apples, maracas, all this good stuff. We'll give his maracas back to him and we'll see what happens. For anyone who hasn't played this game before, it's a sight to behold. I will just say that. It is a treat. Maracas. Shalaka, those are, those are my maracas. Please give them to me. Here you go. Here you go, buddy. Shalaka! But wait, there's something wrong with my maracas. Korok seeds inside are gone. How am I supposed to dance now, Choco? If I had just one Korok seed, I could sing, dance, and use my powers to help you. Okay, so if maracas and Korok seeds are malicious, then at least his powers are, because his powers are in blue, so. That should be good, at least. You see, I have the power of inventory. Oh, sweet. Inventory expansion. So let me know if you find some Korok seeds. The children of the forest must have taken the Korok seeds from my beloved maracas. Never thought I'd be the target of one of their pranks, Shoko. Sniff. But wait. Sniff, sniff. Do you have a Korok seed? You do! You got a Korok seed from one of the, the forest children. If you give me just one Korok seed, I'll make your inventory bigger in, in return. Hell yeah. I am down for that. Jellica! So, which stash do you want more slots in? I mean... You'd be hard-pressed to pick anything other than the weapon stash, because there are so few weapons you can pick up at this point. Just, just give me a weapon. Brace yourselves. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You ready? You think you're ready, but you're not. Here we go! Shaki shaka! <laughs> to the delay between the end of the song and the start of the maracas exploding. I think that's what just just makes it. Just like, mwah, just chef's kiss. Just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Your weapon stash has been expanded. Jellica! I still smell Korok seeds on you. Want me to expand your inventory again? Um, yeah, yeah, give me another weapon one. Give me another weapon one. Okay. I'll just need two Korok seeds. Deal? Yes. Give me a dance, man. Give me a dance. Not a lap dance, just a normal dance. Just a completely platonic friend dance. Shaki shaka! <laughs> da 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 da! So cute. So cute. Gavin Gray Howard. I mean, yeah, this game is. This game is weird. This game, it's a Nintendo game. Some Nintendo games are just, they're just like that. Your weapon stash has been expanded. Shalaka! Oh, look at the time. I need to get back before Grandpa yells at me. Shoko. Sorry, I have to go. But I still need Korok seeds, so bring some to Korok Forest if you find any. Oh. We got his maracas back. Thanks for bringing my maracas back. Once I see you off and go back home to Korok Forest. Or did you want to talk a little more? Oh, we'll find him later. Bye bye <laughs> We'll find him later. He's such a cute guy. I've never even considered attacking him. And I'm kind of curious just what reaction they... Oh, look at him. He's so scared. He's so scared. It's okay, Hestu. It's okay. 
And on we go. But, crucially, with two weapon slots, which is fantastic. Means I can hold ten weapons at any time. You'll find in this game you'll be going through weapons a lot. And I mean a lot. Luckily not tree branches anymore, we've got some decent stuff. Mate rebound, totally. The the way uh, the piano accentuates the, the dialogue, it's so good. And Nintendo's really good at that stuff as well. In Tears of the Kingdom, I don't think it's a spoiler. It's been out for like 10 months and it's only like in the first couple minutes of the game. But in Tears of the Kingdom, you pick up um, a certain weapon that's quite significant to the Legend of Zelda series and it's not in the best state. And instead of like the, the traditional item sound of da 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 da, it's played in a minor key. So the piano sound that plays over it is like da 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 da. It's, eh, it's so good. It's, there's little touches, there's little details. It just completely make the experience. The same way Link has an animation where he'll like, he'll like kick a chest and if he's, if he's got nothing on his feet, he'll like, He'll like clutch his foot in pain and like be like, ah, oh, that hurt. It's just like, oh, so good. So good. Hey, what you doing? Hello. Traveler, I can see you've trained your body well, I'd say. You're familiar with both sword and bow, correct? It's like he knows me. That's a good skill set. Why don't you join the Yiga clan? Yiga clan? Oh. What? You don't know? Fine, I'll tell you. The Yiga clan, it's... <laughs> a powerful, brave group of warriors founded by Master Koga, dedicated to defeating a hero long thought dead. I will take your life. Oh god, okay, that changed quickly. Oh my god, okay. I guess we're in danger now. Great, that's great. We're fighting for my life now. God, he's fast. He is fast. He is fast. <laughs> Where you going, friend? Where you going? I'll just throw him in the sea. Into the sea you go. Damn it! Oh, come on! I'm supposed to get him there. Oh, so close. So close. Ah, there we go. Ooh, that's kind of spooky. He just vanishes. Vicious Sickle. 16. Really? 16? I will take that. That is, that is one hell of a weapon. The moon shape of the blade allows for the rapid delivery of fatal wounds and serves as a symbol of their terror. Its durability is low. Cool. And of course, a mighty bananas. A mighty bananas. A mighty bananas. You can't forget are the Mighty Bananas. I'm Bananas for the Mighty Bananas. This fruit grows mainly in tropical for, uh, forests of the Farron region. When it's used as an ingredient, the resulting dish will temporarily increase your attack power. And the Yiga clan love them. Don't ask me why, they just do. They just do. I'd have been monster meat if it weren't for your help. Thank you. This isn't much, but I want you to have it. Go on, take it. Oh, that's really good. Oh, I thought crepes in this game would be so amazing. Yeah, I think you tend to find in this game some of the travelers you come across end up being not so wonderful people. So sometimes it's worth just skirting over it and being like, oh, I don't know if I want to talk to you. Maybe maybe you're a Yiga clan member in disguise. Maybe you don't feel like almost dying today. It's one of those deals. Oh, I think we're near a stable. Yeah, look at that. You can see the horse and everything. Yeah, let's see what's going on over there. Maybe I can register a horse if I am super sneaky and I manage to catch one. Which I'm usually very, very not good at. Hey, yeah, can't hurt to try, right? All I gotta do is be sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. You can't even hear me. I'm like the wind. Sneaky, sneaky. Hmm. 
This is hard. If any of them see me, they're all going to bolt, so I've got to be very careful about this. Nope. Oh, no, come on, no! Oh, come on. Oh, oh I'm so close. I'm so close. Oh, no, don't hit me now. Not now. Oh, come on. Oh my god, I got a horse! I got a horse! <laughs> okay, so it hates me, and it's fighting me every step of the way. That's not good. But it is a horse. It is my horse. Okay. Okay. Can I, uh... Look at the Dueling Peak Stable. What do you think of the place? Pretty nice, yeah? It might be hard to imagine now, but this place was nearly destroyed about a hundred years ago. However, thanks to the blessings of the Dueling Peaks, everything is full of life again. Even the wild horses are back. There's a lot of energy in this place. Of course the wild horses are back. I'm riding one of them. So where are you heading? Both Kakariko Village and Hatno Village are nearby. Hatno Village? Hatno Village is a village on the edge of Hyrule. It was largely unaffected by the events of the Great Calamity. So the people there are pretty easygoing. I hear they even have a research center. But folks tend to avoid the weird scientist who lives there. That's weird, okay. Anyway, head north from here until you reach a fork in the road. Then go east and just follow the road. It's a little far if you walk it, but with a horse you should get there in under a day. Sweet. I'll leave it to Renza to tell you about the roads around this area. Mm. Damn it, I wanted to register my... Oh. Everything looks just like it always has, but the effects of the Great Calamity still linger. For example, a lot of monsters come out at night, so be careful when the sun sets. That is a good tip. <laughs> Okay, if I want to register it, I think i got to talk to this guy. No, not that guy. Oh, come on. Please, please go. I want to register you. I want to give you a name. No, not that. Not that guy. There we go. There we go. Welcome to my stable. You deal in all things horse-related. We also double as an inn. Oh, I haven't seen your face before. You know about the stable system? I, I, I played this game before. Oh, pardon me, start over. Welcome to our stable. You come with a wild horse, you can register it with us here. Or if you want to stay for a rest, please head to the counter inside, so what will it be? I'm going to register a horse. I'm going to register a horse, Victor is mine. Nay! Gotcha. You sure this is the one? Yeah, I'll take it. Not a problem. We charge a registration fee to help support our conservation efforts. The fee also lets you a locally made saddle and bridle for your horse. The fee is 20 rupees, is that okay? I'll take it. Thanks. Please enter a name for your horse. Oh god, okay. A name. That's something I can trust chat to come up with? Or it, well, dis is destruction in that direction? I don't know, I've seen that happen on streams before. I might just... I might just give it a random name. Like... Blurple? Blurple? But like, with the question mark, like, uh, yeah, we... Is that a name? It's like, technically you've given it a name, so we, we can't say no. But it's like, that's not good. But, yeah. Blurple. <laughs> Even he's like, are you sure you want to name this horse? Blurple? And there's like two, there's like two question marks after it as well. He's like, um, oh, actually, on second thought, on second thought, no, 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 no. Please give us the one, a fitting name. Okay, all right. Yeah, go on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Blurple with two question marks because one is not quite enough for the confusion. You sure the one to name this horse Blurple? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yep, I'll do it. Your registration is complete. Congratulations, Blurple. Would you like to take your new horse with you? Uh, let's board it. Let's board it. Give Blurple a home. Take care of him, please. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Mm. Oh, and by the way, if you get separated from your horse, you can whistle and it'll come running. Sweet. But your horse isn't magic. It can't hear you if you're too far away, so do keep that in mind. Yes. Mm. Sorry, Demo. I mean, Blurple was just sitting right there for the taking. Blurple. What's wrong with Blurple? Blurple with two question marks. Oh. What a poor horse. Hey! Hey! 
I don't believe I've made your acquaintance. The name's Beetle, but you can call me... Actually, let's just stick with Beetle. You can call me Blurple. I'm not a horse, I promise. But even if you forget my face, you can remember me by my beetle-shaped backpack. Wow! Despite these dangerous times, you'll find me traveling all over Hyrule to fulfill your shopping needs. I stock many special bugs and must-have items for travelers, and I always charge a fair price. Or my name's not Beetle, and definitely not Blurple. <laughs> I'm not a horse. I also buy all sorts of things. If you're in need of rupees... Gemstones in particular fetch a... Oh yeah, yeah. Gemstones are super good. How can I help you today? Look what I got. See how much stuff we can sell. Oh, we got no gemstones at all, do we? We got... Is it worth selling those? I guess. I, I Take my amber, take my topaz. Yeah. Thank you for your business. Do you have anything else? Yeah, topaz. What is, what is that? I'll buy anything. Why does that sound like, like such a diss? Go up to someone who's who's a vendor and being like, Oh yeah, do you want to sell stuff? I'll buy anything. It's like, oh great. You don't think I'm going to have anything worth buying? I mean, I'll take anything off your hands. You want to sell me a lizard? I'll take a lizard. Just sell you some topaz, man. Be polite. Thanks for the business. Do you need anything else? No. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again soon. He really does have a rhino backpack, doesn't he? Uh, That's kind of cute, actually. That's kind of cute. He's the little beetle alone in the world who's definitely not a horse. Uh, See you later, Purple. So, where to go now? Ooh, there's a shrine. We could always do a shrine. And there's a... Hey, what's up? Oh. Sagessa. Good evening. Don't see a whole lot of travelers passing through here. You know, with how peaceful it is around here, sometimes easy to forget that the world almost ended years ago. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, it's crazy. Almost died. Wild. There are still monsters wandering around. The area near Hyrule Castle is especially dangerous. If you're going to be traveling, you should know a thing or two about elixirs. Yeah, go on. Ah. You can make elixirs by mixing bugs and other small creatures with monster parts. Most of them are no good for refilling your health, but they can have a lot of unique effects. Some elixirs can increase your speed. Others raise your resistance to extreme temperatures. Huh. I'm actually impressed that you made it this far without any knowledge of elixirs. All right, don't rub it in. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm doing. It's fine. It's it's okay. Sometimes you do that. Sometimes you bodge your way to victory, and that's okay. I can't have it on my conscience if something happens to you from here. So, I'll give you one of mine. Hasty elixir, low-level haste effect, which boosts your movement speed whilst running, swimming, or climbing but not crucially gliding, which is interesting. Using a hasty elixir increases your run speed. So I use it from time to, I use it to escape from enemies or any time I need to hurry. <laughs> the recipe is just high tail lizard and monster parts. So I usually have a stock of 10 or so on hand. Thanks, Agessa. See, sometimes you encounter people who aren't secretly trying to kill you and they're just genuinely nice. Most of the time it is just people trying to kill you though. So how do I get over the... She can't climb up these because they're made of like a weird metal, like a ceramic, like... Yeah. You can't... Okay, this might sound stupid, but what happens if I just threw myself into the spikes? Oh. I mean, I guess I can't be surprised by that, but... I don't know what I was expecting to happen if I threw myself into the spikes. I guess it was that. Look, I'm not the brightest fox, okay? I think this is what you're supposed to do. Because you've got the power to freeze from the shrine, so you can just jump up and glide over it. There we go! Unfortunately, that's not the shrine, but, you know. How hard can it be? I guess we'll find out. Da -da -da. In the meantime, I hope Blurple's doing okay. Poor horse. Literally just kidnapped him from the wild and immediately put him in a stable. I was like, all right. Have a fun life, Blurple. Used to have a herd. Not anymore. You belong to me and you'll never see me again. 
Poor guy. Oh, okay, that was actually kind of close. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Ooh. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. God, how can water be so stressful? Ooh, there's a thing over there. Gavin Gray Howard, exactly, exactly. Just his life, you know. It's getting pretty lonely being out there on the road. Nothing but a rhino backpack to your name. Buying and selling stuff. Link goes up to you like hawking you 500 hightail lizards and 50 like pounds of choo-choo jelly and you just gotta buy it up and be like, no, this is great. This is just what I wanted. Oh, I love it. Meanwhile, he's going like, ugh. Why don't I ever get any good customers? Ooh, okay. Okay, a little bit of a... A little bit of a puzzle situation then. So... I want to make sure it travels down there and goes into the hole. Oh, well, that didn't work, did it? Okay. Um... So one more underneath? Oh, come on! Come on! Okay, one more then. One more. And there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Is it gonna make it? it? Yes, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. Wait, is that the whole shrine? I think it might be. Oh, sweet! Okay. Yeah, sometimes they really make you work for it, and sometimes they really don't. Just like, eh, one and done. Easy breezy. We are well on our way. Halfway to the next heart. I'm not complaining. May the goddess smile upon you. Okay, and this is the thing that I found was a cheat. Okay, so the devs have made a situation where they put spikes all around it to encourage you to either jump down off a cliff, or use Cryonis, or use maybe another ability that the champions give you. But once you leave the shrine, you can potentially soft lock yourself into it. Because the shrine, because the, the spikes are around the shrine, so you can't like make Cryonis from within, and you can't like reach a high point or anything. So they just remove them. And they don't tell you why they're gone, they just remove them, and it's like, okay, alright. That's a little cheap. Like, like, why did you do that? There's, there's no in-world in motivation for why that happens. You could have just left, like, just leave a little bit of headroom here, around the spikes, where you can put a Cryonis, and then you don't have to remove them. Although, to be fair, I guess, if you want to go back in the shrine later, then it can be a pain having to go around the spikes again and again and again. So maybe that's why they remove them. I just found that funny for some reason, because they, they don't do cheats like that a lot in this game. Like, a lot of it, it's, like, super diegetic, super in-world. They've got explanations for all this stuff. They've got explanations for why you can fast travel and stuff like that. And then sometimes they'll just cheat, and they'll just be like, okay, we're just removing the spikes at the end of a cutscene. It's like, yeah, all right, that's fine. I, I don't hold it against you. Hey, game creation is hard. Ooh, Ash Swamp. I don't think I've explored this area super well yet, so... Why don't we have a look around? As the name suggests, it is very ashy and also quite swampy. As I say, as I nearly get gored by a goat again. Those goats, I mean, they really got it in for me, man. I only killed two of them. I don't want to, I want to take it so personally. Damn. Yes! This is so good to craft supplies and stuff. Get loads of resources in here. Just like a, a whole graveyard of these things. 
because all of them are dead, you know, you got nothing to worry about. You can just, you just pick them at your leisure. Super easy breezy. I mean, some of them are placed in suspicious ways, with like space around them to make you think, like, could these get up? Could these start killing me? But I think we're good. I want to remember these are all dead, so should be okay. Boop. Boop. Damn it, my bow. No. Oh. I've got one, but I've got one arrow. Okay, two pings. Two pings. It's not wasted. It's not wasted. Damn, one hit. That's amazing. This sword is incredible. I mean, sickle. The sickle. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> they are such an annoying enemy, but they are kind of cute. They sort of squeak at you. Just go. <laughs> Another ancient screw. Potential for euphemism recognized, but rejected. And we move on with life. I was a bit worried. Everything kind of disappeared for a second. And then it came back. Is that worth a chest? Oh, go on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Got full health. I feel like taking them all. And it was worth it, because they're almost dead already. No, my sickle! It wasn't very vicious after all. Come on. Okay, one left, one left. Here's the good thing about this part of the game is I think yeah. So if you you can bait enemies to like shoot at you, and then you can just collect the arrows if you're really shot on arrows. I don't know many games that'll let you do that. Quite cool. Like, no, I'm so defenseless, please. No, don't shoot another arrow. No! Oh, this is exactly what I didn't want. Ugh. Damn it. Okay, sometimes they just... Sometimes they just vanish, though. To be fair. To be fair. So you can't do it forever. Darn it. Bing. And I think that's all done. Oh, is it not? What happened to the... Oh, there's one more. There's one more. There's one more. Okay. Okay. There's one more. Hmm. And... Oh, thank God. Okay. 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 There we go. There we go. Pick up his arrows, and I'm going to see what we got. Demo Argenti, today I watched a video essay where the essayist claimed that world building is indicative of people's shallow media tastes. And is insulting to the viewer, which was a wild take to see. I'd be very interested to know who that essayist is, because that is... I mean, if we're going to be completely honest here, that's essentially what the original Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien is. That is... A trilogy that is built on world building. J.R.R. Tolkien is incredible at world building. He creates his own languages. He was a, a student of history, as we know. But, but he, he, he didn't have such a great grasp on, like, the exploration of the human spirit. Like, he dealt a lot in the macro sense, which is absolutely fine. Some people prefer it. I wouldn't say his, his books are lesser because of that. That's one of those things that in the, com in the media landscape these days, you have to have enough controversial things and, and quotes to, to ensure that people will spread the word enough about it to sort of generate the buzz. It's sort of like a no news is good news sort of thing. It's like, okay, I need to say at least two controversial things that I don't really necessarily believe. Or even just things that sound stupid out of context. So people will be like, you won't believe what this person, there's like this essay said. Like, said that world building is for chumps or something. It's like... I mean, it's kind of clickbaity, but 
Look, some folks have to do it to make a living. I mean, I don't necessarily hold it against them. <laughs> cricket! Sorry for randomly saying cricket. Oh, did Nerd Radu do the same thing? Oh, that's weird. Okay, that's... okay. Maybe there was... If it was around the same time, maybe there was something on the media landscape that just... that made people feel that way. Like a series that focused too much on the world building, like Game of Thrones, maybe. Because Game of Thrones was great for world building, but... Like, George R. R. Martin was so good at world building that he trapped himself and kind of never got out of it. So if, if, if you're someone that's, like, fresh off the, the nightmare that was season seven, maybe that's the kind of point in, in pop culture where you start to think, actually, world building isn't all it's cracked up to be because look at what happens when you let it get away from you. Like, if that's the kind of argument they're, they're presenting, I can, I can sort of understand that. Hey, Garrow. Come to see Fort Hatton, though, I take it. That's right. Figured as much, it's well worth seeing. Fort Hatton now here was the last line of defense between Hatton Village and the awful tragedy all those years ago. Everyone's got to come and pay their respects at least once in life, right? Damn straight, buddy. Damn straight. I'm gonna pay my respects by looting everything. I'm just gonna get all these gorgeous uh, screws off the corpses, and I'm just gonna steal all their mushrooms, and I'm gonna pick up all their rocks. And I'm going to steal all their rocks, and I'm going to take all their rocks, and I'm going to cherish all their rocks. That's the kind of Link I am. And I'm going to use their rocks as an offensive weapon. But, you know, like... Like... Not... Not that, but like... Like... Damn it! Come, uh, come on, I will hit a web, an enemy at least once with this. Come on, it's not that hard. There we go, there we go, okay, okay, okay. Now I can go back to looting the corpses of people who've been dead for a hundred years. <laughs> it's not grave robbing, it's archaeology. I mean, it's pretty, they're pretty much the same thing. I'm happy to take credit for both. In Tomb Raider, which I'm also a big fan of, that is literally just what you do. Like, the distinction is non-existent. You're like a rich British woman who literally just jumps into Mayan tombs and takes stuff back to her rich mansion because she thinks it looks good there. It's like, okay. I can see why they sort of had to pivot, like in the 2010s, like, I don't know if this series works quite as well now. Oh, Demo, the Nerd Writer video is from seven years ago. Seven years? Okay, maybe that was, maybe that was sort of in the midst of Marvel fatigue then. Maybe that was sort of like the MCU's ruining movies because everything's becoming serialized and world building and you've got to understand, like, all the films to understand any of them. Maybe that was the approach they were taking with it. I find the whole MCU fatigue really interesting, though, because, I mean, if you look back, people have been writing articles about that pretty much for as long as the MCU's been a thing. Like, sort of like James Cameron articles about Avatar being like, does anyone care about Avatar? It's like, people have been saying that about Avatar for as long as Avatar's been around. It's like, people still seem to care about Avatar for some reason. I don't know, it just connects with people. Oh. Oh. I feel kind of bad killing all these bees and stealing their honey. I worked so hard for it. And now it's mine. It's a really good ingredient though. You can make sweets with it. Or candy if you're living in the US. An ancient text. Ooh. Demo, I feel like the issue isn't world building, but more like thinking world building is a substitute for writing. I can, I can kind of see I can kind of see that I can kind of see that there are definitely some people that, that think world building is the same and it can be used as a crutch as well no I think I think most things can be used as a crutch though it's like everything in moderation if you do it well that can sure work I think so there's a worn looking book here would you like to read it when a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine what the hell does that mean Ugh, never liked riddles. I do not have a head for riddles. English language major, I love reading, I love writing. I could talk about language all day long, I do not have the patience for riddles. I just don't. I will leave that to the experts, where they will do a much better job of interpreting it. 
You have a hot footed frog. Uh, come on. No. no. Oh, damn it. Vanished on me. Oh. Ooh. There's a little blow up pool section. Okay, two for the price of one. Come on. That's not bad. That's not bad. Opal. Not bad. Emblazoned shield. A traditional design from Nekluda. The combat capabilities aren't much better than the standard wooden shield, but it found popularity for its design. Well, I guess I won't be picking that up then. Uh, okay, I've got to drop this pot lid. It's, uh, sorry, it's just not doing anything for me. There we go. That is kind of neat. The color scheme as well. It's the same color scheme as the, the Hylian set. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. That looks pretty neat. That looks pretty neat. Demo, but I feel like it's soured people at interconnected storytelling, which is a shame because I feel it could be done extremely well. Look at the Cosmere. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what's the Cosmere? Oh, I don't know. That sounds like an interconnected universe I'm not familiar with yet. Cool name, though. The Cosmere. The Cosmos. With a mirror. Boop. A little bit of food. Just a little top up. Damn it, I don't have any... Okay, I'm gonna have to just eat some materials at this point. Time is it? It's apple o'clock. Apple o'clock. Yeah, Fort Haddon is kind of not a great tourist spot. Uh, I should you think about, like, building a mall here or something. Wouldn't that look good with a pretty mall? Yeah, a couple of picture houses. A couple of restaurants. I wouldn't be too shabby. I'd go there. Sweet. You can just cook all day. This game is difficult enough that some days you're just, you're just gonna have to. I think that'll be an... Maybe just make one or two little sneaking things as well. See what that needs. I've got some snails, so... I mean, I thought I had some snails. Oh, there they go. Okay. I'm cooked into a dish. Oh, cooked into a dish. So not cooked into an elixir then. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll take that. I will take that. Brandon Sanderson's fantasy universe. All of his adult fantasy novels take place in it. Oh wait, Brandon Sanderson! Why is that name so familiar? Why is that name so familiar? That is really familiar. He's not the one who did the Wheel of Time series, is he? I could have sworn there's something about that, Sanderson. I swear he was the Wheel of Time guy. I swear the author actually also died of cancer before he could complete the series. Was it his son that finished it? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. I can't look it up because I'm so darn busy looting the dead. Well, looting the dead is exhausting work. I really should reward myself with a meal or something. But you can't eat if you got full hearts, so. I have to wait for something to injure me or something. I wonder where the nearest shrine is. Let's see if I can find... Let's get to like a, a peak or something so I can... Have a good old look around. Yeah, let's get to the top of that. You finished the Wheel of Time with Robert... J oh! Thank, thank you very much, Demo. Thank you, Demo. Okay, so... Robert Jordan is the one who wrote the Wheel of Time. And he unfortunately contracted cancer, I believe. And then... Before he died, all of his notes were uh, collated. And Brandon Sanderson is the one who actually finished uh, the series using the notes. So Brandon Sanderson is who took over the Wheel of Time series after uh, Robert Jordan died. 
Thank you very much for the clarification. I, yeah, I, it was niggling at me. I, I knew there was something there, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Not least because I tried the Wheel of Time series myself, and god damn it, that I, I'm just not built with that kind of fantasy stamina in me. I bought, like, books 1, 2, and 7, just to try and trick myself into keeping with it, because if I've got, like, book 7, I at least have to stick with it until book 7 to get my money's worth, right? Like, psychologically speaking, that's quite a clever gambit, but that is not how it played out. I think I read to book five or six, like really close to the book that I'd actually picked up. And then I was like, mm, I don't know this. It's, oh, it was difficult. I've got the patience for reading of a saint if I'm interested in it, but I can't conjure that. I can't, I can't make that patience at a wholesale. It's either there or it's not. For the Wheel of Time, it was there for a while and then it just wasn't. Cool series, though. There's a fox. There's a fox doing foxy stuff. What you doing, fox? Looking around? Doing a little sniff? Doing a little hunt? I wonder what happens when you spook it. We've got a lot of foxes in the chat, huh? I wish I had the camera so I could get a picture. That's like, that is just, that's perfect. That's picturesque. That is magnificent. Look at that. I mean, kind of just looks like he's eating dirt. But I mean, apart from that, beautiful. Hey! No! Oh, come back! No, don't go! Don't go! Oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. They, he's gone, he's gone. He's just going to go in circles and fling himself off a cliff or something. Nope. Oh, he came back. He came back and he vanished because he cares. He cares. Oh, that's so beautiful. I feel like in a way, all of us are disappearing foxes. It's like a metaphor for life. How the hell am I going to get up there? I guess I'll go over here first. <laughs> ah, gee, I wonder why there are so many foxes. Yeah, that is kind of weird, huh? Did you think that, that pets would be a more popular animal, but everyone's a fox. In the same way that everyone's a critic, everyone's a fox. I guess it's because it's the, it's the most exotic-looking animal that everyone also sees all, basically all the time. Like, it's urban, so you see it a lot. But at the same time, it lives in nature as well, so it's not its not tamed, it's untamed, it's free. But at the same time, it's sort of made a connection with humanity. Admittedly, that connection is rooting through garbage, but still... It's like, there's like a kind of a poetry to it. It's like foxes bridge the gap between the rural and the urban. Between the man-made world and the natural world. And if you're in a Japanese folklore, they also bridge the gap between the spiritual world and the mortal world as well. Because they're all tricksters called kitsune. And they have like nine tails and they do all sorts of crazy like wife stealing, tricking stuff as well, which is cool. Ah. Ah. Oh, God. Sometimes climbing is a struggle. It just, it's a struggle in this game. Ooh, which do I go for there? Oh, okay. I'll just... I'll take the extra stamina. I'll take the extra stamina. I'm not risking getting blown off this again. No, 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 no. Not until I've got that tower. Shift. A fox is a cat software running on dog hardware. L I mean, literally. It literally is. I think I've heard people who are like... Who deal with animals, like vets and stuff like that. They, they like literally agree. They're like, oh, we understand animal behavior and we deal with them. And it's like, no, you're just right. They literally are just like that. And they're so cute, though. Dare I? Oh, why not? Oh, he's not as strong as I thought he'd be. Okay. You okay, little guy? I guess not. Bye. Yeah, he literally left not a trace. 
he just... Poor guy. He was not for this world. Okay, gotta get rid of something. Gotta get rid of something. Club. I'll get rid of the club. I'll get rid of the club. How are you so poetic and you're like everyday speed? <laughs> I'm not poetic. I half the time I'm just blabbering on about nothing. I think it's just the the odds, isn't it? If you talk nonsense for a hundred hours a day, hundred hours a day? That's that's nonsense right there. If you talk nonsense all the time, you're more likely to come up with stuff that doesn't sound like nonsense. You're just playing the slots, aren't you? That's basically all it is. All foxes talk nonsense, basically, because they're trying to distract you while they're robbing you. So if you think a fox is being particularly eloquent, I check my pocket and make sure my wallet's still inside. If I were you. Just saying. I'm just saying. You can't be too careful. Not saying all foxes are thieves, but all foxes I know are definitely thieves. And I do also know all foxes, so I'll just put that out there. And they have an X in their name, which is basically reality's way of accepting they're great. Literally! I mean, all things with X's in them are great. There are websites you can go to that have a lot of X's in the, the URL, and they're great too. I was going to take that joke somewhere, but I realized it's probably best if I just leave that, so never mind. I'll just keep yapping on about nuts. <laughs> Look, we've reached Hat in the Tower! Boom! <laughs> okay, let's get this tower then. Let's get this tower. Oh, Demo, don't worry. No, I've, I've made my opinion on Elon Musk and his various ventures very clear. Like... Ugh... <sighs> He's not a very eloquent person. While I don't hold that against anybody, he's got a he's got a, a lot of money behind him. He could put a lot of that, just a, like two percent of his his worth, into like a publicity team to make sure like he doesn't look like an idiot in public. And for some reason, he he decides that that two percent of his wealth is not worth spending. So he's just going to continue looking like an idiot and doing crazy things on a platform that I used to like quite a lot, which is very sad. One reason I find myself using Twitter a lot less often recently. And I mean, Twitter's always been a nightmare, like, dumpster fire anyway. It's sort of like this unspoken rule, like, ultimately, you don't go on Twitter unless you're willing to, to waste however much of your life you spend it on there. I mean, that was before it got bad, but it is even worse now. God damn, where is the... Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make this. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh, it might be close. It might be close. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Keep forgetting I've got an extra ring. Boop. Demo. Blabbering on about nothing is like the essence of poetry. I mean, quite a poetic way of putting it, actually. I mean, that's how you can tell you're a fox. It's, you know, one, one eloquent way to say it. Like, poetry is like the art of saying saying nothing. It's like the, you can say nothing eloquently and you can say nothing in a less eloquent fashion. Poetry is just the more eloquent way of saying it, but ultimately we're all saying nothing, so. Oh, there we go. Okay. Top of the tower, top of the tower, top of the tower. Some very interesting looking is that rock formations, or is that like giant ribs from some creature who died long ago? can't tell. Maybe that'll be the next destination. Gavin Gray Howard. I call it linguistic lycanthropy. Twilight turns the tongue into twisting tails. Ooh, nice. A lot of alliteration as well. I can dig it. I can dig it. A little bit of alliteration. Oh, I'm such a poet at heart. I wasn't so embarrassed by how outmoded the poem form is. I'd probably still be writing them, but, you know, like... You get to an age where it's like... Nobody reads poetry anyway. You just... You just end up looking like a weird bard from the 12th century. Like, nobody writes poems. Everyone's too busy trying to hold down three zero-hour jobs and all that crazy stuff. Alas, alack. To be fair, they also wrote poems a lot at a time when they didn't really have a lot of other stuff to occupy themselves with. Like, 
if you're not one of those serfs or uh, one of those lower class peasants who's who's plowing the fields like 16 hours a day, like there's a lot of your day that you're just not doing anything. Like, okay, what do I do when my barest survival needs have been met? Like I can eat, I can drink, I can bathe, and I can sleep. Okay, well, ponder the universe and my place in it. Uh, ponder mortality and write it all down and pretend it's important enough for other people once I'm dead to continue reading it. It's basically, it's basically what poetry is. It's the preponderance that anything you, s you can say now will be worth reading at some point in the future. In some cases it is, because there's a lot of beautiful poetry out there. But in most cases, it's probably not. Demo, my problem is that I want to write epic fantasy stuff, but I can never muster the willpower to keep it going. I mean, that's the hard part, right? Like, the ideas come easy. The ideas are free. It's like, oh, I've got a great idea for a series. It'll be amazing. I, it's the kind of series I'd love to, to watch or read myself. And then you get into it, and you're like, you can be 10 hours writing into it, and then be like, ooh, I don't want to finish this. Like, the fun part was almost just conceptualizing about it. While it can still be everything and it's still in that loose sort of gelatinous stage before it's fully hardened and then when you actually have to have to make it something you have to solidify it so it, it can't be gummy anymore it has to be all stiff you're like hmm i like it but because it's a thing it can't be anything i imagined it to be so it's less satisfying as a result it's not conceptual Gavin Gray Howard, nah. Be the cringe, sing your sonnets freely, and let the leaves of the page of your heart find their home in someone's heart. Oh, that's now that is actually some that's some very sweet poetry, actually. Props to you, Gavin. That's actually very, very sweet. Hey, and it rhymes as well. I think it does anyway. If it if it doesn't rhyme, I I may be I may be suffering from a lack of sleep. So don't take anything I say seriously. It sounds very poetic, though. And honestly, the biggest the biggest part of poetry is just letting go of all of your inhibitions and, and being scared of what people think about you. Which is ultimately what life should really be about as well. It, people people's opinions doesn't matter as much as you think it does. It matters. Obviously, it matters. We live we live in a society. Famously, it matters. And it doesn't matter that much, especially strangers whom you're never going to meet. Like, their opinion of you doesn't matter that much. You can afford for them to think you're weird. Or boring. Or funny. Or clever. You know. And people take you as you are. Life's too short to put too much stock in. All the, the could-haves and might-bes and all that stuff. Hey, Cobra! Hi 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 Don't answer that. But I hope you're doing well. We're just playing through uh, Breath of the Wild. We're just lighting some torches. We're getting some beacons. Exploring some shrines. Realizing that my motion controls don't work so I actually can't do the puzzle in the shrine so I gotta come back to it later but hoping that if I talk enough over it that people won't quite realize what's going on so so the conversation can just move swiftly onward as though it never happened. All that good stuff. Shift. I'm just imagining my weird little poems to be found 500 years into the future and everyone will be like I'm gonna start a religion based on this. Oh god. I mean that is a nightmare isn't it? It's like you write a fiction series like L. Ron Hubbard or something like that and then people in the future look at it and go wow this is this must be a historical document. This is how people lived back then. We should make a messiah based on this character that was made up. That'd be terrifying. Imagine if someone made a, a messiah story based on your life. I mean, it, in one way, it'd be quite flattering. But in another way, it'd be like, please don't base your entire way of living on how I lived. You don't want to do that. That's not a clever idea. I am not a role model for anybody. 
living or otherwise. Ah, oh, there we go. That move, for me, it's more of an executive dysfunction thing. Yeah, I see what, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And sometimes the hardest part of doing something is just the psyching up to do it. Especially when public speaking is involved, you know, like... You can, you can make... You can make things very big and scary in your head. And then when you actually get around to doing them, you're like, Oh, I'm, this is actually fun. I'm actually quite good at this. Sometimes not. You know, sometimes you are actually as bad as you think you are, but... Oftentimes you just... It's very easy to catastrophize stuff. Like, what's the worst that could happen? If I have to give a speech, or I'm reading a poem out loud, or there's, there's some kind of public engagement. Like, the worst that can happen is... You stutter sometimes. You don't look as eloquent as you want to look. It's like, that doesn't matter. You think the greatest, like, the greatest speech givers of our generation didn't start out stuttering as well? Like, I mean, the President of the United States has a stutter. He still does reasonably well, so... There is hope for us all. Boop. Hello, cow. See? Cute. Not majestic like a fox. I'll just say that. Not majestic like a fox. <laughs> Shift. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> You'd be surprised. No, it's it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. They grow back every like three days, so you don't have to worry about it. You really don't have to worry about it. It's all cool. It's all cool. It's all cool. You can cut down a whole orchard, and then wait a week, and the whole orchard will be back. So, don't worry, I'm not laying waste to the environment for the sake of, like, an apple. It might look that way. It might look that way. But I promise, this is completely ecologically sound. <laughs> Please don't come near my garden. It's like, it's okay, I just want an apple. I'm just gonna take this axe, and just, and just completely destroy your garden, because I want an apple and once i have my single apple i will just i will i will take all of the the tree trunks that i've chopped down and i'll make a house out of them and in two days all of them will grow back because that's how it works in video game logic you're welcome Corver a onceler mode totally totally although even worse than the onceler because even the onceler had good intentions you know there are no in there are no good intentions here. There are only trees to chop and apples to catch. All must fall to collect more apples. <laughs> to to a man with a sword, everything looks like an apple tree. Everything starts to look like an apple tree. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. Demo, where can we find you if you aren't on Twitter, by the way? I know you don't like social media too much. Oh, I, yeah, I can't, I can't stand this stuff. I mean, it's how I meet all of you folks. So, you know, to some extent, I absolutely love it. It's great. It's got so many great applications. But in terms of, like, the sheer reach, it gives people both good and bad. It's like, it's it's too much for me. I can't, I can't deal with that. So I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Blue Sky. If you're on Blue Sky now, which I think is just open to the public, so you should be able to to see accounts without having to set up your own. I'm on Blue Sky as well. Uh, either T-Lark or T-Lark Official. It's, it's the one with the, the little yellow logo with the fox on it. You know, the classic one. I say as I slowly but surely work my way through every sword in my inventory for the sake of getting like a single piece of wood. <laughs> oh God. But that's it, I'm afraid. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on um, any of those other platforms. I'm not on Mastodon. I'm not on any of the pretenders that rose up after Twitter started dying. It's just Twitter, Blue Sky, um, YouTube, or my website for the time being. So if you can't find me on there, I've probably ceased to exist. So, my deepest apologies. I know it's not the most convenient. People would like it if I had an Instagram and just, just posted the pictures on there whenever I posted pictures on Twitter. I don't know. It's, you know, there are so many people who do do that, and they do it better than I could ever do it, so... I'm going to just take my hats off to them, to be honest. Corver, whether the skies are blue. Well, honestly, it's got its own problems, but I'll, I'll take it. Blue sky is in a whole other realm compared to wherever X is supposed to be right now, so. 
And here we are supposed to meet someone very special. <gasps> Pura. Good morning. This is the Hatno Ancient Tech Lab. Do you have some business with the director? That's right. The director is in the back. A terribly busy person, that one. Please try to keep it brief. So much sass in that face. So much sass. Do keep it brief. Yeah. As though we ever say anything anyway. Simon. Oh, I get it. Like Simon. Oh, I like that. Okay. Good morning. I imagine you've never seen so many books in one place. Pretty incredible, isn't it? We've gathered all of Hyrule's known literature on ancient civilizations here. As for the actual number of books, well... Oh. Hmm. Is that... that thing on your waist? Is that a Sheikah? Oh. There's no mistaking it. That's a real Sheikah slate, isn't it? Never actually seen one in person. If you could just show me the runes on it, I'd be most appreciative. Stasis? Ah, Magnesis. Yes, yes. The remote bomb and Cryonis. And what else? Let's see. So that's it for runes, but... Hmm. Strange. It doesn't seem like you have the basic runes. I don't understand why they're missing. There must be some reason. Ah, where are my manners? I nearly forgot to introduce myself. My name is Simon. I think that's the first thing he said, isn't it? Oh, maybe I'm going crazy. You are... Link, right? You know my name? <laughs> Lady Impa caught me up to speed. She sent an eagle. You see, we were told, a young man holding a Sheikah slate will appear. You must do all you can to help him. He will be the hope that awakens from the slumber of restoration. His name will be Link. I mean, that's pretty much as much as we know now as well, so... Pretty caught up to speed, to be honest. Oh dear, I forgot to tell you something very important. <sighs> Director, listen. Mr. Director, this is a real Sheikah slate. Director? Uh, oh, that's right. I haven't introduced our director. Uh, Miss Pura happens to be right over there. As the Hatno Ancient Tech Lab director, Miss Pura is the world's foremost authority on ancient Hyrule culture. It's her! Jacket! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Jacket! I love it. <laughs> I have the utmost respect for Miss Pura and all she's accomplished. I'm honored to be her assistant. On that note, Link, you see, the director may look like a young girl, but, well, maybe it's not my place to be telling you these things. You should talk to Miss Pura herself. So the director of the tech lab is actually this three-foot gremlin with goggles. Interesting. Let's see where it goes. Hey, hey, are you surprised? The director of this laboratory is not Simon, it's me. Oh, she pulled the wool over your eyes. She pulled the wool over your eyes. Snap it is nap. <laughs> anyway, Linky, do you have any dreams from your time in the slumber of restoration? You don't look like you've changed a bit in the last 100 years, but something must have happened in all that time. Well, no matter. I'm just happy you're still in one piece. Linky, what's with that look? You do still remember me, right? I don't remember. I don't remember. Really? Well, I'm so shocked. I don't know if I'll ever be able to recover from this. Even though 100 years ago, I took you to the Shrine of Resurrection after Calamity Ganon fatally wounded you. Oh, okay, so we're dropping some serious hardcore backstory stuff here. Jesus, okay. She was the one that put us in the Shrine of Resurrection. Even though I was the one who put you safely in the Slumber of Resurrection, Despite all that, you still don't remember me? Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Hmm. As expected. Oh my gosh, she's making a note and everything. <laughs> it's like, memory loss? I'm so, I'm so offended. It's like, okay, well, write a memory here. Write a memory here. Write a memory here. After a hundred years in the slumber of resurrection, uh, subject has lost all memories. Noted. Oh, sorry. I have a bad habit of taking notes rather abruptly like that. It's a charming quirk, isn't it? I don't know if it's charming, but... Anywho, do you have any questions for me? Aren't you like a kid? Uh, How very rude. Hmm, or perhaps it's not rude at all. I suppose that's actually a rather logical conclusion to jump to. Uh, the truth is, I look this way because of a failed experiment. Yep. Yep, you look like a failed experiment to me. Well, I say failed, but in some ways it was a success documented the full affair in my diary upstairs. But the whole thing is embarrassing, so I insist you refrain from reading it. Okay, so we're definitely reading that then. Anyway, 
Enough about that. Back to the topic at hand. Here you are after a hundred years. Here to defeat Calamity Ganon, who is growing in strength with every passing moment. And to rescue our beloved Princess Zelda. That is, if you've got the courage to try. You got some courage. I got some courage. And to help the one true hero, I, the one and only Pura, restore the basic functions missing from the Sheikah Slate. And what do you say to that? One more? Once more? Hmm, I see. Post number restoration, the subject's verbal comprehension skills have somewhat atrophied. Noted. <laughs> this is a really important bit, so listen up. You after a hundred years and... Okay, alright, okay. That's just to catch you up. That's just to catch you up. Okay. Yes, please. I knew you'd say that. Alright then. First, I need you to run an errand for me. Oh god. What's with that look on your face? You didn't think I'd fix your Shiga Slate for free, did you? I mean... I kinda did. Come on, I woke up like naked a hundred, a hundred years after the world ended. It's like, you can't do me one favor. Someone can't give me something in this world for free. Jumping up towers and doing shrines and all that. Can't just do one thing. No, alright, okay, alright. Hmm, post-slumber restoration. Subject is played by presumptuous tendencies. Oh, okay, she picked up on that, huh? Noted. Let me explain what this errand entails. You know the unlit furnace on the wall just outside this laboratory? Could you please bring the blue flame from the ancient furnace into town? Oh, and also use it to light our furnace? This sweet little guidance stone will start working once you do that, allowing us to restore your missing runes. Huh, I wonder if young women these days still say things like sweet and little. Ah oh, well, I suppose it doesn't matter anyway. Okay then, I'm counting on you for that blue flame. Great, okay, so I guess it's errand mode again. Ugh. <sighs> Korra, I need you reading she in audiobook form, though I already hear your voice in my head when I read it. Also, how dare you end a flounder on a cliffhanger? <laughs> okay, yeah, so firstly, I'm very sorry for ending it on a cliffhanger. I, I, I still feel repentant about that. Lone Soul is on its way, I promise. But yeah, as far as the audiobook stuff is concerned, I, on the original website, I've still got the tabs that prove it. I did say, by the way, um, anyone who buys the the paperback they'll also get an audiobook form of me reading it i did say that or there'd be like a stream or something that you'd have access to and it ended up not happening because I, I couldn't record the darn thing firstly because my recording equipment's not the best like i'm talking to a lavalier right now which i hope is legible but if you're recording an audiobook you like it, it's it's gotta be so much better than than just like talking on a stream like because you pick up car noises all this crazy stuff it had to be like studio good and there was no way i was going to be able to do studio good stuff but also like if i oh no please oh oh thank god thank god thank god thank god okay if i like start as the author start like giving all the characters voices that kind of makes some canon as well people will start reading it being like well these are the official voices because the author gave them these voices and it's like I'd almost rather you come up with your own ones. Because we all, when we read books, we come up with our own voices for characters. It's like, I don't want to take that away from anybody by by canonizing the, the voices that I come up with. Because what if the voices I come up with aren't as good as the ones you come up with? You know. Also, I'm not the best voice actor. Like, like I, I can do voices. Any, anyone can do voices. Everyone has voices in them. But if I'm like... If I need to come up with 50 unique... Well, great. Out of a branch, damn it. Okay, okay. Yeah, if I need to come up with a unique voice for every character in that book, that's, that is difficult. I don't, I don't know if I'm even up to the task of that. I'd want it to have that level of detail, you know. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll come back to the idea later, but... There's also just the issue of, like... I don't mind hearing my voice in stream, because you gotta do that, but... I don't like editing my voice in stream. Like, I don't like... I like streams because once you put your voice out, that's that. Like, it's just... it's just a thing. They leave it out in the world, and they take it or leave it. But if I've got to start editing it, and I've got to start painstakingly going through this stuff, that's like, that gets painful after a while. No one likes the sound of their own voice that much. Nobody. Not even Robert Downey Jr. Not even Iron Man himself. And he has a rather wonderful voice would like to hear the sound of his own voice that much. Boop. I 
see what you mean there, though. Like, it, it could just be like, this is just, yeah, this is just my take on the voice. This is just my interpretation of events. That, that could totally, that could totally work. I don't know. I, and you, you, you're starting to torque me around to it a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back around. There is also just the, the issue of time, though. It's like, audiobooks take time. I think there's like a metric, like for each each page, it's around like maybe like three minutes to record, and like in the actual session itself to set everything up, those three minutes become like a couple of hours or something. So like, if you're just reading a 200-page book, that really easily turns from like a couple of hours recording session to like you're spending a month on that. When you're already trying to write the sequel, it's like I don't know if I've got a month to spend on the on the audiobook of a book that everyone's already read and is anticipating the next volume of, you know. Maybe I'll get back to it though. I think I think the the big bar part at the moment is that everyone's been waiting for the sequel for too long. So I think before I start talking about like audiobooks, I have to get Lone Soul out. Once Lone Soul's out, I can start talking about different formats and all that kind of stuff. But but right now, I've just got to concentrate on that, man. Because people have been waiting for a long time. People have been waiting for years. And I, I, I feel kind of bad making them wait that long. It's a long time to wait, considering the books aren't particularly long as well. I am not allowed to criticize um, George R. R. Martin ever about uh, the big gap between his books. I'm not allowed to do that ever again, because... My series is relatively short, and I am also experiencing those massive gaps as well. So, like, I, I get it. I get the struggle is completely real. Now, of course, he is rich enough that he never has to work a day in his life. So maybe he'd have more free time to write than I do, but that's besides the point. It's like... It should still be out by now. And also, I just set fire to myself, so that's nice. That was a nice little thing that we all went through. Uh, I set myself ablaze with some lovely blue fire, and now everything hurts, which is great. Yeah, Corver, it's been it's been years. If you count the initial chapter releases, like not the Flounder release, then it's been a long time since since I started the series and announced it. Like, it should be out by now. It really should. I'm I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I mean, the second it's ready to be out, it'll be out. Like, that's a promise. Oh, what did that? I need a torch. I need a torch so badly. All these branches are just burning out on me. Ugh. Boop. On the plus side, there are a lot of bushes here, so... At least there are as many branches as I need. Damn it. No branch. Oh, branch! Oh, thanks, mate Rebound. I wouldn't mind letting Lone Soul cook as long as it needs, let alone the series, but I get the sentiment. Yeah, it's... yeah. I mean, I don't want it to be out before it's ready, which is why it's taken so long. But at the same time, like, you can't spend 20 years writing a book. Like, even if it takes that long for you to write, like, that's ludicrous. Like, set yourself a schedule, get yourself some discipline, you can make it happen. You can do it. You just need to get in the, get in the zone and start figuring it out. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, Brandon Sanderson is, um, he's a beast, though. You get authors that are like that, like Stephen King. Like, they can just write. They can write, like, three books a year. I don't understand how anyone can do that. It's insane. That level of productivity. That's, like, that's anti antithetical to, to my whole method. Which is, like, I lock myself in a room for a month, and I can write it in a month. But then I hate it, and I can never go back to it, and it's that's not really a healthy way of making art. That's just the only way I can do it. Woo! Stephen King's like cranking out 20 books in a week. He's not even on cocaine anymore like he was in the 80s, so I don't know how he's doing it these days. He's just got stamina. He's just got some creative stamina. He's got legs. Pura. Hey, you! Thank you, thank you so much! Now then, take a look over there. The Guidance Stone must be starting to react. There's nothing mysterious about it. This is pure science. Now go and place your Wii U gamepad over on that stone slab 
and we'll get some information directed into it from above via droplet of water info but it's all just science there's no there's, there's nothing fantastic about this in, in the slightest i'm also a little girl who's like 200 years old and has done like aging reverse technology but that's that's this is all just science it's all just science give me a nice snap go on no time to be shy about it snap nice one okay then Sheikah State Repair underway. Guidance Stone Lock removed. Wow. Now let's do this thing. Yeah, let's do this. Whoa, Corvara. You built a hurdy gurdy in 2020? That's amazing. Hey, you don't even have to claim to be able to play it. I mean, you can claim to be able to build one. That's even cooler, right? It even sounds cool, hurdy gurdy. Oh, I love it. I wish I could play the hurdy gurdy. Camera, Hyrule Compendium, and album missing files confirmed. Starting repair. Wait, what is a hurdy gurdy? Is that an instrument? Almost sounds a bit like a. I'm imagining like. an accordion or something with bellows. That feels very hurdy gurdy for some reason. Oh, we got the camera! We got the camera! We got the camera! A rune has been added. Oh my god, okay. Well, got a lot of pictures as well. Ain't that nice? And a Hyrule Compendium. Hyrule Compendium allows you to take pictures of every animal, creature, weapon, uh, like literally everything in the game, including bosses and stuff like that. I don't think we'll be completing that in this playthrough, though. That's a lot of work. That is a lot. <laughs> and it's done. So, is it all fixed up now? Hmm, let's see here. Which one is it? Camera, Hyrule Compendium, Album. Yep, looks good. So I know this is sudden, but hear me out. Take a picture of me with the camera. Oh, and don't forget to let me see it. Ooh, that's a bit weird. Did she only repair the uh, the Sheikah slate so she could do that? Hmm. Well, suspect, but okay. Okay, say cheese. Oh, wait, I could do a self-portrait. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> say cheese! Oh, beautiful. One for the books. One for the books. Wait. Tree branch? What? No, I took a picture of her. Cover. I'll oh, think of violin. With a wheel instead of a bow, then piano keys. Somehow I can both imagine that, and that's utterly beyond my capacity to imagine anything. That's, that's amazing. A violin with a wheel instead of a bow. Okay, I'm imagining that, imagining that. Then piano keys. Is he playing piano keys with a wheel? That's okay. That's wild. That's wild. Okay, I'm looking that. I'm looking that up the second the stream's over. Hurdy gurdy, you built that? That is crazy. Oh my god. That is that's amazing. Pura snap. How's the picture taking going? Did you get a cute picture of me with the camera? Yeah, I took one. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see it. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm, let me see here. Which one is it? That's not a very good effort. Oh come on. Fine, all right, all right. There's your picture. There's your picture. I'm stupid. Yeah, there you go. Took one. She's so impressed with herself. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. My, who is this beautiful young creature? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> come on. Huh? Oh, I guess that's my cue. Sorry, I kind of lost it there. It wasn't on purpose. Hmm. Ah, it's not just a pretty girl in these images. Yes, there are also some old landscape photos stored in the album. I knew Princess Zelda had made frequent use of the camera feature, but this... Hey, Linky! It dawns on me that you were Princess Zelda's appointed knight, which means... There's a strong possibility that you accompanied her to all of the places where these pictures were taken. <sighs> oh, right. The lost memory thing could prove troublesome. But don't lose hope. It just means that these pictures could be the missing piece to help restore your lost memories. 
If my hunch is correct, I suggest you check in with Impa. She knows more about Princess Zelda than even I do. Ah! Oh yeah, there's just one more thing I need from you. You don't have to worry about this until after you see Impa, but I want you to bring me back some ancient materials. Bring them either to me or to Robbie at the Akala Ancient Tech Lab. As if my joy weren't enough, if you bring us ancient materials, we'll give you something good as a reward. Something good is ominous because it's highlighted in red, but... Okay, I guess that's good. If you bring us some ancient materials, we'll give you something good as a reward. It's like, oh, oh god, okay. I hope that something good is something good, but alright. Alright, let's do this. Sweet! Okay, okay. That's pure and done. So I think that... Oh, are you kidding me? There was actually a torch here the whole time. Oh my god, I didn't need to cut down tree branches at all. I could have just used the torch. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, alright, well. This is one of those wonderful, unique cases where you live and you learn. So, all that stuff I did earlier was pointless. I could have just used the torch and I wouldn't have had to chop down all those trees. And it would have been super easy. But hey, you don't go into life knowing everything, do you? You go into life covered in urine uh, and excrement, screaming, and it's all downhill from there. That joke sounds strangely morbid. It wasn't. It wasn't meant to be, but I guess, I guess that does sound kind of morbid now. I think about it. Oh, we found a hoe. Uh, we can't carry it. This hoe's too heavy. That's a heavy hoe. Anyway. Ooh, look at that. It's a shrine all the way over there. Hmm. Oh, still, still Corver, even if it's a kit, that's incredibly impressive. I can't build nothing with these paws. I am useless with that. Hey, I can, I can speak pretty good with my mouth and such. But when it comes to, like, DIY stuff, like, uh, no, I'm not that kind of... That's not me. I'd watch in amazement, though. I'd sit on the sidelines, like, eating Doritos, occas occasionally feeding, like, the real DIY person one. And just marveling at the, at the skills as the watches they like bolting in screws and knocking biscuits into like wooden slats just being like wow you're amazing you're like the kind of person that can actually make ikea stuff aren't you yeah so oh, cool okay so we gotta get over there then we've gotta do that one i mean look at it it's so tantalizing sitting out there all the way by itself being like come on we're here I know you got like really important memory stuff to do and like stories and stuff, but come on, I'm on the edge of a cliff. Come and climb me. Climb me. Ah! No, 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 no. <laughs> you craft words and music. I do that. I do do that. That's true. I do craft words and music. I, I try to anyway. I don't know. If you say you're a musician and like, you're not living off of it professionally. It's, it starts to sound a little pompous and pretentious. I prefer to just say, like, I I drum my hands against instruments and music comes out. That's like an easier way of putting it, I guess. I am very proud of some of the stuff I made, though. Occasionally I'll come back to stuff like Songs to Live To and Hello World, and I'll be like, damn, I made that, but it's cool. <laughs> Which is, that's not a good attitude to have as far as self-esteem goes, but like, I made that, but it's cool. It's like, okay. At least that keeps stuff like the ego in check. Demo, to exist is to suffer. That's true, that's true. Which is why the Buddhists believe that the key to preventing suffering is to relinquish all of your, um, is to relinquish all fears and hopes and wants and desires in the world. And once you relinquish all of that, then you cease to suffer. Because to suffer is to love, to suffer is to lose, to suffer is to fear. If you no longer fear and you no longer have desires for things, like like sexual desires, material desires, all of that stuff. If you if you relinquish all of those things on the mortal plane, then you cease to suffer. Because suffering essentially is the dis the, the difference between what you want and what you have, basically. It's that kind of thing. So if, if there's no distance between those things, then there's nothing to pine for, and there's nothing to be scared about. But that sounds a little, you know... It sounds like a lot. Like, 
you gotta relinquish all earthly desires you gotta let go of earthly attachments including to the people you love like sure you've got no more suffering in your life but if you don't have any anyone you care about in that life is it still a life worth living i don't know ask the buddhists though i'm sure they think their life would be worth living it's just i don't know if i don't know if it's worth giving all that up and then if you end up not achieving enlightenment, it's like, okay, great. Now I don't have enlightenment and I also don't have any cool stuff. And I also don't have any friends and family. So that's just great. At least if you never try to go down the path of the cessation of suffering, you've still got all your cool stuff. Like a Nintendo Switch to play Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Oh, there's an enemy in camp. We've not saved in a long time. I think I might just save. Before I end up eating dirt and dying to the hands of enemies I'm really out leveled to face. Oh no, they all seem to be basic ones. I should be okay. Famous last words, but you know. We'll see what happens. Oh demo, what's your read of Buddhism then? Let's get let's get into like let's get into Buddhist Buddhism while we're at it. While, while I kill these innocent sentient creatures, let's get into your take on Buddhism. How do you read it then? Because I, I, I did a couple of hours research for um, for Shi. And sort of I learned about the Dharma and some sort of about some other Buddhist stuff. But there's, there's a lot of stuff in Buddhism. That's not something you can you can get a quick 101 on. Like, you gotta, you got to research that stuff for years. This, this is deeply spiritual stuff we're talking about. They're all asleep. Okay. Let's try and murder them. Let's try and not wake them in the process. I think some of them are dead, but I'm not sure. Oh, damn it. How much health do these guys have? Oh, no. There are some. These are meanies, all right. Ooh, 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 that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot. Okay, that's a lot, that is a lot. Oh my god, okay. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna have to keep them all at arm's distance. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let them hit you. You can't let them hit you. Even once. Don't do it. 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 Okay. All right. All right. We did it. We did it. We did it. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Stentinator. You get those advanced enemies after uh, completing the Divine Beast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You get, like, different... Lionels and stuff. Some of them are goddamn terrifying. Like the most powerful Lionel in the game is like... It's it's a lot. Like, I wouldn't want to face one of those guys, and I've completed this game a couple of times now. It's intimidating. Probably the hardest thing in the game, to be honest. Like, I think it's harder than Ganon, like the hardest Lionel. But luckily, you don't see them out in the wild, because you've got to do all... got to do, like, the Divine Beast, like you said. Like... I think they do like a metric of world progress or something. It's like either as you progress the world anyway, or as you start to defeat enemies, you accumulate points. And depending on those points, you'll have different levels of enemies. Like enemies that would all be red will then start to show up green. Enemies that would all be green start to show up um, like black or uh, like gray white. And there's like, yeah, there's like a metric for the way the game determines like how hard the the enemies just in in the field should be which i think is pretty balanced because it's it's not often i've played this game of I've, I've run into an encounter that's been like okay this is just not fair like i can't do i physically can't do this because i'm not at the right level whereas in El elden ring when you come out of like literally the first area and, and you're in the open world for the first time there is an enemy right there that you are not supposed to to fight 
you don't have to. It's not like a it's not a super boss or anything. It's skippable. But like if you decide to take it on, oh, you are in for a time. You are in for a gosh darn time. It is not fun. You'd be hitting that enemy with a stick for a hundred years, but damn it, if you're persistent, you're really good, you'll get there in the end. Okay, let's see what all this fuss is about. What's top of the cliff shrine gonna be? Hmm. Demo. Uh, everything is permanently passing away. Point of Buddhism is to embrace that. To accept that things are passing rather than resenting for it. If you focus too much on holding onto pleasure and avoiding pain, you cause suffering. In the Buddhist sense, which is different from the Christian or the general sense. No, exactly, exactly. It's a different, it's a different kind of suffering. Yeah. I mean, it, it's always made sense to me, though. You know. Suffering isn't the same as pain in Buddhism. Yeah. Suffering is more like a... It's a deeper spiritual kind of suffering. It's, um... It's like a spiritual burden. It's not the same thing as eating, like, Taco Bell, and, like, the next day you're suffering. It's not that kind of suffering, so. If I want to really debase this conversation about Buddhism and bring it down to the lowest common denominator, it's not like suffering after eating Taco Bell, you know. I feel almost ashamed even saying that in the same sentence as Buddhism, but, yeah. It's when you cling to things. It's like, so people cling to their, like... Obviously, fear of death is a big one. You cling to life, but you also cling to material attachments. It's like the stuff that's essentially like keeping you pinned to the earth, basically. It's like that kind of stuff, where really you should be dealing with more important spiritual matters than that. It's... So the, the aim of Buddhism is to alleviate yourself from suffering. It's almost like getting your priorities in order, but it's spiritual priorities. Oh. oh my god, it killed me. Oh my god, it actually killed me. Oh, come on. See, you gotta get better at this. Oh, come on. What am I supposed to do here? Okay, do I have the weapons to do this? I think I do. I think I do. Just have a little apple or something, just to make sure it's... There we go. Oh, I might actually do it. Oh, now it's gonna do the thing. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh god. Apple time. Apple time. Apple time. Apple time. <laughs> okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. We gotta get it before it charges up. That's the only thing. Just gotta get it before it charges up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take it. Ooh, I'll take that. And just some crap. Just some crap. I'll take that too. Oh, your partner is a Buddhist demo? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely more of an enthusiast, and I'm not. I'm not practicing at all. But I think it's a really interesting. Um, is it a theology? I don't know. It's. I forget because Buddhism doesn't have a traditional deity, so some people think of it more as a way of life than like a religion so I guess it's not a theology because there's or a deology because there's no deity involved but at the same time there's something spiritual going on there there's there's an afterlife or a series of afterlives hmm and now I guess we'd have to ask your partner yeah but yeah I, I love Buddhism anyway just even just the um the aesthetics, the sort of the cultural trappings of it, the history of Buddhism and the way it was, it's propagated in the world. Oh, I could talk about that stuff all day. I find that stuff super interesting.
Oh, thanks, Steno. Yeah, I was gonna say, like... That Lionel in the Colosseum, that's pretty much the first Lionel every player in Breath of the Wild faces first, right? I mean, like, it's in such a prominent place, and it just, it feels so epic, like this, this broken down Colosseum. There's something just very satisfying about that one being the first one you find. I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea, though. I don't know if that's, it doesn't feel like the easiest one in the game. Like, you're in for a bit of a challenge. Very cool to fight, though. And here we go. Top of the cliff. Top of the cliff. Top of the morning. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Even if you hate everything about this game, like, sometimes it's just beautiful. Sometimes you just want to sit back and just, just drink it all in. I think I'm going to save, because this might be a very stupid idea. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Because what I'm planning to do is make my last spirit orb that one. I just hope I've got enough stamina for it. Do I have any... Do I want to risk it? Do I want to risk it? I'll risk it. I'll risk it. Okay. Okay. Demo, I'm a non-theist myself. I'm a non-theistic Christian. Ooh, a non-theistic Christian. Wait, wait, non-theistic Christian. Okay, so you're a Christian who doesn't believe in the existence of a god, then. Ooh, okay, I might need to clarify that just to make sure I got that right. But I think that's the gist of it. Because theism specifically, it's more than deism, which is the belief in any uh, power for entity... Theism specifically is like... Hmm. I need to brush up on these terms, man. Damn. I think that's what it means, though. Non-theistic Christian. So you believe in the values of Christianity, but not necessarily the Bible as the honoring word of God and all the stuff that comes with it. All that kind of stuff. Oh, I believe in the existence of God, not just, just not a theistic God. Oh, interesting. I'm not an atheist Christian. Oh, of course, of course, of course. And if you believe in the existence of God, then you're not an agnostic either. You are specifically... Yeah. You're specifically... Maybe that's a deism? Because deism is, is any powerful being or deity. Not necessarily a theistic God. So maybe you'd qualify as a deist, as a non-theistic Christian. But I'm not sure... Oh, oh, oh. Major test of strength. Major test of strength. I don't know if we're ready for this. I don't know if we're ready for this. I don't know if I can do this. Not not in terms of skill. Like, obviously, I'm the maker, maker, champ, champ, maker, maker, champ. But I don't think I've got the weapons to physically do it. I think we might have to come back to this later. Oh. You want to have just one try? I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. No promises, though. Uh, no promises. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ooh. Big gambit, big gambit. Uh, okay, no, no, I don't think this is gonna happen. 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 Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Um, this is... <laughs> oh, I got four hearts. I've got no stamina. I've got no food. And I've got barely any weapons. Uh, oh. Oh, my God. This is good. This is a crapshoot. This is a crapshoot. This is just a crapshoot. This is just a crapshoot. Yeah, I love the theme. The theme is great. I can listen to this all day. Oh, it's already broken. No, this this is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I got no weapons. I got no weapons. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Oh. oh. 
This is tempting fate. This is tempting fate. Ah, oh, I didn't even get a strength elixir or anything. Oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, fire rush. Finally, 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 finally. Okay. Oh dear lord. Okay. Fire rush again, fire rush again, fire rush again. This is this might actually be possible. 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 This is, this is wild. This is wild. Okay. Uh, just step back, just step back, just step back. That'll keep doing that for a while. I've literally got no arrows, so I can't. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> this is, come on, come on. to be. It wasn't meant to be. Oh. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. No, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Oh, look, e even if I had, like, uh, like a strength elixir, even then I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll try my hand at this. I'll try my hand at this, but this just a little too close to the mark. Just a little too Then I'll link up Ale Scars with Hexa Guardians. I got some for my cat. L listen, I've lived my whole life with cats as well. Tell me about it. If cats, if cats really hate you, you'll just you'll just never see them. They'll just avoid you because they can afford to avoid you. If cats like you, they'll leave you with scars for life. Like it's almost easier if cats don't like you. Like they won't, they won't sit on your lap. They won't bother you. They won't nag for food or treats all the time. If a cat does love you. God help you. You'll need it. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'll go back to a tower. Go back to a tower. The demo in theism, deism, reality is reducible to God, where in my paradigm, God is just another entity. Okay, so God isn't the be all end all of the universe then. So God doesn't construct the rules of the universe, God operates within the rules. Which is an absolutely fascinating principle. It's, that idea is very interesting. Because at that point, if God is as beholden to the laws of the universe as everything else in the universe is, there is no need at that point for God as an explanation of how humanity came to be or how life on the universe started. So in that case, your belief in a God isn't... It doesn't answer those questions, or at least it's not necessary for the answering of those questions. Which is very interesting. So then... Then does God exist to answer moral quandaries regarding where humans derive morality from? Then maybe is that why, or maybe maybe a God, maybe in that paradigm, God isn't technically speaking necessary for morality to exist in the universe. It, God just happens to be another being that operates under an accepted idea of what morality is and how morality is mutually beneficial for all parties involved. I kind of like that idea. I kind of like that idea. I, I've got some I've got some family members who are quite religious so my relationship with religion hasn't been the most understanding over time because they're sort of they're pretty hardcore to the text kind of people. But I can absolutely get down I'm on board to discuss all the interesting stuff around. Okay so Let's say, let's say God is real and there is no, you know, you're not a Christian fundamentalist who's trying to change laws and schools and all this crazy stuff. You're, you're down to talk about the morality of it and the, the interesting ideas about where life on the universe uh, emerged, if God is necessary or not, all this stuff. I, I love this kind of stuff. Ears. <laughs> Get me drunk enough and I'll preach panpsychism at you. Okay, ears, I think we're going to need a chat definition of panpsychism now, because that either sounds like a sexuality or like a move in Final Fantasy. Like, you've chosen panpsychism. Like, that's amazing. I have to know what that's about. 
And also, I apologize to chat for hitting a horse. I did not mean to hit that horse. I was I was going for the book goblin. I promise. I promise. Shift. Sometimes I think everyone is their own god living in their own world. Well, what we do know, based on um, brain scans, shift about what happens when people who are um, believers talk about what um, what God wants and sort of um, the conditions around God is the same parts of their brain that uh, light up are the parts of their brain that light up when they talk about their own wants and beliefs. So we do, in essence, make our own God regardless of what we do believe in. You know, like if for believers in a God, they make their own God. Every, every believer has their own version of that God. Like, as long as what you believe isn't the the only correct interpretation that everyone else must bow down before. I'm always happy to discuss stuff like this. Philosophy, I could do that. I could do this stuff all day. It's only when it gets fundamentalist and we start talking about rights that people are going to lose as a result of that, that I start to get a little impatient with this stuff. But I'm always down to discuss it. Oh. Oh, I think I know this place. I think... I think we're about to meet Flower Blight Ganon. If you don't know who Flower Blight Ganon is, it's arguably the hardest boss in the game. But it's not the person you'd expect it to be. Sten, uh, Steno, get drunk enough and you'll speak Floridian to uh, Texan. <laughs> Pretty much. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? You must not harm the flowers. She's kind of scary, actually. Planet flowers around the shrine. Please be careful where you step. You don't want to hurt them, do you? Yeah, she's... You, I mean, you can just, like, brush them. Oh. No, you must not hurt the flowers. They're screaming out in pain. Like... I wonder what happens if I just set them on fire. I think she'd probably kill me. But I guess this is it. I'm gonna go on an adventure. Flower adventure. Apparently, Stens, uh, Steno, um, speaking Dutch um, to a German speaker is akin to uh, speaking like if you're drunk or you've got like a potato in the mouth. There's something about about the Dutch sort of language and sort of the Dutch dialect. Apparently, it's very potato in the mouthy. That's just coming from people I know who speak it, though. Take that with a grain of salt. Here is panpsychism. The idea that all things, no matter how small, have an element of consciousness. Oh, that sounds very Japanese. That sounds like the idea of ka uh, kami, in which everything, uh, from the smallest rock to the largest mountain, everything has a spirit in it. That's very kami. That's very Japanese Shinto. That's amazing. Of course, I quite like the idea as well. It, it's interesting when you get into stuff like, okay, even stuff that's not organic. So, like... Does that mean that man made things like paper clips and like headphones? Do they all have um, a small element of consciousness in them too? Is it literally everything? Or is it like all life, no matter how great and small, has consciousness? I wonder what's going on in here. Oh, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's Frogger. Okay, we gotta play Frogger for a while. Okay, that's fun. That's fun. I think in a minute, but... Oh, maybe we're not playing Frogger. Maybe it's Cryonis time. Okay. Ears, I couldn't say. Hmm. I don't know, I guess... I guess it's malleable. Like, you can, to a certain extent, you can decide what panpsychism means, right? I guess not. I guess not. I guess it's got a rigid definition, but... as At least on a personal level, you can decide... You can decide what it means. You can decide whether it includes all all things full stop, which would include pre presumably all atoms and all subatomic atoms as well, because they're technically, you know. Or does it mean all things, including like stuff that isn't even matter, like like stuff like light and like quarks? Would they have consciousness too? It's like how how deep does this rabbit hole go? Oh, it's more about the spirit of the objects, in my opinion, Shit. Yeah, I guess it could be. Demo. T-Lark, you seem like the kind of person I could chat with for, like, five hours. Same with a lot of my people chat. Yeah, honestly, like, 
if I was in a Discord, I'd be totally down to just like, be like, okay, I'm free this Thursday afternoon. Do you want to just like hang out and just literally chat about nonsense this whole time? I'd, I'd be so happy if you just do that. But I, I can't do social media. I've tried on Discord multiple times and it's just either the technology or the way you interact with it. It's just so beyond me in so many ways. That's... I'm not an old man, I know. I, we were joking about twink death earlier and all that kind of stuff. I'm not old. But in terms of my relationship with technology, I'm virtually prehistoric. Like, my ideal relationship with technology is that it doesn't exist. Like, I don't have a relationship with it. Oh, oh there we go, there we go. Oh, thank God for that. So, Discord's out of the question, but... You know, if you want to hit me up on Twitter with some philosophical conundrums, I'm always down to chat about stuff. I just can't do it with all strangers at all times. It's it gets to be a lot. It gets to be a lot. I'd rather find you know, like the people who you down to chat with, and then once you found, you know, like once you find your tribe, that kind of thing, then you're down to chat about whatever. Like it doesn't matter at that point. You're just down to chat. Gavin Gray Howard, so your plushies do love you. Oh, that's actually that's actually pretty cute. That's actually pretty cute. I like that idea. Like plushies, it's like the companion cube in Portal and Portal. Like to a certain extent, they are sentient. To a certain extent, they do care about you. Any plushie? Oh my god! Did I just do the exact same thing again? Oh, am I gonna drown? I think I'm gonna drown. Oh. Here I go. Drowning. <laughs> Less than a meter away from dry land as well. How embarrassing. Oh my god. Oh, shift! That's amazing. I had a Sony Ericsson, um... Oh, what'd you call it? A Sony Ericsson K800i for the longest time. Because I just did not want to transition to an iPhone or anything. So I'm right there with you, buddy. Like... If I could in spirit, I'd still have one of those ancient phones that last forever. You could, like like the Nintendo 64, you could dash it against a wall and six months later it'll still be working just fine. You just can't practically do that anymore because, you know, people need YouTube in their lives. Gotta listen to my podcasts when I'm out on my walks and stuff, you know. Also demo, yeah, like chatting with strangers could be tedious. And the big thing about strangers is I don't have patience for, um, like public discussion when you don't know if there are argument the arguments are in good faith or not. Oh, four. So yeah, like I, 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 when you can't tell if people are being disingenuous or not, like I've got no patience for that. I'm not going to talk theology with someone who is it, it has hasn't actually got a position in, in the and, and is bored and is looking to just throw out slurs or just be aggressive for no reason. Or just just play the field just for the interaction because they're not actually interested in any of this stuff, huh? you know. So once you find someone who you know is not being disingenuous, they don't have to agree with you politically necessarily, or agree with you on any specific subject. But you have to know like they're actually genuinely interested in the conversation. Then I am down to chat for as long as they are. I am absolutely down for that. That's why I, I tend not to do group stuff too much. Like I'd rather just I'd rather just find couple people you know just chill with them and then I'll chat with them until the cows come home although I'm sure the cows don't appreciate you know not being home in the first place whatever that means <laughs> that's a sign of how late the stuff is it's like okay cows come home so I'm gonna start taking traditional phrases and just they just turn into mulch and nonsense in my in my mind now this is this is where we are people this is where we are well, I don't think you're getting away from me. Sorry, Harul Bass. Sorry. You just look too delicious. Too delicious. I think we've got enough for a... You want to go back to Kakariko? Yeah, I think we've got enough. Oh my god. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get another heart. Let's get another heart. Oh, Jason, I know it's terrible. I need to remember every month just to message you just to just to check in so I can just be like, what's going on, man? 
You know that when every time I message you, it'll be because the website's screwing up. It's I've that's so that's so bad. I'd love to just chat it just about just normal stuff. How's the business going? You know, have you pondered the expansion of the universe recently? Like, what kind of food have you been cooking? Have you been into any any interesting stuff lately? I've been getting into like fajitas a lot lately. Like, yeah, I've been getting into like. Yum nuts, which are like deep fried donuts, but they sort of like have the texture of yum yums. Oh, that stuff is so good. Sometimes the universe is a bit of a big subject. You just want to talk about the silly stuff. Oh yeah, sorry, Jason. It's been it's been streaming for a minute. I'm I'm quite happy that my computer is not literally dissolved under all this pressure because I think it's streaming at 1080p, but. I think the computer is like running everything at 4K, which is a lot to do for a long amount of time. So this is a sign that I built my computer to last and it's not, I've not cheaped out where I shouldn't have cheaped out, if you know what I mean. Also, look at that. Oh my God. Wow. You got five hearts. I mean, just based on this alone, if I managed to make an elixir, I might even be able to take on that guy. You know, that, that um, major test of strength in the middle of the sea. I might even be able to do that. Maybe. I don't know, it's still a lot. You've got to walk in there with enough weapons, with enough good stuff. Because otherwise it's not happening, you know. You can't force that stuff. But still, maybe. Maybe I'll be with a chance. I can start cooking with five apples now. Because five apples is five hearts, which is a full load of health. <laughs> Cheers to the king to really make sure appreciate how much like three hearts at the start of the game really is just nothing. Like that is nothing. They are not being generous with you. Then again, I think Nintendo was assuming that most people coming to Breath of the Wild, I mean Tears of the Kingdom, if, if they haven't played Breath of the Wild, they're at least familiar with it. So like, it makes sense to up the challenge at the start of the game a little bit. Because like, to some extent, you are playing the same game twice. Like, you know, you've, you've done this stuff. You've, you know how to do bullet time. You know how to, like, backflip and stuff like that. And quick dodge and all that stuff. Or maybe they just didn't quite, like, flatten out the difficulty curve. It could always just be that. You never know. Wow, okay. So I think we're supposed to go back to Impa now. And relay the knowledge that we finally got all of our, um, all of our beautiful photographs back. I swear it was around here somewhere. Oh, there we go. There. These beautiful little memories. All of which will contain a little piece of the past that can be played in any order. Non-linear storytelling. You gotta love it. Huh. I heard Pure was giving you the runaround, but you seem just fine. Oh, well, that was easy. Now then, let me see. Hey, take a look at my pictures. Look, it's oh. great. Aha! This is without a doubt the camera. Camera's in red, so it's ominous. The camera. The Princess Zelda used 100 years ago. Okay. Reaction could have been a bit more impressive, but I'll take it. It could be that if you visit the locations within those pictures, you will be able to restore some of your lost memories. Come back here once you have tried going to at least one of those locations. There is something I wish to give you. Is it food? God, I could take some food right about now. Delicious yum nut. Oh, that'd be so good. Just in case anyone in the chat's curious, that's not that's not a euphemism for something weird. A yum nut is a donut that's like yeah. deep fried in the shape of a square. It's still got like a donut hole in the middle, but the texture's like a yum yum, so it's like sort of crispy. It's crispier than a Krispy Kreme. It's like craggly edged. It's got icing sugar on the outside, but there's no filling on the inside. 
Ugh, oh, M&S sell them. And when I'm feeling really in the mood to give myself a treat, I'll pop to the slightly more expensive place and pick up a young nut, and it's just... Fills up a young fox for a whole afternoon. So good. So good. What the hell are you doing up here? I swear I put your cuckoos back down. What is going on? Where is your owner? Why has he lost his mind? What is happening? Oh no, they're not here. No, don't do this to me. I can't do this again. I don't want to do this again. Oh my god. Do I have to collect all the cuckoos? Is, is the game really going to make me do this? Yeah. Oh, I guess he's going to sleep. Alright, well, don't bother him. Steno, when school starts again in a few weeks, I hope to grow my manga collection. Oh, good luck! Ooh, that sounds amazing. I've tried to get into Beastars, but, I mean, importing some of those, um, some of the copies to the UK, that stuff gets expensive fast, so I think I... I got like issues one, two, and six. I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to a halt for a minute. Maybe I'll get the full set when it's all out. This stuff is so expensive. It's good though. Exactly, shift. Biking to school work is amazing. Get your exercise out of the way so you don't have to hit the gym or anything. Gives you some time to think. You could just plug in, listen to some music. Obviously only in one ear. You know, we wanna be sensible about this. We wanna be safe. You don't wanna be completely plugged in and like not cognizant into the outside world because you never know what's going to happen the kango hmm are you sorry to bother you but are you a fellow traveler as for me i just love art in fact i'm traveling the world in search of beautiful landscapes just between you and me i hear there's a great fairy fountain somewhere near this village i hear it's breathtakingly beautiful Aesthetics aside, they also say the place can bestow people with some kind of mysterious power. I've been researching it for ages, and I finally have a lead. There's a place that is beyond suspicious. The problem is, I can't seem to find the fountain there. Sigh. Nothing beats the thrill of tracking down a perfect view. As a fellow traveler, you understand the sentiment, right? Yeah, I understand. Oh, I knew it. I just knew there was someone like me nearby who appreciates true beauty. Sadly, I can't pin down the exact location of the Great Fairy Fountain. I haven't put it all together yet, but there's a suspicious place I have my eye on. In fact, I was about to head there now. Would you like to come along? Yeah, why not? Great answer. Just what I expected from a fellow beauty connoisseur like you. Oh, complimenting me on my good looks. All right, then. Follow me. Apologies if there are any rumblings you can hear in the stream. I promise it's my stomach. I've forgotten eating a little bit. So after the stream is over, I'm going to go grab some grub. So if you hear some grumbles, it's not it's not the dog who's wandered in. And it's not people who are trying to get me to give them money. It's the stomach grumblies. Although people are probably outside my door trying to get money from me as well, you know. You know how it is. You know how it is. Living as a fox, traveling from from bin to bin. Well, that can be difficult, you know. Demo, I still find it hard to believe you're from the UK. You sound American to me. Maybe I'm ignorant though. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a it's a character voice. So T-Lark's definitely T-Lark's T-Lark's American, but um, the person playing him isn't. So I do get that a lot though. Like, I'll ask what part of the America people think I'm from. And I usually get, like, a load of different answers. It's never centralized. Which either means people can't guess, or it means my accent jumps all over the place. And I, you know, it's probably the latter, to be honest with you. But, you know, Fox does his best. So tired. Hills aren't easy for old fogies like me. Old fogey! I love it! Now, that is slang that you would not hear in America. That is very British slang. An old fogey. It just means an old person. Like an old daughtery person. Sorry, but I don't think I can go on. <sighs> I mean, I walked 20 feet. What am I, a triathlon runner? The great fairy fountain should be along the path that leads past the shrine. <sighs> That's what I've been told anyway. Eesh, I'm completely out of breath. 
That always happens right about here. I, I think I'd better rest for a bit. You go on ahead. And hey, if you find it, don't forget to get a picture. I don't know how you could get a picture because I'm not familiar with the, the app on your Sheikah slate, but maybe you could just invent a portable phone device and, and get a picture that way. Get out of Picango. Let's get a picture for Picango. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Might even get a reward, who knows? Demo, you just sound generic general American. <laughs> I mean pretty much. That's like the accent that that's the accent that Benedict Cumberbatch does in the Marvel Universe where they're like, okay, can you be American? And he's like, Yes, I'll be American. And he's like, Okay, that sounds American. I'll take it. That's sort of like general. The same way like people sort of like criticize the idea that there's like a general British accent when Americans say oh my god I love the British accent you're like there is no British accent the British accent doesn't exist it's like we know what you mean there's like there's a British accent that's general enough that you can be like okay we yeah it's like received pronunciation Queen's English there's like a posh British accent there's like a cockney British accent you know we know what you mean when Americans say they like it Gavin Gray Howard, whenever you're in the stream, plan out what you do before bed before you stop, and we'll keep you accountable. <laughs> hey, no, you will not keep me accountable. There is nothing about this stream that suggests that I am a person that in any way can be kept accountable. It is like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Actually, no, wait, what, is, what time is it? 1.40? 1.40 is pretty late. I think this has been a pretty darn good stream so far. I am very happy with that. I have stamina to stream this far, so I'll take that. Now let's get that snap. And should it be a selfie? Eh, let's see what a selfie would look like. Not a big fan of selfies myself, but maybe... Hmm... Yeah, let's go for a let's go for a more serious one. Hmm, the great fairy fountain. Truly, a day for the ages. I've discovered one of the modern, modern wonders of the universe, or whatever. <laughs> it's getting so late. Oh my god. <laughs> Which way did I come from? Oh, it was over there, right? No, it was over there. It was over there. Okay, I'm in the right direction. I'm in the right direction. Steno, I live just outside London. So I basically live in London. Which gives you the good and bad. If you're outside London, it means you don't have to deal with all the horrible um, traffic and stuff. But it also means that you have to travel into London for work, which isn't the best. Hey, I'll take it, though. Someday, I hope I can see that place spoken of in whispers, veiled in mystery. The Great Fairy Fountain. Oh, I found it. Yeah, it's not that impressive. It's right there. I woke her up and she fixed my clothes for me. It was great. You should have been there. You really missed out. It's a great afternoon. Ah, oh, you you found it? Really? Are you serious right now? And if you are, then where's the picture? You remember to bring the picture, right? I mean, if you've got to approve and there's no picture, then how am I supposed to believe that you're actually found the Great Fairy Fountain? You got a picture? You're damn right I've got a picture. I got a selfie and everything. This is the Great Fairy Fountain? It's certainly beautiful, but I thought it would be more sacred and elegant. I was so disappointed. Oh, well, I'm impressed you found it. He, I'm, yeah, he is so disappointed. I want to give you something to show my appreciation, but I really don't think it's something worth appreciating now I think about it. Why don't you have this carrot? I stole it from a crazy guy in the village. But I don't think I have anything on me. Ah. I know. Is there a place you've been seeking? I've traveled all over Hyrule, so I might be able to help you find it. Oh, that's neat. You can show me where one of my pictures was taken. Mm. A large gate with a snowy mountain beyond it. Oh, I know that place. There's a big mountain east of this village. It's called Mount Lineru. The base of Mount Lineru on the west side of Nadra Snowfield lies that gate. I'm almost certain. 
Oh, great, we got one of the locations down. I'm glad I knew about that location. I suppose my help was useful then. You're not going to charge me, are you? Oh, good. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the village. I was going to be like, oh, my help was useful. I'll be taking that sword now. you like, no! I didn't charge you to see the picture of the fairy fountain. Oh, sorry, mate, rebound. Yeah, I know, that must have been a shock, huh? To be fair, though, I think it's only been in there in one or two videos. There is an audiobook, I think, which still isn't my voice, but it's like, it's not American. I think maybe one other video at the end. It was like the end of year 2018 or something crazy. Oh god, I'm old. And it was like, okay, and, and this is me. This is me doing my voice that's not T-Lark. And that, that might have been a bit of a, sh a surprise to people. Otherwise, I don't, I don't think I've recorded myself just talking. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of hearing my voice anyway. I'd much rather listen to T blather on about stuff than me blather on about stuff. Exactly, Demo. Never meet your idols. Or if you want to dispel yourself of idols, do meet your idols. Because it's the easiest way to do it. Like, meet people who you think are the best people in the world. They'll soon prove that they aren't. And of course, you know, once every hundred years, you'll, you'll encounter that person that is every bit as much of an idol as you thought they were as well. You know, but that kind of person is like gold dust. Meet that kind of person, you want to keep them. They are keepers for life. Yeah, Corver, it was a video on the bench. God, that was so long ago. Oh my god, I'm so old. I think... Okay, so what have we done? We've got, we've got two extra hearts, which means eight shrine orbs, or spirit orbs. We've got, got some neat weapons. Got some shields, got some bows. Ooh, a knight's bow. Okay, we've done pretty well for ourselves. I think this might be a good place to call it. Jason, I know you met me, but no, no one can know. <laughs> no one can know that T is a real person. <laughs> Actually, you have met me. Oh my God, you did. Oh, that was at CFC. Yeah, I was going to say, we talk on, on Twitter all the time. No, we have actually met, haven't we? That was the last convention I ever went to. Oh, that was wild. Okay, yeah, I think... I think we've reached a pretty good... We've got lots of food. I think we've reached a pretty good point to call it. <laughs> and ears just coughs. <laughs> <clears throat> See? <clears throat> yeah, I know, ears. I know, I know. <laughs> You'd be surprised, though. I haven't actually... I haven't met nearly as many people as I thought I would. I think it's... I, I stopped going to meets and conventions and stuff. It's like... It gets a lot harder to meet people if they're all not in one, one big sort of fuzzy place. Okay. I think if I switch back to... Boop. Hoping everyone can still hear me. This is the initial, like, thing, so I think we should be 